we'd have done it 20 minutes ago. I know. What? Did you?
Are you, you think that, that seedling storm is really coming up?
David. There's a shot of the back end of this storm here. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. me right now we are watching this storm just north of the highway right here just to our north uh, it's got a, a lowering developing also scud developing beneath the base of the storm so that's a sure sign it's getting stronger Dave we're gonna keep watching it back to you I thought he said to come to me and I didn't hear anything after that
I wish we had roads up there. We, we need to be on the third road north of that river. Do you think there's a bridge anywhere? I don't think so. You can look. Marty South and get him east on that on that next one down the line, okay? Yep, yep, yep. Marty needs to get eastbound and down. We'll get him on that. All right, let's go back down the line here. Then we're going to go to Jim Gardner. Let's go back down the line. And uh, here's Val on that storm. Okay, we're looking at that. And uh, Marty's got a nice shot. Here comes Jim. Here's Fairview. And uh, look at the hook now developing on that. Look at the yes. hook now east of Chester. Look at the hook east of Chester. Let's go back to Jim Gardner and let's take a look at that hook and see what it looks like from the air. And uh, Jim Gardner, your storm is rapidly intensifying. The hook is getting tighter. And uh, I tell you what, we're probably five or 10 minutes away from a tornado warning on your storm. Go ahead, Jim Gardner. Oh, that's right, David. Uh, we're just right up, uh, we're about oh, 10 miles to the west of, excuse me, 10 miles to the east of Chester, which is right north of Ceiling, following this uh, line down here. But there's all good areas like this right here, David, is a really good area. The rain's in front, it's clear in the back. We're starting to get a lowering out of that right there. And then on down the line, there's another good section right just south of Ceiling that we're really interested in. So we're just flying this line between, I guess you could say, Chester and Ceiling and watch it very closely, David. There's a lot of action in it. We'll keep you updated. Jim Gardner, Point Live from Bob Mills, Scott, who's nine, back to you. Okay, all right, there you go. So that shot, Jim will bring his camera back around to the right here and you'll see the updraft of this storm. And uh, on the right, here's your rain, here's your hail. And uh, this thing right here, this little lift, this little collar here, that's folding over. See the movement of that? You can watch it here. This is live, not sped up. This is live from Jim, how uh, this is being pulled around. So your mesocyclone is going to be right back in here, from basically to the right and back here underneath the banner. Okay, there's your mesocyclone. And uh, there's the one, uh, we'll call it the fudge swirl, if you will, the outer side of the fudge swirl, cinnamon roll. Then here we have the back side of this whole thing. So it's tightening up. It's tightening up right here. Okay, let's go back to Lynx. Three, okay, and we'll take a look at Jim Storm. There it is. Look at the hook. Oh, okay. Dave, look at JD's shot. Let's too. go to JD's shot. Mm -hmm. If we have JD's he's shot, he's on links or he's on rim 124. Rim 124 control room. Let's get that up. And uh, okay, looks a little ragged there. Um, and he is on. He's on same, 412. The yeah. same storm as Val, I do believe. I do believe he's on the same storm as Val Castro. Looking northwest. Looking off to the northwest, yeah. So it uh, looks a little ragged. I don't see a whole lot of motion in there. I see it kind of lifting and slowly turning, but I don't see it wavering on the side like that's a cone. But that can turn into something, right, if it were to tighten up. And, uh, okay, so we got to keep an eye on that. Okay, let's go back to, thank you, let's go back to Lynx 3. All right, and, again, supercell, big hook now developing east of Chester. I want to point out, if you're west of this line, if you're in Winoka, Bouse Junction, or Chester, you are out of the severe weather threat, okay? Woodward, you're out of it. It's going to be to your east. But now look at these storms, how they took off, and now we're getting bigger cores that are beginning to separate. And are all of these storms going to produce tornadoes? They could. More than likely, we'll get maybe one or two or three of these storms that are producing tornadoes. 
Strong storm here now uh, going up. This is the one that's going to be south of Alva. It's intensifying now coming into Tacoma, and that's going to go to Jet and Nash. Okay, Val's on the storm here, Bows Junction. Jim's coming in on that storm. That's the big lowering there. And I tell you what, control room, let's go ahead and put up the three box on the left side of the screen here, and let's put our trackers in there. Thank you. Great job. So there's Jim's shot. Okay, that's that right there. Look at the hook, folks. And every, every couple of minutes here as the radar updates, it just gets stronger and stronger. Okay, so we have a hook developing now west of Tacoma. We have a hook trying to develop now where Val is right here, area of shear getting stronger. And then we have the area here that's going to be southwest of Carmen, then the other storm, which is a little bit disorganized up here where Vaughn and Marty currently are. Let's go back to Val Castor. Let's bring Val in here. And uh, Val, we don't have a dominant storm yet. We have updraft lowerings. We've had maybe a funnel. Again, your brother had a funnel up north. But uh, right now, the storms are they're kind of positioning here uh, for what's going to work out here the next hour. So they're kind of jockeying for position as one or two or three of these storms becomes dominant and begins to really, really crank up. Go ahead, Val, give us an update. Yeah, David, that's a good way to put it. That's kind of what's going on. We have seen several lowerings uh, with the storms. None of them have been really... Okay, well... We are starting to get a little bit of separation uh, between them, and uh, they're, they're just trying to get organized. You know, I, I think within 30 minutes, we're going to see more about what's going to happen. We're going to get two or three storms take over uh, by that... LTE. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you. All right. Great job, Val. So here's what he's looking at. There's the left side, the updraft lowering right here. Okay. So the updraft is right here. And uh, he's now, he's in the Gloss Mountains. If you've not been to the Gloss Mountains in Major County, it's one of the prettiest places in our state. I just want to point that out. It's incredible to go through there. Anyway. All right. So there's the lowering right here. He's making his way back east so he can get back in position. Okay. So there's the updraft with that shot. All right. Let's go back to links three. Excuse me, control room. Let's stay with this for just a second. Look at velocity data here. And uh, it's right here. Okay, we have a couplet now developing a fairly substantial couplet right here where it should be. Here's Jim looking back at it. And there's your couplet. All right, let's go to velocity data. Hold my finger here, see what we have going on. Boom, there's your couplet. Green up against the red, no doubt about it. What's shear rate look like? Let's see if it's stronger. Yep, there it is. Okay, so everything is all lined up. Okay, and again, Many, many tools to look at. Big hail now up to golf ball size hail is going to be west of Fairview. You folks in Fairview, Orienta, Cleo Springs, please stay weather aware. Any one of these storms could produce a tornado here over the next 10, 20, 30 minutes. It won't take much, especially on this southern storm here. We call that tell in Charlie, right? Charlie hangs out in the back way down the line here. Okay, let's go back to links three now and look at the hook. Look at the hook. Now, there's a couple of things going on with the hook here. Let's go ahead and zoom on in okay. here, Lace. Take a closer look at it. And uh, Jim's right here, right? There's your hook. Big hail, big hail, right? So here's Fairview, all right? Here's Orienta, there's Cleo Springs. Big hail, quarters, golf balls, maybe even some tennis balls in here. Tornado's gonna be right here when it develops. Let's go back to Jim Gardner. I'm gonna show you what that looks like from Jim's shot, where my finger is. That is Jim's shot. That is the strongest storm in the state now with the strongest hook and the strongest rotation in the state, it looks like currently with that other storm to the north. Go ahead, Jim, give us an update again. Well, that's right, David. I'm sitting right on Highway 60. I'm about 10 miles, uh, 12 miles to the east of Chester, and I am about three or four miles to the northwest of uh, Lake Canton here, shooting back to the west, northwest. And like you said, David, you're looking right at that where that couplet was. I can tell you that you see the heavy rain on the right-hand side. It is starting to clear out, clear out to the back side of this, so it's going to get all that fresh air from the back side and heating from the sun on the, out to the west here. And like I said, we're in a really good spot, David. We're sitting right up next against it. Like I said, we're right over top of Highway 60, shooting back to the northwest. It is definitely a, a cycling, David, and, uh, you know, we're just in a really good spot here to let you know if anything happens. Jim Garpoin live from Bob Mills, Cutties 9. Back to you. All right, great job there, Jim. And uh, again, on the right, there's your downdraft. This is going to be the big wind, big hail. Here's your mesocyclone right here. There's the left side. And the wall cloud here is becoming a little more established. Still up there just a bit, but temperatures are well into the 80s, close to 90. It is very hot. It's muggy. And this storm is on the dry line, okay? This is a dry line storm, and those are the most dangerous storms to deal with. Cold front storms, yes, are dangerous. I get it. But the dry line storms are more dangerous, right? They have a lot of hot air to bring in on the backside. 
And so uh, you get your bigger tornadoes out of most times out of the dry line storm. So there's that storm now. Uh, he's in Fairview uh, looking back to the northeast of Chester. Okay, back to Lynx 3. So that shot is right there. Now, here's what's going on with this. Uh, we've got Hank, southwest Kingfisher County. See this down here? All right, now we've got to keep an eye on these, folks, because here's the deal. If these turn into thunderstorms, this is what we've been talking about. If these go to thunderstorms, they're going to come right into the city, and the, and the tornado parameters are all there. If these storms develop, they're going to certainly have the possibility of producing tornadoes, and that will include the Oklahoma City area with this first wave. And then later this evening, between 6 and 8 o'clock, we get another wave that's going to slam in from the north with the cold front that eventually gets here. Let's worry about short term. Short term is that storm we have to watch now that Brandon is watching, and we have these two other cells going up near Colony and Carnegie. Hey, Justin, um, keep an eye on these down here. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's not, uh, let's not leave those exposed. Okay, so, and again, these might go up and, and struggle a little bit. The atmosphere is a little bit more stable to the east of there, but still, still unstable, okay? So we got to keep an eye on that. All right, so let's go back up the line. And uh, the whole line here, again, uh, is severe. The whole line is severe, pretty much running from Byron. Um, and by the way, we're, I see Tom. Okay, so Tom's right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, where's, where's J.D. in this shot? He's There's J.D. Oriana. Okay, so let's, we need to get J.D. back east and then back to the north. We need to get, who's underneath J.D.? Val. Okay. All right, so the hook's getting better on Val's shot. It's coming up. It's coming up. There's Val's shot right here. I see it. And here's the hook on that. There's the hook on Jim's shot. Uh, there's a couplet up here, right? So we've, we've got all this covered here for you, but I tell you what, there's a lot of storms now. They're not all going to produce tornadoes. This whole line is not going to be producing tornadoes. Probably two or three of the storms will certainly try, and we'll probably get, yes, tornadoes out of this. But uh, right now, they're pretty close together, so they're kind of competing. They're kind of competing. So what's going to happen is if they compete uh, and they take away from each other's energy, that'll, that's a good thing. That'll kind of keep that tornado threat a little bit lower. But um, I tell you what, yeah, I've seen so many days like this where you're thinking, oh, boy, yeah, they're going to compete. Nothing's going to happen. Next thing you know, that storm, that storm, that storm, and that storm, and that storm is producing a tornado. And then sometimes we get maybe one or two of these storms producing tornadoes. So, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of dynamics going on, a lot of physics going on uh, right now. Okay, so a uh, little cell here going up. Let's take a look at that from Brandon. And uh, this cell at Watonga, con I'm concerned about the cell at Watonga only because it is going up so quickly. Let's go to Brandon Pennell and get an update from Brandon on the storm at Watonga, which is just now becoming, a, uh, again, a supercell. It's rotating, getting stronger. And then we'll go back to Jim. Go ahead, Brandon. Give us an update on your storm. Yeah, David. So we're going to be just west of Watonga on Highway 33, Strong looking out. back to the west and the southwest. Uh, we've been on the storm for about 15 minutes now. It, it's gone up. It's kind of established itself, and now it's, it's trying to organize into a, le a legit storm. We've got a feeder band that's trying to develop back to the southeast, being pulled in to the base of this storm right here. So we're gonna stay right here with this. Um, it's, it's pretty unstable out here. We're at 85 degrees, so um, everything out in front of this is, is prime. So we'll be right here with it if something happens. Back to you. All right, great job there, Brandon. So Brandon is on the Watonga storm. Let's go back to Link 3, and let me show you what it looks like. This is on Link 3 control room, there it is. It's not very big yet. This is just the beginning. Brandon's right there. He's gonna bring it off to the east, northeast. There's Jeremy, there's Hank. Okay, let's go back to Jim Gardner. Wall cloud developing right now on that storm right there. Okay, look at that shot. Look how much that's changed in the last 10 minutes since we uh, went to Jim last. Let's get an update from Jim. And Jim Scud now developing under the wall cloud. And uh, your storm is continuing to ramp up. Go ahead, Jim. That's right, David. Uh, I'm pretty much sitting about the same spot I was just on Highway 60, about uh, 12 miles uh, e east of Chester and uh, four miles northwest of Lake Canton, shooting back to the west, northwest. We're only about, I would say, two miles from this, David, and this is definitely trying to do something. Yes. This wall cloud formed really quick. It has gotten low to the ground, and uh, you're watching it right. This is starting to turn, David. This is starting to turn right now. You're looking at it live from okay. Bob Mills, Scott, who's nine. This is starting to turn. This happened 
in just about one minute, this went from a not pretty high base to this wall cloud, and it's, it's really trying to spin, David, and it's just working its way around Grant. and getting lower to the ground and stuff. And like I said, we're just about a mile from it, shooting back. Uh, David, I, I would say this is probably going to produce a funnel just here pretty quick. Yeah, no doubt about it, Jim Gardner. No doubt about it. We've got a lot of motion here going on. It is quickly rotating, and this is a storm that Jim's on. It's going to come out of this right here. We're looking on the ground. We're looking on the ground, and uh, yeah, shot's a little hot. Shot's a little bit hot with the lighting there, Greg. We can get that worked out. I know what he's doing here, but we got to bring the we got to look on the ground down here. Let's go to Val Castor. Let's bring Val back into it. And uh, folks, this is going to be this is okay. There it is, right there, Val. We we're seeing the funnel from Jim. You've got the same thing. There it is. What do you think, Val? Rotation, it is definitely, definitely getting stronger. Okay, so David, the first thing that we noticed was the funnel. Very, very narrow, uh, but pointed funnel. So uh, that funnel came out uh, right of the middle of a lowering, and now you see that lowering that's forming even more. Uh, probably more important than the funnel is the, is the fact, David, that there is rotation, visible rotation now, even from our distance, maybe four miles away here with that storm. So... That storm, obviously, it's it's getting ramped up, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Val. So Val's looking at it from the ground. Let's go back to radar here. Let's go back to Lynx 3, tornado warning. All right, tornado warning on the storm here. Here we go. There's Jim Gardner. Uh, we're getting a low-level lock now. The radar is saying, boom, it's not only at the mid-levels anymore, but it has now worked down to just above the surface. That's what we're looking at. That shot right there. There's your couplet. There's Jim looking off to the northwest. Where he is, here comes Tom, there's Val, and there's where the tornado is. It's 12.4, good job, Lacey, uh, west-northwest of downtown Fairview. Let's go ahead and lapse this okay. and just see what it's going to do here. Um, yeah, it's going to be close. It's probably going to go over Orienta. Orienta. Mm -hmm. So Orienta, safe spot, lowest level. If you live in Orienta or down to Fairview, safe spot, lowest level, tornado warning. Tornado warning now, there's the hook. We've got a track ready when you are. Okay, there's the hook. Big hail up to tennis ball size hail. Let's go to Tom Pastrano. Let's take Tom's shot and bring Tom in here. And uh, Tom, it's rotating. Tornado warning continues. It's a little ragged right now. Give us an update as you look back to the uh, west and southwest of that storm. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, David, you know, we've had two funnels, um, two very well defined funnels. Uh, one made it halfway to the ground. And right now, that area, there's no funnel. But, you know, this whole area, I'm going to pan to the right here. There's another area just to the north of where we had the original funnel, and I can definitely see some rotation. You know, it, it's really trying to get its act together. It, it, it really looks like something's imminent here in the next few minutes. Back to you. Yeah, I think you said it all very, very nicely there, Tom. Exactly right. It's spinning. It's getting tighter. It's coming in here. Look at all the storm trackers out there today. Uh, everybody across the country in May and Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, this is where they come. If you're going to chase storms, uh, people take their vacations and whatever else, yep, to come down to uh, Oklahoma. All right, so great shot there from Tom. Uh, let's go to Jim Gardner now. Let's go back up and let's go to Jim and then we'll do a storm track. And uh, Jim, it's still rotating a little ragged, but uh, the mesocyclone is still turning and a churning. Tornado warning continues now for points to the west of Fairview and up towards Orienta. But uh, there's the area of circulation, Jim. No tornado right now, but uh, it is still spinning. Go ahead. Well, that's right, David. From our last shot that we just had to now, it's kind of uh, went ragged again. It's kind of pulled itself up, back up into the base of the clouds there. But that doesn't mean, I think it's just uh, in a recycle stage here. But this is definitely a large storm, David. Out in front of this, we go to the right just a little bit. So we pan to the right. You can see the leading edge of that is down very low to the ground, David. That is very low to the ground and working back up to where that rotation was on our last shot. The rain has increased. We're getting more cloud to ground lightning here. And uh, like I said, now we're north of Highway 60, and I'm going to be right around uh, North 2460 Road, north of Highway 60, and uh, just uh, north, uh, just pretty much west of Fairview here, uh, maybe uh, nine or 10 miles. But uh, this is definitely, I think, just back in a, the recycle stage here, Dave. Like I said, it's pulled itself back up. But I'm sure, I'm sure just here in a few minutes, it's going to drop another wall cloud here shortly. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garpro and live from Bob Mills, Scotty's 9. Back to you. Okay. Hey, Jim, if you can still hear me, come around uh, or pull out just a bit on your shot there. Let me see what it looks like. I just want to kind of take a look at this here. This is that tornado warning now we have going on. If Jim could go ahead and pull out 
just a bit. Go to the right here, Jim. Go to the right and pan out. It's, now it's a little bit dark. Pull out. Okay, pull out yeah. a little bit farther. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to fly away from it, David. Yes. I'm pretty close to it, so I'm going to have to fly yes. and get some distance here just yeah. for a second. It's, it's going to be right here, Jim. It's going to be on the right side, right there. So go ahead, back out just a little bit. There it is, right here. Okay, here comes the cigar cloud coming in from the right. It's going to be right there. This is where it's going to develop. Okay, let's go to the ground now. Let's go back to Val. Okay, tornado warning now continues for much of Major County. And uh, let's get it up there. Okay, that might be the cone trying to wrap up. See how it's kind of tilted? Watch out. Let's go to Val. Let's get an update. Val, what do you think? Is that the beginning of the big cone? What do you think? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so right now, David, that, that's the lowering. That's the main lowering right there in the middle. Uh, it formed more of a cone a little bit earlier, more of a cone-shaped funnel or a big bowl-shaped funnel. It was pointed at the very end, but that's it right there. That's the area that it's, uh, that it's rotating. That If it's going to do it, that's where it will do it at. And uh, this is still straight west, I guess, a fair view right now, moving pretty much east, I guess it is. But uh, anyway, we're keeping our eyes on it here. I haven't seen anything um, that looked like, you know, a formed, like a well-formed funnel since the earlier one that we saw, except for that bowl-shaped one that we saw about three or four minutes ago. So uh, anyway, watching it, I know it's ingesting another storm at the moment. We're going to see what happens. Back to you. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll watch it here. So there's a lot of shuffling going on with these storms, right? And like what I was saying earlier, they're they're close together, so they're competing, and uh, you know you got you got you got too many cooks in the kitchen on this deal. So what happens is somebody's going to get shoved out, and now that happens, you'll have a dominant storm that's just going to eat up a smaller storm. It's going to eat it. It's going to eat it alive in the kitchen, and you'll end up with maybe one, two, three, or four dominant storms versus four, five, or six like we have right now. Okay, all right, let's go back to links three, tornado warning, and then we'll go to links four. I promise. And uh, there it is. Now, what we've had happen here, let's lapse this. Uh, let's switch radars here. So go. this little cell is, uh, go ahead and lapse that. Let's see what this has done. And, okay, it's not really a storm, but it, eh, it's a storm. It's a small storm that it's going to interrupt this just a bit. It's going to interrupt the updraft, which might slow it down just a bit, okay? But this is going to come into the backside of the storm. And it's coming into the storm right now and then we're going to try to get a new mesocyclone or at least that one to intensify but to right now notice how the hook is not as pronounced where it was 10 minutes ago okay but it it's still strong enough that we're still going to keep the tornado warning going for that storm there's your couplet it's broad right now it's not super super tight but it's still strong enough to get a tornado warning on it and it's going to oriana let's go to uh links four control room we'll do a storm track now and uh, let's make sure, I'll tell you what, Cass, let's bring that a little bit farther up towards Carrier. Let's make sure Carrier is in. I think they are. Uh, yeah, go ahead and bring it up just a little bit more. And then, and then lapse that, Cassie, if we can. Go ahead and lapse it here. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, okay, that, that'll work. Maybe even Hill, Hillsdale. Okay, so um, we're looking at uh, Fairview at 346, Ringwood 410, La Homa 425, Wacomas at 443. Uh, North Enid, 448, Breckenridge, 5 o'clock, and how about Hunter at about 512. So, Supercell, another storm going up here that Brandon is on. We're watching that carefully. It is developing an updraft lowering. Okay, so lots of storms. All the storm trackers are out. JD is on this storm. And uh, let's see what he's looking at. Let's go to JD here, Justin. Let's bring JD in the mix. Let's take his shot, control room. Let's take his shot. JD, welcome. And I tell you what, your storm is severe, and uh, it's going through kind of an organizational state right now, but uh, it is definitely hanging on here. J.D., give me an update as you look back at the updraft of that storm, and uh, tell me what you see looking back in there. Yeah, I'm looking slightly northwest here, and uh, this thing has had a, a history of uh, lowerings. Hasn't really produced any funnels or anything like that. This, this storm is still in the initiation phase. It's trying to get separated. It's trying to get going. But this thing does mean business as it moves off to the east. we got to keep a very close eye on it, David. Back to you. All right, great job, J.D. So J.D.'s going to keep marching east. He's going to head over towards Helena and then Halesdale. And remember, this is going to, all this is going to Enid. It's all going to Enid, okay? If you live in northern Oklahoma, you have to stay plugged in. You have to stay weather aware. Okay, let's go back to link three. And I want to show you kind of the big view. Uh, this is where Marty is. Area of circulation here that Marty is watching. So far, these are just severe, but they are rotating. Rotation right here, southwest of Cherokee. We've got to keep an eye on that. Okay, it's right in here. It's tucked back in the rain. It's in the wet area here. It's tucked back in. All right, then here's a storm that JD's on, and there is some weak rotation with that right now. Then we have the one supercell 
uh, down here, which is now gobbling up this other smaller cell to the south, okay? So let's look back at this hook now, and there it is. The hook is trying to redevelop. Let's go to Jim Gardner. That's that shot right there. Let's go to Jim Gardner and get an update. And uh, Jim, the, or the wall cloud, and you can, Jim, you can see it turning. The front lip is coming around. The back side, look at this right here. Watch that right there. See that rotating from left to right? Not crazy strong right now, but it is strong enough. Let's go ahead and get an update from Jim. Jim, go ahead. Well, that's right, David. I'm five, uh, five miles uh, west, southwest of Fairview, shooting back to the northwest at this thing. Like I said, we're about a mile from it, and it has uh, started to lower again, and it tightened up for a minute there. For yes. a minute there, David, I thought we had a tornado going to form here. It, it formed a little bell, dropped down real low to the ground, but now it's kind of worked itself back up. So I think it just keeps cycling here, David, and, and it keeps uh, keeps just cycling through. And like I said, in front of this, there's heavy rain, hail, and cloud ground lightning you want to be aware of. But this right here, we're going to watch this, David. This is very interesting. You see it just starting to tighten up just as I'm talking here. I'm starting to get a little rain thrown out of it, wrapped around it here. So again, David, this is an area to be concerned about. We're on it. We'll keep watching. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garpoint Live for Bob Mills, Scotty's 9. Back to you. All right, great job, Jim. So folks, look how low the scud is now above the ground, all right? And uh, Jim's up about the same level here, about a thousand feet up as the, the, the actual wall cloud here. But look at the scud developing. Scud is, you can look at it, and when you see a storm developing, as this becomes tighter, scud begins to develop underneath this, and that is the development of the wall cloud or the bottom side of the mesocyclone here, and that is the wall cloud. And you'll see that scud, we call it a scud cloud. It's just a ragged, looks like this right here. See this stuff? It looks like junk to you. Well, it is until it attaches, and then it's part of the whole circulation of spin here going on. But you can still see this left side coming around to the right side, left side to the right side. Okay, let's go back to links three and uh, talk about what's going on with the uh, storm up north. Now, storm strength right now, uh, the Carmen storm is really coming up. Wow, it's really coming up, isn't it? Yeah, and look at the hail core just west of Fairview now. I'll put it back in. Yeah. Reflectivity, but you can see it's still the dominant storm. Yeah, oh, yeah, at least tennis ball. Tennis ball size hail is going to Oriana. You folks in Oriana, prepare for a damaging hailstorm. Prepare for a damaging hailstorm in Oriana. Tennis balls are larger. Okay? That's going to be in Oriana. It's going to be here comes your circulation right here. It's coming in from the west and southwest, and that's going to go right into uh, Oriana. All right, let's put the reflectivity back on here. Okay. And, and Brandon just had uh, ping pong ball size hail on Watonga. Okay, we'll go back to him. Look at the hail core here. West of Orienta, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven miles. Uh, tennis ball. Tennis ball size hail. Maybe larger. Capes are out there over 4,000. There might, there might be some baseballs in there. Yeah, it's coming right over the Gloss Mountains. Yeah. The core is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right along 412, the Gloss Mountain uh, State Park. Right, nice little place to have lunch. Went right over that in between there and uh, the bend at 412. Okay, so that's gonna go to Orienta and then Cleo Springs. I don't see how you missed the hail in Cleo Springs. The biggest hail is right here. All right, so the tornado is gonna be back in here. This storm is now gobbling up. Now look how broad this is. Yeah. See the red and the green? It's broad, okay? It's stretched out. Now it's doing that because it is a sign of it's not falling apart, but it's reorganizing. So what's happened is that the storm came in from the south, it's merged in with it, and now we have one large storm here, and that's really a concern, right? That is really a concern, is when you have one large storm that now will turn into the biggest storm of the day so far and really, really rotate, okay? All right, so tornado warning now for you folks north of Fairview, from Fairview north up to Orienta, and then from there, Ringwood, you're next, La Homa, you're next, Enid. You folks in Enid, I can't say it enough, if you live in Enid, if you're out and about, friends and family, anybody you care about in Enid, call them, give them heads up, and tell them. Tornado, possible at any time, back to the southwest, and that storm is going to Enid. Now, look, it, it'll look a lot different when it gets there, I get it, but at least give them an update now, okay? All right, now we'll see what it looks like. It could reorganize and, and come back and, and, and kind of get nutty on us here, so we got to keep an eye on it. All right, so we have the other severe storms down here in Blaine County. Let's go back to Brandon. And he's in Watonga. And uh, Brandon, your storm is still organizing. Updraft lowering there. The base is getting more prominent. What do you think there? Look at, well, look at the striations in the base there. That thing is it's definitely spinning from uh, your shot. Go ahead and give us an update. 
Yeah, David, so we're just on the very far east side of Watonga looking due back to the west. Um, this storm had a new updraft go up on 33 west of Watonga, and it kind of split, and the storm went off to the north. As we come through Watonga, we had quite a few quarters and a few ping pong balls um, falling out of the sky. So this storm is gaining strength the further east that it goes. I know the shot looks a little – we're so close. We're basically underneath it. Um, right now so we're going to continue east and then get a better shot back to the west here probably in about five minutes back to you all right great job there so brandon is on the southern storm that is severe that's in blaine county let's go back to link three and uh, here's what it looks like look at the hook now developing wow bam wow wow that changed really really fast okay um wow it split. wow wow it's split yeah. And now this is the, the right. That's the right mover. And that's what it, if it's going to do it, that's what it's going to look like. Yes. The left mover is going to produce no tornado, but hail. Talking about that, that's going to be a hail producer going into O'Keene, but not a tornado. Big hail. And uh, this is the one I'm concerned about now. And the couplet is getting stronger now uh, west of Brandon or west of Watonga. Okay, so, wow. Uh, we're going to get a tornado warning on this too. This is coming, okay? This is coming. All right, let's go back to the storm so far of the day. That's the biggest storm now. Circulation, a little bit disorganized, a little bit disorganized because it ate another storm. It absorbed another storm that came into it from the south. That's what uh, kind of interrupted the updraft here. The updraft was a smooth, tight cylinder, and you brought in another storm, and it's, it's a little bit disorganized. The uh, shear is a little bit stretched out. We're looking at the reds up against the greens. We're looking at a couplet, but it's stretched out now. But what, here's what's gonna happen, two things. It's either gonna do what it's doing and not produce, or it's gonna ramp up and organize into a, a much bigger storm and a much more dangerous storm, okay? So Val's there, looking right at it. Let's go to Hank. I'm gonna uh, look at the hail sizes here. Uh, golf ball size hail now, southwest oriented. We had tennis balls, might have come down a little bit because those storms are merging and joining into one. Let's go to Hank's shot and bring Hank in here. Look at the updraft. Wow. If you're a storm chaser, oh my gosh. Okay, look at the left side of the updraft. Look how crisp that is. And then it's forced into the atmosphere, hits the stratosphere, boom, fans out. And look how crisp the anvil is here now. And look at the updraft that Hank is looking at here. Hank, that's a great shot. Looking at that storm. Boy, you can see all the storm structure in there, at least what you need to. Give us an update on that shot there. Go ahead. Yeah, David, I'll have Patty pan to the right here. So that's looking due wow. north from about Calumet. This is at the back edge of Brandon's storm in Watonga. And as Patty pans back to the west, you can see the very crisp updraft vault going right up through the back of this storm, a back shear anvil. This storm is just continuing to mature and get better and better organized. And like what you say, the structure is beautiful in meteorological terms right now, David. Back to you. Okay, all right, great job there, Hank. And uh, Hank's looking at the storm to the north that Brandon is on. Hank's a little farther south uh, because we are watching what could be other storms trying to develop a little farther down the line. Okay, back to Lynx 3. And we have these little cells down here that we are concerned about. So far, they're struggling. So far, they're struggling. Does any data develop these? No, not okay. as of yet. Okay, so the high-res short-term model data that we use so far says these do not go. Do I believe it? Eh, sometimes, right? In some days, the models are 100% on and they're great. In other days, you throw them out the window and you do your own thing. So we're not gonna leave these storms down here, these showers bubbling up between Carnegie and Apache and Fort Cobb Lake, okay? We have to watch this area here. If a storm goes up there, folks, it is on the front porch of, of the Oklahoma City area. It is at our front door if a storm can initiate down into Caddo County, which is exactly what we don't want. We're gonna get storms out of this that are gonna come in from the north with the cold front here later this evening. So that's gonna happen, but we, we're worried about these initial storms that are going up on the dry line. All right, so Brandon's there. Wow, look at that shot from Jeremy. And David, we do have a hail picture from that Watonga storm. All right, well. let's go to Lynx 4. Here's your hail. And uh, some of the hail, we, we, I promise, there's bigger hail than this from Kathy House from Watonga. And uh, yeah, quarters, there's golf ball. And that, that's, uh, that's gonna be some hard hailstones there. That is not soft hail today. Atmosphere is still cold, a lot, really cold. So the hail 
Yeah, it's not going to be soft. You get hit by that, that's going to leave a mark. All right, so let's go back to Lynx 3 and kind of give you the big view. Now, this is the storm that Brandon's on. Look at the hook now, developing with that. And I'm looking up here at Brandon's shot. Keep an eye on Brandon's shot here. And uh, Brandon's getting back in position. He's making his way east. Hey, Justin, I'll take Brandon when he gets his shot turned back around. Okay, so uh, folks, no tornado warning on this ship. You can clearly see what's happening here. Here's your storm strength. Yeah, lightning's just going yeah. crazy now. So and this is going up. to Loyal. This is going to Omega. Or just bare, yeah, it's going to go to Omega. It's going to be close. If you live in Omega up to Loyal, get ready for large hail, damaging winds, and the possibility of a tornado. Okay, not quite there yet, but we're going that way. We're definitely going more towards a tornado coming out of that than we're not. Okay, so tornado warning continues for now central and eastern major county. All right, big hail going through Orienta and between Orienta and Fairview. Let's go to Val. Let's bring Val up. He's right here on the hook, looking right at it. Let's go to Val's shot. And Val, what do you think? Your storm, uh, like you said, merged or gobbled up that, that thunderstorm to the south, which was smaller. So it's a little bit of a disorganizational thing going on, but it looks like to me it's beginning to ramp back up. Go ahead, Val. Let it turn yeah, David, that's what happened. It merged with another storm, and what that did is it disrupted it, and I believe momentarily, uh, because this is still a very, very strong storm. It's probably going to take 15 or 20 minutes, but we'll see what happens after that, uh, after it gets through basically eating, if you will, this other storm that moved into it. Uh, but it's still rotating, David. It's still extremely strong, and... Um, you know, it, it bears to be watched very, very closely. We'll stay with it. Back to you. All right, there you go. So Val right there, Val and Amy, and uh, they're on that, uh, we'll call that the southern storm here. And uh, we've got several. We've got, you know, three or four big storms. Okay, back to Lynx 3. And uh, this is a problem, right? Now, this is, is the one that had the big hook on it. Yes. Had the big hail, and it merged with a cell, and now it's merging with yet another cell. So that is going to keep it in check right now. Storms. Yeah, and that left split's going to come into it also. Yeah, and then this is going to get absorbed into it. The dominant one's going to win out always. Dominance always wins, right, when it comes to the weather world. And this is going to eat this up. And matter of fact, look at the flow. The low-level jet right now is flowing so hard, and this storm is not that big, that it's basically being pulled into this storm like a conveyor belt. And then the storm north of Cleo Springs also had a chance to organize and get more of a hook also. Yep, JD's JD right southwest there. southwest from Helena, yes. Yep, there's, okay. Um, let me see JD's shot. And, uh, okay, let's go back to JD here. Control room, let's take JD's shot. Folks, look at the hook now over Aileen, okay? And uh, JD, that uh, hook on your storm now to your southwest becoming more dominant. Looks like you might have some rain in there. And we'll see if that can't clear out. But, uh... J.D., no tornado warning on it yet, but I tell you what, it is definitely getting stronger. Go ahead, J.D. Yeah, as you can see, it's trying to wrap in there. Uh, this thing does mean business. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of people out looking around on this road that probably need to go ahead and uh, get out of the way. This thing's probably going to have some large hail as it progresses off to the east. Uh, this thing's a little bit slower to mature, but we're going to keep with it just in case, even though it's a left splitter. Back to you, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what it does here. So, And what he means by left splitter, those are hard to produce tornadoes. They, they come off the mesocyclone, they, they have a, 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 some, an anti-cyclonic mesocyclone, and so what you get out, big hail, yes, but uh, more times than not, you won't get a tornado out of that, but uh, we might have to get him off this and get him on another storm if it doesn't start to change shape. Okay, this is gonna be a News 9 tornado warning for you folks in eastern uh, Blaine County, right, and here it goes, right there. Tornado warning now, eastern Blaine County, and then we're talking about uh, where Brandon is, there's the hook. The hook's gonna be right here. Let's go to shear right and see what it looks like. It should be right here. Okay, so boom, there it is. Brandon's right there. And then uh, let's go back to velocity. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's just northwest of Brandon. Okay, let's go to Brandon Pennell. Tornado warning, Brandon, for your storm. I know you know that. And uh, wow, okay, wow. Okay, hang on a second here. Brandon, look at the motion as you look at that storm, look what's going on above your head, about one to 2,000 feet up. Look at the inflow into that and how it goes up and to the right and then it spins back down the highway from you. Look at the mesocyclone right there. That is on the Watonga tornado warning, new tornado warning. This is for Blaine County. There it is right there. 
and Brandon is right there looking right at it. Brandon, give us an update on the speed of the rotation. Go ahead. Okay, David. Um, the rotation, I'd say it's moderate at the moment, but it continues to strengthen the further east that it's coming. So, you know, you can see the backside of this, and I can't, I'm so close to it right now, you can't see the feeder band that's coming in from the southeast. But what I can tell you is right here, I'm going to zoom in on it in the middle right here. There's a feeder band that's coming in from the northeast and then one from the southeast. And right there in the middle of my shot, we've got quite a bit of lift that's starting to develop. And the circulation is tightening even as I'm talking right now. So we're probably, I'd say, three to four to five minutes away from this possibly producing a tornado. And just to point out, too, this is north of Watonga, so the warning, Watonga folks, you're behind this storm now, so you're in the clear. Yeah. We're just calling it the Watonga storm. It's Sorry. closest town. Just, yeah. yeah, my bad. We don't want to... Watonga? No, you're good. Let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, so here it is. Now, there's Watonga, okay? The hook is to your northeast, four miles. Watonga, you're in the clear from this storm. we got to watch some things back to your west. Uh, but uh, this storm is a little bit scary, and I'll tell you why. It's by itself. There's nothing impeding on the updraft. Brandon's there. Jeremy's right there. I see Jeremy's shot. Jeremy's got a nice shot. Okay, look at the hail core now coming up just along and north of Highway 3 or Highway 33. Hail core, uh, we're getting up to quarters. I guarantee it we've got bigger than quarters in that now. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be some big hail. Big hook developing. Okay, let's go to Jeremy Carter. He's looking westbound from Kingfisher. And I just want to show you his shot. Okay, tail cloud coming in from the right. That's an inflow. That's a feeder band. This level is about, about 3,000 feet up right here, and that's a low-level jet, which you have to have to get tornadoes, right? And on a day like today, that's exactly what we have. So it's ripping in, and that jet is ripping in and rotating into and feeding this storm with low-level moisture. There's your rain-free base. There is your big, big hail on the right. Let's go to Jeremy, get an update as he looks off to his west. Go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, David, take a look at this base. You, you can see right out here where it's kind of come, coming to a point down below that made up draft area where the pressure's dropping below the base is where I've been watching it. And it, hey, it's kind of going back and forth, but we'll Ray, keep our eyes on it. Back to you, That's David. Drop straight south. Oh, okay. All right. Great job there, Jeremy. Good job there. Hey, Lacey, take this for just one second. Go ahead, take it just okay. for a second. So Jeremy's back over near Kingfisher. He's looking at the storm that Brandon is on that is tornado warned. And this is moving off to the east northeast at about 35 miles per hour right now. So Brandon's looking right at where the circulation is becoming a little bit tighter, a little bit more organized. This is now going to be just to the north of Highway 3. And I'm going to stop this and put on the velocity and it's actually going to be about four miles to the west of Omega or of, of, of Omega okay coming into uh, well threatening Omega High School is what it is so that's going to be coming in from the southwest and as of right now nothing on the ground Brandon's right there if this starts to produce of course Brandon's going to jump back in Jeremy can also see it and then we still have our other tornado warning that Val and Tom and Jim Gardner are on further to the north so this is going to be now to the east of Fairview so Fairview, the rotation, I'm going to turn on velocity here, is just to your east along Highway 58. It's still very broad. And what this storm is doing, if you look at kind of what happening down to the south unlike Brandon's storm is there are multiple showers being pulled up into it and so far that's kind of keeping the rotation very broad but the hook is becoming more defined looking back over highway 58 and I know Val is looking right at that to your due west can we get an update from Val Val it looks like it's trying to get more organized now south of Fairview what do you see back to your west so, yeah, we're looking, that shot you're looking at is looking towards the west, and she's panning on over towards the north. Also, uh, right now, it looks like to me there's a, a left mover storm that it's, it's also trying to take in again like it did the time before. So, I, right now, the storm is kind of in a state of disorganization, uh, but it still has basically the core of it is still there. It still needs to be watched, obviously, because it's still strong. 
and we'll keep an eye on it. Back to you, Lacey. Okay, great update. So he's looking right there back to his west. So that area, he's not seeing it as pronounced. You look further to the north, there's still several areas of circulation up near Helena. JD's watching that. And then just to the south of Great Salt Plains Lake, basically coming in close to the radar site there, there's an area just west of Jet along Highway 64. And Marty Logan is right there. So we're watching this one closely too. It's just, that's gonna be wrapped in rain. It's just a big old cluster yeah. of rain and hail, David, but yeah. that area also spinning and to the west of Jet. Yeah, it's right here. And it's coming into Jet right about now. So let's see where Marty's location is. And Marty's shot, let's take a look at it here. Yeah, okay. Hey, Justin, let's have Marty pause for a second here. Let's take a look at this thing coming at him. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Okay, so this storm is severe. It's not tornadic as far as anything on the ground or tornado warning on it, but there is no doubt about it. There is an area of circulation in there that we are, we are watching carefully. Who shot is that? Control room, okay. All right, let's come back down the line. So we have the one tornado warning. And again, it's a little bit disorganized here. It's a little bit murky. It's a little bit muddy because we have so many storms impeding on each other. All right, the mesocyclone is still back in here, but now that storm is eating that storm, okay? And uh, here's Tom down on this part of the storm. Now this is weakening, and this is gonna get pulled in right here, but this storm here is a big, big storm, all right? And that's the storm that I'm worried about right now. Let's go back to Brandon. Tornado warning now, south of Hitchcock, north of Watonga. Let's go to Brandon, and uh, let's see if that's his shot. It looks like it is. Brandon, would you can get in position here. What do you see back behind you? I know you're busting east right now. Give me an update on what you see back behind you. Don't go too far east. Yeah, David, so um, it kind of looks like the storm's going through a little bit of a cycle stage at the moment. You know, it tried to organize. The, the circulation got a little bit tighter, but it, it's, it's continuing to pull in moist air from the southeast. And it's kind of battling. There's kind of two little areas of circulation, and it's trying to consolidate maybe into one bigger one. But so over the next 5 to 10 to 15 minutes, you know, this thing is meaning business, I mean, and it's growing quickly. So as it moves off to the east from Loyal over towards yes. Dover, you know, you really need to pay attention to this over the next 5 to 10, 15 minutes, like I was saying. Back to you. Yeah, great job. Okay, awesome. Brandon's right there looking right at it. He's, again, this is well north and east of Watonga. It's the Blaine County storm. All right, let's go back to... And we'll do a storm track on Lynx 4 control room. And here's the tornado. We've got the, again, time of arrival, not from the hail, okay? But back here where the tornado's gonna be. It's right here where my finger is. And everybody, we've get, given everybody here plenty of time and also plenty of time to the south. Do I think it's gonna turn hard right and come down towards Dover? Probably not, but it could certainly do that. So that's why we have Dover included. So we'll say Loyal at 424, Dover, about 4.50, Hennessy, 5 o'clock, Crescent at about 5.29, and Guthrie at about 5.50, okay? And that's gonna be with that cell right there. Okay, all right, so Jeremy's right there looking right at it. There's Brandon looking off to his north. And uh, let's go to Jeremy Carter here. I wanna show you what the storm looks like. He's, he's got a great shot from the east control. Let's go to Jeremy there. Look at the striations here. Look at the striations tilted, right? from lower left to the upper right. That's the area, that's the mesocyclone. We've got the wind, we've got, yep, we're talking about the hail and the rain on the right. And now we're starting to see a little bit of more of an updraft lowering. If it's gonna produce a tornado, it's gonna come right out of that right there. That's where it's gonna be. Let's go to Jeremy Carter and get an update. Jeremy, nice shot of the mesocyclone. Go ahead and give us an update. Oh, yeah, David, you can see that this thing is just pulling tons of inflow into, into the storm. And really, that area, that updraft lowering that you was talking about, it has, it has dropped a little bit over the last little while. I've been watching. It's been getting more pronounced. And this storm is definitely becoming more organized. Back to you, David. All right, great job, Jeremy. So Jeremy and Kingfisher keeping an eye on that. Hank, still hanging here in the metro. We'll see what these storms do to our south. And, uh, okay, Brandon. He's got that storm now, and then we have Jim coming around on the back side. All right, so a lot going on, lots of moving parts. Look how it's getting lower right there. All right, so what is, uh, what is Brandon? Look at this shot here. All right, so let's go back to reflectivity on Lynx 3, and let's give you the big view. I want to point out, nothing headed for Oklahoma City. By the way, Lace, the, the data's still good and bring in the whole... Set has these showers there, has them weakening quickly, but as of right now... The ones aren't weakening, and also the storms that are up near Watonga, kind of that far south storm, eventually gets a shove to the south, 
and that's what comes back into the metro so it kind of does a c shape okay with the latest yeah okay and the the front right now is still well to the northwest man look at jeremy's shot look at let's go to jeremy's shot right here this thing is uh hey justin tell brandon to stop his car and look at that please please L look at that shot folks jeremy zoom in on that zoom in on that right now jeremy carter go ahead yeah, so here we go, David. So he, here's here's a look at the south end of this, and you can see it's definitely got scud pulling up into the storm. It wouldn't surprise me. A tornado is probably getting pretty close to forming here, David. Back to you. All right, great job there, Jeremy. Looking off to the west-northwest. Okay, so this is going to be it right here. Okay, so there's a shot. Now, let's go to Brandon. Let's get an update from Brandon. He is closer. All right, Brandon, you're back in it. Let me see your shot. Go ahead, take it. Go ahead, you're on. Okay, David, like we were talking about, like I was saying a minute ago about how it kind of was reorganizing. It's, it's trying to complete that final stage right now. Um, this, the, the whole entire base lowered over the last five minutes, and then this lowering developed underneath that lowered base. It's still a little bit ragged. There's not super tight um, circulation underneath it, but the amount of inflow that it's pulling in from the south and the southeast right now is pretty impressive. Um, I still think, you know, it's not quite there, but it's not going to take much more. And, you know, it should it it'll probably produce a tornado. So we're right here with it, tracking east on 33. Um, they're going to go north up towards Loyal. Back to you. All right, good job. So here's the deal. Uh, came down. Um, well, can't really call that a funnel, but it was definitely an updraft lowering under the mesocyclone. But now, see how it's kind of broken up here a little bit? It's not as, as tight, and it's kind of ragged. So that's a good sign. That's a good problem to have. It's spinning, it's gone up, and it, again, pressures are lowering. Look, look, at the, look at the shot here. Look at the right side. Look at the right side of the mesocyclone. Here's the left side, and we've got scud now developing. Um, this concerns me right here because there's, there's another dip. There's a tag coming around right there, okay? And zoom in on your shot here, uh, jo uh, Brandon. Brandon. Uh, let's go back to Brandon here. Let's go back to Brandon. And Brandon, what's it doing right there? Yeah, you know where to look, right there. What is that doing? That's going into that. That's going to be, that's going to be the, the, the center of the mezzo, or at least where it's, it's spinning the hardest and the tightest. Go ahead, Brandon, give us another update there on that. Yeah, David, that's correct. You know, earlier I was saying that there was, it was kind of fighting itself. There was kind of multiple areas of spin underneath the base of this storm. Well, as the base continues to lower, everything is trying to consolidate into a tighter area of circulation at the base of the storm. You know, so right there, there's that little piece. And then you can see this right here is being pulled in from the northeast. And as these two continue to come together, the entire base of the storm continues to lower. So that, that's what I was saying. I think we're probably still five minutes away. I know I said that earlier, but it kind of reorganized again. And as it continues to get further east, it just continues to look better and better and better. And the, the amount of inflow still is, it's probably 30 sustained out of the south-southeast feeding straight into this. Back to you. Yeah, okay, so there we go. So, um, flat base, tags hanging down, and these tags will eventually turn into more than likely a wall cloud, a little tag there, a little tag there. This is going to be the right side of the mezzo. We've got the cigar cloud. You can't see it all the way coming in from the northeast out of the rain-cooled air being pulled in, and then we've got kind of your tail cloud here coming in from the left. So, uh, this is going in and up. This is going from the northeast to southwest, and right in the center is where the mesocyclone is, right here where my hand is, from here up, 30, 40,000 feet up. It's spinning, spinning, spinning. Okay, so we'll see what it does here. Jim Garter coming back around. He'll be on that storm, and I think he is now on it. Is that right, Greg? Uh, okay, all right, let's get to it here. Let's go to Jim Gardner, and Jim is coming around on that storm, and let's get an update from Jim. This is gonna be, once again, the now moving out of Blaine County into Kingfisher County and it rain on the right, the updraft on the left. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, David, we're just coming around. I'm still just in a little bit of heavy rain here. I'm trying to clear it because that rain, you can see it whipping across the, the lens there once I get out of that. But yeah, David, this is a perfect setup right here. This storm is all by itself. We pan back, uh, you grab the it's pretty hot there, Rich, but you can kind of turn it down a little bit and look back to the right pole. But, uh, yeah, it's it's sitting at a really good spot, David. It's got clear skies behind it. It can pull in all that warm air. And you see the front. We pull back wide here. Let's go back wide. Okay, look at that, David. That is, uh, man, that is just a 
well-defined, huge wall cloud with that rain shaft and the rain right in front of it. You see it's very low to the ground, and then right behind it, you can see the blue, blue skies and everything. So this is a perfect setup, David. And we are, just came out of the rain now. We're in a really good position here. And it looks like I'm going to be, uh, let me see, it looks like I'm going to be about four miles directly east of Omega, just north of Highway 3 here, shooting back to the west, David. So again, we're arrived on scene. We're in a really good spot. And it is a definitely huge storm and a huge wall cloud. We'll keep you updated. Jim Gar Point Live for Bob Mills, Scotty's 9. Back to you. Okay, great job, Jim. Jim, if you can hear me still, have Rich back out of this shot one more time. Folks, look at, the stri look at the striations in this. Look at the striations in this. And there's a backside. This is a sharp barber pole cylinder in the sky. There's not a, anything to the backside or to the left or to the south of my hand. That's the left, right? Look at the updraft it's going to try to produce. And look at the striations in the updraft. And then up here, you've got the knuckles. Hang on, Mama. You've got the knuckles back here at the top of the updraft, knuckling back. And it's anvilling off. Look up high. Look up high. Wow. Wow. Wow, that is impressive. And look at the razor sharp anvil. Look at the razor sharp anvil going on with that. Look at the updraft. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Okay. All right. Well, tornado warning. Boom, for that and for good reason. Look at the striations here. See that right there? See that? There's one. See those little kinks in there? That is a true, true signature of a storm that is rotating, and I mean rotating for sure. Wow. Okay. Great shot from Jim and Rich. And there it is. There's the hook. The hook now becoming better defined. And again, we can see that clearly from Jim's shot. It's getting tighter. Look at the hook now, right? And I see Jim is on the northeast side. No, he's not. He's actually on the back side. Okay. Greg? Yeah, he's down there. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. He's down here, Brandon. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Um, so there's Kingfisher. All right. There's Omega. Uh, max rotation now. It's right here right north of Brandon. Tornado warning now uh, with that. So uh, it, has, it has weakened a little bit, but folks, it is still every bit as strong as what it was. To me, it looks more impressive now than it did. Wow, look at that shot from Jim. All right, what, what does shear rate look like on this? Right now, it's not showing up as, as well as what it looks like in the shot. Okay, I'm looking at Jim's shot here. I'm looking at that except on a, wow, that is really starting to spin. Okay, this is gonna be a News 9 tornado warning. A News 9 tornado warning. Let's just do it for far western Kingfisher County, only on News 9, and here's why. I'm looking at Jim's shot, and it is spinning, 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 for sure. Let's go back to Jim Gardner. Let's look at the hook, which is becoming more pronounced. This is gonna be a News 9 tornado warning for that storm. And Jim, your wall cloud is getting tighter, and it's getting lower. Go ahead, Jim. Well, that's right, David. And now I'm just about two and a half miles uh to the north. There, there it goes, David. There it goes. There it, there it goes. There it is. Tornado on the ground. There, there it goes. It's it's wrapping up, David. Tornado on the ground. Like said, News I'm 9. About two and a half miles to the north of Omega. There it is. Tornado. And this is going to be just right to the northwest of Omega here. There's and your you tornado. Can see it's starting to form right now. Yeah. It started really yeah. tightening up while you were talking there, David. Yeah. 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 More and more of the top uh, lower base of uh, the wall cloud just started spinning rapidly. Tornado and on the now ground. You see the elephant News truck 9. right here tornado coming down. I don't know if it's on the ground. Yeah, it's, it's on, the, on ground. the ground. I can see it. It's on the ground. It's on the ground, David. On the ground. I'm flying towards it. I'm moving in. Yeah. I'm moving in closer to it here. Okay, there it is. And uh, it may it may fall apart here, but it's going to definitely it's definitely going to recirculate, David. You can if see If this falls shot. apart, it's, it's definitely going to recirculate, and it's probably going to drop a bigger one the next time it comes down. But again, that was a Elvin truck tornado. It was all the way to the ground. I can see the dust at the end of it there. So. The good thing yep. is this is very sparsely populated. Okay. It's a lot of farmland yeah. out here, David. So there's a, right. a lot of places. I mean, if it hits somebody's home, it's going to be a real high percentage that it hits somebody's home out here. But yeah. again, now you can see I'm moving in really close to it, David. Hey, 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 so Jim, you can Jim. see the bottom of that wall cloud, and there it goes again. Right. Hey, Jim, let like me, I said, let me, it was cycling let me. around. It's on the ground. I can see it. It's on the ground. Yeah, it's right here. Right now, David. Okay, let's, let's zoom in. All right, Jim, this is going to be it. There's no official tornado warning. This is what we've been saying for the last 10 minutes. This is only a News 9 tornado warning. The tornado is on the ground. It's on the ground, and no signs of any major damage. But there's your wall cloud spinning. Again, a News 9 tornado warning. And this is going to be now uh, exactly, I'll give you your location here. Let's keep Jim shot up. Um, this is going to be north of Brandon, 
and this is going to be northwest of Kingfisher, or uh, exactly. Let's go to links three here real quick. Keep the shot up. Do not lose this shot, control room. There's a tornado. It's going to be just north of Omega. Just north of Omega. There's a tornado. There's where Jim Gardner is. He's right here looking right at it. There's your tornado. It's going to be three and a half miles north of Omega. Tornado on the ground. Shear rate's maxed out. This is a News 9 tornado warning. News 9 tornado warning with the tornado on the ground. It's on the ground right now. Let's go back to Jim's shot. Let's take a look at it here. We'll get a storm track up. And uh, Jim, still rotating. Rotation now. The wall cloud is getting more ominous. It is getting larger. We're starting to see tags now under the wall cloud as it spins faster and faster and faster. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to get tighter. We'll see what it does. So we've already had the one tornado on the ground. It looks like it might have lifted, but it could certainly come back at any time. We might have a new cone developing on the right side. We might have transferred some momentum and a little bit of energy onto the right side here. So let's go back to Jim. Jim, is it on the ground? Give us an update. Look for suction spots. Go ahead, Jim. No, not right now, David. Right now, uh, while you were talking, it lifted. Uh, there's about two or three times that it was on the ground, lifted back up, and you saw it right the first, uh, first time you saw the elephant trunk, then that dissipated, it was on the ground, then it reformed, it went back to the ground, now it's up again, but now it's trying to reform again, David, and there's a pretty large farm right underneath it. Right underneath it right now, there's a pretty large farm, and those people are right okay. below this, so hopefully wow. it will not drop a tornado while it's over these people's uh, Jim? Okay. house here. But hey, Jim? Again, definitely a lot of rotation, David. Like I said, it may have transferred a little bit to the front of it, to the right side, but look at the back side. Look at the back side. It is still just churning, David, and spinning, so it can it's drop a, another tornado here at any moment. And uh, like I said, we're, we're just flying kind of, I'm just kind of flying backwards, just staying with it, just kind of moving uh, hey, backwards. Jim, let me jump in here. Keeping this up, but Jim, it, again, it's just in one of those. Let me jump in here. I don't yeah, think he can, can hear me. Hear. He can't hear me. Hey, control room, let's figure this out. I need to be able to speak with Jim. Let's get that figured out. Let's go back to, uh, let's stay with Jim's shot. And uh, I've got to be able to talk to him, okay? So here's the deal. Here's the right side of the wall cloud. All right, this is spinning right here. And uh, Jim Gardner, I need Jim to zoom in on that. And right here, we're going to look for the tornado on the ground. Then we'll go back to radar. This is about less than 1,000 feet off the ground. And I'm looking right here underneath it, this little pond. We're looking for condensate. We've already had the tornado. And also, if we can re-rack the video from the tornado from a few minutes ago, that would be great, and we'll get that going. Uh, right here, this is gonna be the cone, and it's getting faster and faster, right? Okay, so here it is right here. This is gonna be a News 9 tornado warning now. News 9 tornado warning. This is getting tighter. I'm looking right down in here for any, it's gonna be water vapor. Now, the fields are wet from all the rain we had last night, so we're not gonna pick up a lot of dust early on until it gets stronger, but it's gonna be right here when it does it. Okay, all right, let's keep his shot up. Let's go back to links three, That's and right. there's the hook. Look at the hook on that guy. Wow, so we have Brandon right there, looking right at it. Brandon's there, Jim Gardner's in the air, and there's your hook. The stuff to the west is not as strong. We have this one storm right here, which has produced the tornado. It's right there. Right now, it's a low-hanging wall cloud. It is not on the ground right now, but it won't take much for that to happen. And there is your hook. Okay, wow, look at that shot. Okay, so big hail. It's southwest of Loyal. Tornado warning for you folks in Loyal. We've had the tornado live on News 9 with a News 9 tornado warning. You folks in Loyal, safe spot, center part of the house. It's a small community. There's a lot of farms out here. Lowest level, center part of the house. Look at the hook. Look at the hook wrapping up right there. Okay, that's where the tornado is. It's right here. It's going to go on. I, if I live in Loyal, I'm, I'm in the storm shelter. I'm in the safe spot, okay? Center part of the house, lowest level, interior bathroom, interior closet. You got to go there now, okay? It's moving northeast. Let's do a storm track. Let's go to Lynx 4. And uh, Cassie, we, we're going to have to shift that a little farther to the left, okay? But Loyal at uh, 426, uh, Dover. 428, Dover at about 508, and Hennessy at about 524. Okay, let's go back to the shot. Again, it's going to Dover, it's going to Hennessy, it's going to Marshall, and I think it'll be north of Crescent. Okay, let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot. Other storms up north, uh, they are severe. Let's go to Jim and get an update from Jim as he looks back at the storm there. And uh, Jim, there's the area of rotation there. What do you think? It's still spinning, go ahead. Yeah, David, we're going to have to fly away from it a little bit, so I'm headed uh, off to the east a little bit to get repositioned. But uh, 
Yeah, David, it's just back in a, in a cycle stage right now, but the whole thing is spinning. There is a lot of action in that wall cloud, and we haven't seen anything go to the ground yet uh, after the first two times that we showed you live on the air. But uh, this is still this is still definitely a dangerous storm, David. It is definitely still spinning, and at any moment, it uh, it could drop a tornado at any moment. Like I said, it's it's in the perfect situation, David. Out behind it, there's nothing but blue sky, and uh, it's all by itself. And it's uh, you know it's one of those uh, scenarios where you know it's got the rain and everything out front of it, but it's just a real uh, got the updraft real sharp on the backside, nothing but clear air and clear si skies. So right now, I think believe it's just. In a recycle stage, David, and we'll just keep tracking it, keep you updated. Jim Garpoint live from Bob Mills, Scott, who's nine, back to you. You know, I mean, so he has a, a better shot looking back at the, uh, I mean, just a little bit cl uh, closer, farther to the northeast. So he's not, don't don't get on the other side of the hail core. Don't get me wrong, Greg. He's in a good spot. I'm just thinking just swing a little bit farther to the north. And new uh, storms going up on behind this to the west yeah. as the front's crashing in from Hitchcock, O'Keene, down to Greenfield, David. Yeah, so here comes here comes the beginning of the of the of the line is that is this how far is the cold front from here we need to figure that out it's probably not too far away uh putnam down to bessie there is a okay. west northwest wind okay so look at the hooks goodness okay uh look at that folks right there all right let's go back to jim tornado warning continues news nine tornado warning for kingfisher county look at the dry slot coming in here look at the slot that's dry air wrapping around the mesocyclone let's go ahead and go to jim gardner and bring Jim back in here. And Jim, there's your shot. We'll give us a quick update, and then we'll go back to radar. Jim, it looks like it's almost on the ground. Go ahead. Yeah, it is, David. It's uh, it's definitely ramped back up. Uh, like I said, I'm just south of Loyal, uh, shooting back to the northwest. And uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely ramping back up, David. And it's definitely getting tighter, and it is definitely turning here. So it's uh, I mean, uh, well, we may there it goes. I think it's going, David. I think it's going. Like I said, it's 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 trying really really hard here, and if it's not on the ground, I'm looking at the ground. I don't see any. Yeah. I don't I don't see any suction right spots here. or anything, David. Yeah. Uh, go, Jim, Jim, go ahead and zoom on in. Have Rich zoom on in below that cone right there. Zoom in. Okay, there's a farm. There's a farmhouse. I don't see it on the ground. Okay, go to the right. Go to the right. Pan to the right. Okay. All right. Okay, let's back out just a yeah, second. Let's go back. It's, there's it's a cone. It's not on the ground, David, but it, the man, there's there a tremendous is. amount of action in this. Yeah, here's the cone. Stuff, so at it's, any moment, yeah, any it's gonna, moment, yeah, it's it, gonna, it, it there it is. A, a there it is. Tornado, tornado on the ground. So far, we've been lucky. Jim, let me jump in. It's right here. It's right here. Okay, so there's the tornado right there. It's hanging back. It's back here. Okay, there it is. I just saw a couple of suction spots right there. There's the tornado. It's right here on the ground again. Only on News Nine. Look at the look at the motion of the of the of the wall cloud and th there it is there it is again right there tornado on the ground again let's go back to jim gardner live on news nine two live miles, on news nine two miles southwest of loyal two miles southwest of loyal you folks in loyal lowest level center part of the house you got to go right now jim gardner there's a tornado give us a quick update that's right david uh and right on lacy you're nailed it man exactly where it is and how far it is from loyal uh it went across that uh, dirt field so we're able to see it that's the trouble. That the the cone's not all the way to the ground, but you got that condensate. But you got uh, turbulent air, man. You got that funnel on the ground there, and it is tightening up here, David. It is getting tighter and it is getting tighter here. There it is. There's a good yeah. shot of it coming up off the ground again. The good thing is, David, uh, it's in the middle of a of, of just uh, hay fields and a, a pasture, and going into some wheat fields right now. I'm looking up to the north east there are a huh? couple of homes here depending on which way yeah. it drifts david it could hit one of these homes if it stays yeah. on the ground here okay but again it is moving and it is wrapping up Look and at that shot, uh, this folks. may not be the end of this this no. may turn into a bigger tornado yeah here as it you is. can see to the left and right of the screen tornado on the ground you can see those two uh, things kind of look like funnels the one on the left kind of looks like another funnel trying to form yeah that may merge into what's in front of it there and this okay. can turn into one large tornado that we've okay. seen happen before all but right let's go back to again, radar uh, Okay, all right, thank you, Jim. Okay, I wanna talk about the lineup north quickly here. Uh, these are all severe, they are not tornadic, but they are severe now, and they are spinning. We gotta keep an eye on that, running from Pond Creek uh, down to Enid, down to Wacomas, and then down to and east of Ames, okay? Gonna have winds 60 to 70, quarter up to golf ball size hail, all the way down the line here. And the good thing about this whole line is that storms in the line, when they're together, 
they will have a harder chance to produce a tornado. They can certainly do it. Okay, let's come back down to the storm down south that matters right now. Tornado continues on the ground. We've had it live only on News 9 with a News 9 tornado warning. There's your hook. That's what Jim is looking at right now. And uh, there it is. Okay, so Jeremy's right here. We have, and their shear rate, it's, it's ramped up. There's ramped up. Okay, so let's go, there's reflectivity. Look at the swirl now, right over and just southwest of Loyal. There it is in Jim's shot. All right, we've had it on the ground multiple times now uh, to the southwest of Loyal. Okay, Brandon's right there. What does Brandon see in his shot? I'm looking at Brandon's shot. Val does too. Okay, what does Val see in that shot? There it is. Okay, so it's, it's lifted for now, but the wall cloud is still very, very low to the ground. Okay, let's do a storm track, and it's a little bit stretched out now. Let's get, zoom in on it one more time. Okay, so here it is. So there's the hook. There's Brandon, there's Jeremy, there's Kingfisher. This is gonna be north of Kingfisher. We gotta watch the storms back to the west. Wow, look at the wall cloud. Look at the wall cloud, folks. And again, this is going to Marshall. This is going to Crescent. This is gonna go between Dover and Hennessy. If you live between Dover and Hennessy, this is gonna be a tornado warning for you, okay? Let's go back to Jim's shot here on Lynx, uh, excuse me, let's go back to Jim's shot and look at the shot. There's the cone, there's the cone now. And that's going to be just to the west of Loyal. Jim, it looks like it's on the ground again. Tornado's on the ground. If it's not, it will be here shortly. Look at the rotation of that shot from Jim Gardner. Look at it spinning from uh, left to right, spinning hard and fast. Go ahead, Jim. Give us another update. Well, that's right, David. Uh, in fact, it's been going to the ground and coming back up. It's been on the ground uh, a few times here while you were talking. Uh, you just couldn't really see it until it moved into somewhere it could pick up some dirt or debris or some of that dried grass then you could see it turning on the ground here so it is still it's it don't look to appear to be on the ground right now but at any moment it's it's just going up and down david and uh, touch it up and down there now there's a farm there's a farm coming up you can see on the right side of the screen now we're kind of in a paradox here so we we don't really know where that storm is located at that farmhouse but if you pull back it looks like it's just going right for it but it could be to the, you know, it could be to the east or west of it. We just, it's on the ground again. You, you see it right there. David, there it is, it's on, the on the ground again. Oh, uh, there's a vortice on the right side. Look at the vortice now, multiple vortex. There you go. There's your tornado on the ground. Only on News 9, right there. There's your tornado, right? A little bit of a spin up going on. And you're thinking, wow, is there a pond there? No, that's condensate developing on the ground. That's water vapor that is actually developing on the ground. Okay, and that, it just weakened. So when you're looking at a, an area and, you, and a tornado goes through and you're thinking, well, that house was hit and the other house wasn't, what happened? Well, because you get these little, little vortices, right? Meso little vortices in there that will, again, produce a tornado right there. Then across the street, there's no vortices. So they miss out. Unless it's a big, wide and violent tornado, that's a different deal. This is what I call a merry-go-round of tornadoes. We've got the main cone here, and then we've got section spots or tornadoes coming down underneath it. Okay, let's go to Val Castor. Let's bring Val in here. And Val's right there looking right at it. Go ahead, Val, what do you think? Uh, just put down another brief tornado. There's the cone. There's your shot. Go ahead, Val. Condensation, condensation a narrow, narrow funnel of condensation all the way to the ground. It, it briefly touched all the way down. But I'm telling you, this is a broad rotation. David, it could very easily form into a bigger tornado at any minute because it's strong rotation and it's also wide rotation. And uh, you can see it right there. I know you've been watching it from Jim Gardner's shot, um, but every now and then you see this, this condensation, narrow funnel, and it's going to do it again in just a minute, come all the way to the ground. This is going to be about one mile southeast of our location uh, that we're looking at right here. And David, it's really not moving that fast at the moment. Back to you. We need another one, too, and maybe maybe two more. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. It's going to okay. do it again. We need, yeah, just we need three going south. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there it is. There's a wall cloud. Rising motion. Yeah. And uh, looking on the ground here for any debris, I said Valcaster shot, and then we'll go back to radar. Look at the motion here, right here. Right here. See that? Look at that. Watch this right here. Leave it right there. Right there on the right side, right here. This is where it's going to do it. It's going to do it right there, and it's going to try to do it right here. This is where it's going to do it, right here. Look on the ground behind this tree. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay. All right, look at it. Wow, it is turning. And there it is in Jim's shot. Right here, here we go. Here we go, it's gonna put down a bigger tornado. Let's go back to Jim's shot. Let's go back to Gardner's shot here. And uh, there it is right there. And there's that cone that Val's looking at. 
And uh, this is going to be the right side of the tornado, or the wall cloud, the left side. There's your cone right here. So we have multiple, we have two areas in here that are spinning. Okay, let's go back to link three. Let's go back to link three and take a look at it here on the big view. There it is right there. It's northeast of Loyal. There's the, there's the hook. There's the tornado. All right, there's the tornado. And let's back out of this just a second. Okay. I want to talk about what's going on. What do you got? There's been some reports of funnel trying to form west of Lacey between O'Keen and Lacey along Highway 51. Looking at radar, nothing too ominous there, but that's okay. also a storm with some rotation as well. Okay, let's go back to valve shot here. And there's the funnel right there. There it is. Horizontal funnel came out of the wall cloud. It did tighten up to get that. And uh, Val, go ahead. Give us a quick update on that. Okay, David, so uh, this whole rotation now is almost lifting due north. It's almost like it's trying to occlude at the moment because uh, it, it has. It's lifting directly north. I mean, it's going to come almost right over us or maybe just pass east of us maybe a quarter of a mile or so. Uh, but I, I think it's, uh, it's lifting north now, David, which is significant. If you live out here, just keep that in mind. I see a, a house uh, about 200 yards to our east. They better be in their shelter right now. Okay, okay, David, it has passed north of the road. Look go over ahead, here to the go ahead, Val. Look over here to the left. Look over to the yeah, left there of the it road. Is. I see the rotation is north of the road now, mm -hmm. north of this dirt road. Yeah, I'm looking at it right it's there. The north. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Yeah, there, there it, it is. is. It is trying to occlude. Yeah, there it is. It's on the, it's on the right side. Okay, all right, so it's a little messy right now, which is a good problem to have. We like it messy. We don't want it to be all tight and everything, and then you get all kinds of problems, right? As long as this is interacting and having problems, that's a good thing. We've already had multiple tornadoes, but uh, if we can keep them as they've been so far and that has been weak, that is a good thing. Okay, let's go back to uh, links three, and this is the hook I'm talking about right now. This is that leading storm, and we always say this, storms by themselves are the scariest storms of all, right? The storms back in the line, they're struggling because they're competing with each other, right? They're, they're trying to become dominant. Well, it's hard to become dominant when you're right next to another storm that's taking all your energy and your warm, moist air and everything else. But we have this one supercell here all by itself. All right, so Dover, the tornado threat for you is not there. That's gonna be to your northwest and that's gonna head off to the northeast. All right, so Cass, we need to bring that storm track way to the northeast. Get, for sure, get Hennessy in it. There's where it is right there. Brandon is there looking at it. And Brandon's right underneath it. So tornado warning. I don't think it's on the ground right now by looking at all of our tracker feeds. I think it has lifted. I'm pretty sure it has lifted right now. And the rain from the west is quickly encroaching on it. So. Yeah. yeah, so here's the deal. So here's the hook. Here's the updraft back in here. And this wave now is moving faster than the actual storm. And it's going to absorb it. So good news is that when it absorbs it and brings it in, um, that's going to be a good, good thing, right? It will weaken it even further. So that is a, that's a positive for sure. All right, let's go back to Jim. And uh, he's back on the shot here a little bit. He's back to the southeast, looking back to his northwest. Go ahead, Jim Gardner, give us an update. Well, that's right, David. I'm almost sitting over the top of Loyal right now, shooting back to the northwest. And Lacey is exactly right. Look at the, this is the rain, this is a storm coming up behind it, and we follow back down the line to the left, and there's another uh, storm following up behind it, so it's kind of collided. It's absorbing with that storm that produced a tornado, and uh, that's, that's a really good thing to have because it's not setting by itself in just that open, clear blue sky with sunshine on the backside, David. So again, I think that the tornado danger just kind of went out of this because this storm has undercut it. So uh, right now it's just heavy hail, Heavy rain, cloud to ground lightning. We'll keep you updated. Jim Gar Point Live for Bob Mills. Got his nine back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Jim. So, uh, control room, if we can re rack the video here and take a look at it and uh, take a look at the video. This is from earlier when we had it live on News 9. And uh, there it is. It was spinning, and then we had several tornadoes. This is kind of the first piece, but that was on the ground. And a little bit of a, a debris cloud down there. The ground's very wet. It's not a very strong tornado at all. But that's what it looked like from Jim Gardner and Bob Mill Sky News 9. And uh, we had that live on the air for you. And there it is. And then it cycled again. And you'll watch this right here. Tornado on the ground. Another week, but still a tornado right there. And then there's another shot where it fills in. But there you go. And uh, went across, looks like an old pond that's fairly dry. All right, there's your tornado moving across a pond. This is when it was southwest of Loyal. 
and then there it was spinning and then weakened just a bit and then it produced another tornado that will get stuck in here in just a second on the video for you. But uh, we had three, at least three touchdowns from that cone right there. And that cone was spinning hard. I mean, it was really, really turning. All right, look at that. Look at that right there. Okay. So, wow, 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 wow. Okay, let's go back to radar, back to, and uh, talking about the velocity data here, I want to point out areas of spin that we're watching. Yes, the one southwest of Enid has been at least kind of a little kink there, just west of the Air Force Base. Yeah, let's go ahead and um, take a look. It's right here. JD's on that. What's it look like, though? Look a little closer here. Here's Hillsdale, La Homa, Enid. And th right here. Yes, yeah. Okay. All right, JD's so if you a little... look at that, I mean, it's in the rain. It I is mean, it completely is... wrapped in rain, which we don't like because it's hard to see. It's going to go right over Vance Air Force Base, it looks like. So not a tornado warning on this, but it is spinning. we got to watch it. It is spinning right now. That's going to be from Vance uh, just to the west of Vance. So we'll say severe thunderstorm warning, but we've got to watch the tornado potential, okay? The good thing going for this line is that it's a solid line, and that will keep your tornado threat at least a little bit lower. All right, that will keep it at least a little bit lower. And then we have other showers down here developing and some thunderstorms. We have uh, Hank coming in from the north, right? And then we have Jeremy coming in from the north. Wow, look at that shot from Jim Gardner. Folks, you want to see something incredible? Wow. Let's go to Jim's shot, control room, and look at the right side of the mesocyclone there. Jim, we have a stack of pan pancakes, my friend. A stack of pancakes all the way up. That is a mesocyclone, and it is not, it is not wrapped up in clouds and rain. It is, it is out there for you to look at, and wow. Look at that shot from Jim Gardner. That is an impressive mesocyclone spinning, going upwards of 40 to 50,000 feet up, where we've had that tornado here for the last uh, 45 minutes, at least off and on. Jim Gardner, if you can hear me, give me an update on what you're seeing right there. Well, that's right, David. Uh, we're just in awe just looking at this. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I'm kind of flying back to the southeast. I'm going to have to make a little detour here real quick. But uh, that, like you said, is just an impressive picture. Just a stack of pancakes. You had a little syrup to go with that, man. You'd have a meal. But that's pretty impressive right there, David. What a storm. Jim Garpoint live from Bob Mills. Scott, who's nine, back to you. Yeah, that is. And look at that shot there from Jim. Wow, that is impressive for sure. Okay, back to Lynx 3. We're going to kind of give you the... Zoomed in look, here's our hook. It's still spinning, tornado warning continues. Uh, if you live in Hennessy, you need to go to your safe spot, lowest level, I'd go there now. If you live in between Hennessy, down 81, down to Dover, go to your safe spot, okay? Tornado warning continues. Back here, the hook's right here. This is the dangerous part yep, of the storm. Right over the Cimarron River. Yeah, exactly, right, yeah, absolutely right. Yep, right over the river. Let's go to Jeremy, uh, excuse me, let's go to Brandon. And Brandon's right here, looking off to his north. And uh, Brandon, there it is. What do you think? It looks like it's lifted. It's reorganizing or trying to kind of figure out what it's going to do because it has the next wave of rain and storms coming in behind it. Go ahead. Yeah, David, that's right. We got a little bit out of position and we've got back in position now. It kind of got ragged just as it crossed the road west of Loyal, but it's reorganized pretty quickly right here in front of us. Um, I wouldn't say a tornado is imminent, but the trend of the last two or three minutes is definitely up as it moves off to the east. And we're literally right underneath it. So if it does anything, we're going to be right here. Okay. All right. Great job, Brandon. So Brandon's right there looking at the same storm where we've had the tornado off and on. All right. Let's go back to Lynx 3. Circulation out. Getting stronger. We said it was going to Vance. And uh, here it is. Wow. Also radars. Wow, wow, wow. Man, it is wrapped in rain. Okay. So uh, I tell you what. If I'm at Vance Air Force Base, low-level lock. Uh, it's coming in on top of you. All right, right here. It's, it's going to be about a mile west of Vance. And th this is going to be a developing tornado. Low level lock, west of Vance. Here's Enid. If you live in Enid, south of Enid, or east of Enid, you need to be thinking about going to your safe spot, okay? You really need to start thinking about going to your safe spot. What's velocity data? Look, there it is. Yeah, yeah. it's completely wrapped in rain. Yeah. So you're not going to see this. It'll look nothing like... Uh, the big storm we've had down to the south that we've been able to watch the tornadoes live on the air from our trackers and from Jim Gardner. Okay, it's nothing like that. It's completely shielded in rain. So I'm going to hold my finger here. Let's turn on reflectivity. And I'll turn off these and, sort of cylinders. There yeah, you go. there it is. So there's the kink. It's right here. It's wrapped in heavy, heavy 
Heavy rain. Wrapped in heavy rain. Okay, so the hail sizes, yep, yeah, not that big. Small no. hail. But possible tornado now developing right on top right on top of Vance Air Force Base. What's the movement of that? Is it still just almost due east? Uh yes. At the moment, yes. Okay, and it's and definitely bowing out from there all the way down to Wacomas, and this is kind of that top end. Right. Right. And let's go let's go ahead and uh, lapse uh, velocity data. Okay. Let's see what it looks like here. Sarah movement. What do you think? Yeah, boy, uh, it's going to try to go be in. lifting north a little bit. Yeah, it's trying to occlude, which sometimes it'll tighten a tornado up or a signature up, and it'll tighten it up and produce. Okay, so Enid, Enid, you really need to, you, you got to be on your game, okay? If you live in Enid, down to Vance, this is trying to occlude. Now, watch this right here. Let's go ahead and zoom. Oh, yeah, definitely. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this, Lace. Okay. And here's Vance. It's going to come into the southern and southeastern sides of Enid. There's some streets for you. Okay, right here. Right here. So again, moving, it's moving northeast at about 35 to 40, it looks like. It looks like it's moving to me. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, Oakwood Road and uh, what's the East West Road here? Or West Southgate Route? Road. Oh, Southgate, yep. Okay, so Southgate Road is your East West and Oakwood. Circulation here just to the west and northwest of Vance Air Force Base. Watch the area of spin. Okay, right there. That's going to go to East Enid. It's gonna to go to East Enid and cross the railroad tracks on the east side of town up there. Okay, everybody knows where they are. And kind of on the industrial side of Enid. And there's a similar the situation further north. It's not quite as pronounced. Okay, let's take a look at so that. So Marty's up there along with Vaughn, but up okay. near Pond Creek, very similar. Where yeah. it's bowing out and you're starting to get a little bit of yeah. a area over Pond Creek. Yeah, it's small. It's kind of a bookend vortex, we call it. And as this, as this expands out, this is kind of forced to the north. You get a mezzo up here. And then that's going to be headed towards uh, Marty. Marty's right there looking right at it. What does Marty see in his shot? Let's go to Marty Logan. Let's bring him in, then we'll come back south. Uh, let's go to Marty. Hey, Marty, on that northern storm, area of spin, still ongoing there. It is rotating back to your west-southwest. Not quite tornadic yet, but we're keeping an eye on it. Go ahead. Give us an update. Yeah, we've been watching this thing, and uh, Justin's been telling us about the wind field that's down to the southwest of us. And I'm turning on it right now, looking over a field of flax and it's not really distinguishable right now there's just so much rain we've been battling that but we're keeping an eye on bonds right behind me we're still watching back to you david all right great job marty so marty's up north so we have the whole line stacked right so there's his shot again this thing is wrapped in rain as well up there and that that's the worst part about this everything's wrapped in rain except for the southern storm okay let's go back to reflectivity on links three and okay. area of spin here area of spin Right here, okay, area of spin here. There's one here. Let's come back south now. And here's our big supercell being eaten by the main line, which I wanna point out in this line, these storms are strong, but they're not crazy strong. Nickel, dime, quarter size hail, quarter size hail in the southern part of the line. And then we'll see what happens with this. I'm a little concerned that this starts to ramp back up and uh, try to pull ahead of the line here. Let's go to Tom. Tom is in, a, is in a very good spot, looking off to the west here. And uh, Tom, there's your updraft. It looks like maybe a new updraft forming there, which was tied to the old storm, but it, this is another storm we're talking about. So go ahead, Tom, give us an update as you look back at that storm there, at the updraft. What's it doing to you? Thanks. Yeah, that's right. This new storm is going up pretty quick. Right now I'm getting some small hail. Um, I can see two main cores, one due west and then one southwest of me. They're going up pretty rapidly. Looks like they're going to try to line out. Back to you. Yeah, okay, great job, Tom. So Tom is looking at two storms. There's the one to his west, and he's got another one back down here to his southwest. But uh, rain-free base, big updraft. Let's go to Lynx 3. Let's take a look at it on radar. And, uh, okay, area of circulation is right here. It's not anything like what it was earlier. And the tornado warning does continue. And we do have a tornado warning now to that storm to the southwest of Enid. Okay. Your Vance Air Force Base. All right, so we're, we'll get back to that. So, again, uh, southern storm, tornado warning, uh, still ongoing, and the hook is going to be right in here. It's going to be west-northwest of Dover, but it is becoming muddy and murky quickly here as this storm is beginning to pull this into it. So the dominant storm now is the storm back to the west. So that is another problem for that storm. That's a good thing for us, but we'll see what these storms back to the west do. We had okay. a report of baseball-sized hail five miles northwest of Dover. 
Baseball size hail, with the five that miles. The, tor the tornado, yes. Yeah, and that was with that hail core right there. Yes. So, folks, that was baseballs. Baseballs, five miles northwest of Dover. So, there's going to be windows blown out. There's going to be roofs with heavy, heavy damage and vehicles and all the above. All right, so let's go back up north now. New tornado warning now for you folks in Enid. It's going to be, again, we sit on the southern and eastern sides of Enid. That's where the tornado warning is. Downtown Enid, we want to make sure you're in the clear here. Oh, look at the donut hole. There you go. It's right here, but look at the weakness on the yep. back side. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's got that S, complete S shape almost. Yeah. Okay, so it's over and to the east of Vance Air Force Base. Like I said, it's going to go to East Enid. It'll cross 412 as it makes its way towards uh, Breckenridge. The way it's going right now. Hey, go ahead and lapse that. Let's see what okay. it's doing. I just want to make, make sure our bearings are straight here. Okay, so it might actually, yeah, it's going to be close. So Breckenridge, uh, tornado warning, it's going to be on or just south of you. Definitely no one needs to be traveling on Highway 412 yeah. east of Enid. No. No, if you know anybody that's going up I-35, they're going to try to get into Enid from the east. Do not do that right now. Do not do that right now. Okay, so here it is. Tornado warning for this. And there's the area of circulation. Went right over Vance Air Force Base. And now the tornado warning is just to the east of Vance, about a mile. It's moving east-northeast now. Speed still 30, 35. What do you think on the speed? It's a little slower, 25, yeah. 25, slow down some. Okay, the line's starting to keep everything a little bit in check. Okay, so tornado warning there, and you can see it on shear rate. Look at that. Ooh, wow. Man, that really, really tightened up. See the S configuration right there? Right here. Tornado warning with this storm right here. Okay, we'll do a storm track, and let's go back to Lynx 4. And uh, there it is, Fairmont, 456, Garber at 508. How about uh, Billings at 522, Red Rock, 541, Marlin at 546, a little bit of Paradise Casino. Oh, boy. 550, uh, Sooner Lake at about 6 o'clock, Morrison at about 6 o'clock, Ponca City at about 6 o'clock as well. That's going to be way up here, long ways away. Another area of circulation though, up here north of Hunter. I have to watch that too, Lace. That's what you were talking about earlier. Yes, earlier. Okay, so again, tornado warning now for central, eastern Garfield County. It includes eastern Enid. If you live west of, of uh, 81 in Enid, you're fine. If you live north of downtown Enid on 81, you're fine. As far as the tornado threat, you're gonna, still going to get some wind and hail, but the tornado is going to be right here. Okay, Garber is the, the, the target zone right now. Garber up to Billings, Marlin, and Red Rock. Okay, coming out of uh, the Enid right here. There's your tornado. All right, let's put reflectivity back on, just see what it looks like. Is it still wrapped in rain completely? Yes. Yeah. But oh, look at the ball trying to come out here a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Looks a little more interesting. What does JD see in his shot? What does he see? Let's see. Um, and the circulation is about between uh, Leona Mitchell Boulevard and South 30th Street along Southgate Road for folks in the Enid area. Okay. All right. Um, so, tornado is going to be right. Look at, let's go ahead and zoom in on, on this. Let's go back to Link 3. And, uh, and here, here's velocity. Right? So yeah, there's, there's, Enid. there's, yeah, 30th Street. There's downtown Enid, right? Walmart and everything back here on the west side. And there's the area of spin. Look at this configuration right here. All right, there's where the tornado is going to be. Crossing uh, uh, 10th Street, crossing 30th Street, 42nd Street. And east west is going to be Southgate Road again, like we said. Tornado is going to be right here. 30th and Southgate Road, pretty much? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and wh while you're looking at that, the storms yeah. to the southwest continuing to ramp up. The one near Apache is rotating, and it is severe, making a quick trek up towards cement and eventually Chickasha. So okay. we can go on Lynx 1 when you're ready to yep. take a look down that way. Yep, and uh, let's, let's go back to uh, Lynx 3 one. here. Oh, Lynx, Lynx 1? Yes, Lynx 1. Let's there go you back go. to Lynx 1. There's the severe storm southwest and, uh, to the metro. Yeah, and there's also a severe storm near uh, Lawton, or at least almost. So uh, Apache, there's your dry line, by the way. Yes. Okay, and you can see is, the cold front too. Okay, so, all right. So, are all the storms up north basically now? They're uh, they're along or ahead of the cold front, but the cold front now is impinging upon those storms. So it when is that, when that happens. Uh, are the winds strong behind the? the uh, front? Forty miles per hour. In fact, just had a gust to sixty-two in Alva. 
With a northwest wind? With a northwest wind. Wow, that will undercut the storms, which is a good thing. So the window for tornadoes today up north wasn't that long. And here's why, because those storms are going up and they're going to get undercut. We're going to have cool northwest wind blowing underneath the storms, and that will cut off the updrafts at the surface. And you've got to have low-level surface winds out of the east or out of the south or out of the southeast to get tornadoes. Now, so, I, will, I will say, for the storms up north, yeah. Cherokee still has a south wind. Yeah. So still the, the leading edge of the storms up north are still ahead of, okay. the, of the boundary. So, yeah, so until it catches it, we're still game on up there. Uh, we're still game on as far as as far as that. Okay, so let's back out of this just a okay. second. Let me see where everybody currently is located. Uh, Justin, where's Jeremy? Head south on A1. Okay. Uh, is he uh, almost to Okarchi? Is that right? Yes, he's north side. Okay. All right, let's get him south. And uh, let's also, I'll tell you what, let's go back to, okay, I want to point this out here. Uh, this storm is concerning because it's headed towards the Oklahoma City area. Okay. All right, let's go to Hank now. Hank's got a visual on that storm. He's coming in from the north. Let's get an update from Hank. Hank, go ahead, give us an update as you head south towards that rotating thunderstorm now coming out of Caddo County, Hank. That's going to go right up towards Chickasha. It's going to head to Chickasha. Go ahead, Hank. Yeah, David, we are busting south on 81. I'm going to pull over here real quick just so you can take a look. These are the storms that are further down south. We're watching uh, a cluster of storms that is just to the northwest of Chickasha that, that's building right now. But our main focus is this storm that's down by the Apache Surreal area that's lifting towards Chickasha at the moment. It's kind of disorganized right now, but there is very strong updraft characteristics with it. So we're going to jump in the middle of it as it continues to mature and bring it into the southwest side of the metro if it makes it up that far. Back to you, David. Yeah, here's the deal, Hank. Your storm, it is, it is ramping up, and velocity data uh, is getting stronger. So, Hank, uh, keep... keep Keep moving south, southbound and down. All right, let's go to uh, back to Lynx Four, and let's do a storm track. Now we're kind of we're talking about the storms up north. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts to this piece of uh, oh, puzzle, whatever it is. I know, right? We've got more stuff going on left, right, north, south. Okay, so there's your storm track. Now let's go ahead and lapse that, Cassie. And let me make sure. I want to see my movement here. Okay, yeah. So Anadarko 457. This, this, that's with the severe storm at Cement, Ninikov 510, Tiger Safari, um, Tiger Safari at, let's say, uh, four, uh, 546, Blanchard 550, Moore at about 618, Moore 618. Are conditions favorable for tornadoes? Yes, including Oklahoma City. All right, so this is our problem. Um, this is getting stronger. All right, so Hank's coming in from the north. And, uh, and then from there, it's going to run up towards Chickasha. All right, so more 618. That'll be the same for Norman. D Oklahoma City, that's going to be South Metro, 630. Tinker Air Force Base, 634. Midwest City at 636. Okay, so we have Hank coming in from the north. We have uh, Jeremy com coming in from the north as well. And uh, this storm is going to move northeast. It's going to parallel and go right up I-44. So uh, you folks in Chickasha... Um, you got to stay weather aware of the tornado threat. It is high today. It is real. If this storm ramps up any farther. Okay, let's get to uh, velocity data. Let's go back to link three and look at some of the products down here. Yes, I'm sorry. Let's go okay. southwest. And again, this is what I'm concerned about right now. Let me switch radars for you. And uh, okay. There you go. Okay, this is the debris signature showing up on radar over the town of Apache. Let me turn on correlation coefficient. Okay. And take a look. Okay, this may be, this may be doing damage, David. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, folks. Well, so that's that's kind of on the north side. Okay. Maybe in the wrong spot, all right, but all right, man. Let's, all right, go, go back to shear rate one more time. I mean, let, go back to uh, CC again. Okay, there's there. You got the finger. Yeah. Hook there. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, oh. so we might we might have a tornado in Apache. This might be a tornado live. This might be a tornado here on the ground near Apache. Near Apache, Hank's coming in from the north. Hey, hey, Justin. Yes. Hank needs to be moving. Okay. Hank needs to be moving. Okay. All right. So he needs to be he needs to be headed southwest. Okay. So th this could be a possible tornado right here. Hank's coming in from the north. Could be a possible tornado at Apache. Okay. So 
Uh, we'll do a storm track. Let's go back to Links 4. Folks, this is moving towards Oklahoma City. I'm just going to tell you, you can see it yourself. And this is out ahead of the cold front of the dry line. These storms will survive and be tornadic longer than the storms will to the north. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hank's got to be southbound and down. Southbound and down. Okay, so let's come back north here. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning for that storm right now. But I tell you what, let's go back to velocity data again on this with Links 3. Let's go back to velocity data. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's either producing a tornado or it's very, very close. There's the hook. It just went right over Apache. No da damage reports or anything? Nothing coming in at the moment, wow. no. Well, Hank's close. He's no, coming in close. It is spinning like a top. Yeah, that, folks, this is going to be a News 9 tornado warning. Let's just go ahead and do it. News 9 tornado warning for you folks in Apache and east of Apache. Um, okay, so we're talking about up to Surreal, uh, back to Stecker. This is going to be a News 9 tornado warning. We might have a tornado on the ground right now. Hank's coming in from the north. There's the hook. So the tornado, um, it's hard to say. There, there's two areas of circulation. There's one here and there's one here. Let's go to velocity data. Let's see what it looks like in velocity data. Okay, it's still, it's on the east side of Apache. Okay, so let's go back to... Yeah, so the whole time, the two aren't perfectly ahead, lined it, up as far as the debris goes and where the area of spin and the area of rotation is. Have it completely lined up. That's why we're not saying, hey, this thing was on the ground. But definitely, it's spinning tight enough that folks in Surreal all the way up to eventually Chickasha need to be paying very close attention. So it's moving to the east-northeast. Cassie still has the track on it. Moving to the northeast, they'll put it in, in a Darko at 457. So in the, just, just the next couple of minutes, Chickasha, 550. Norman 619 and if this storm makes it all the way to Oklahoma City that would be closer to about 630 but at the same time while that storm's coming in from the southwest the storms are crashing in from the northwest as the cold front comes in and these two may actually merge right across central Oklahoma and that's definitely definitely a concern whenever you have storms coming in from the different directions as well still have the tornado warning on going up north so let's go back up on links three to into uh North Central Oklahoma, where the tornado warning continues just to the south and east of Vance. So I'm going to switch radars, and it's still kind of right along Highway 412. JD's been right there, but the problem is you get east of Enid, and this is very heavy rain from Breckenridge down to Fairmont, and I'll lapse this as well. You can see the direction of that rotation, which is almost due east. For sure, Fairmont's about to get a lot of wind. The same thing with Covington, a lot of wind. Putting it into velocity mode, that tight area, David, it's more broad now. Yeah, it uh, is. But a lot of wind still with that storm with the tornado warning continuing up north. Yeah, so yeah, like you said, Fairmont, definitely in the line of fire. Here's J.D., and let's see what J.D.'s shot looks like, and then we'll jump back south here. Um, okay, so here's J.D., and let's see his shot. I don't see much. Let's go to J.D., get an update. Let's bring J.D. in here and get a quick update from him. Go ahead, J.D., give us an update. Circulation is not quite as tight, but it is certainly there. Go ahead. Yeah, David, we're sitting just off of 412, and we're looking to our west. This thing should be right along parallel to 412 uh, near the Enid area. We're just east. We're getting some light rain. We can't see very far to our west. We can't see any structure at all. Uh, we're kind of hoping that this rain will kind of open up a curtain for us, and let's get a view to our west, and then we're going to track east. All right, great job there, Jeremy. And uh, J.D., excuse me, great job there. Okay, so uh, he'll stay with that. He'll keep it going east up into Garvin, uh, Garfield County, right? So there's the circulation. J.D.'s right here. He's looking right back at it. Here's the deal. It's wrapped in rain, but it is still spinning. It's going to go right down 412 and head towards Red Rock. Okay, Marty and Vaughn are up on the northern storm up here. A little area of spin here. Vaughn's right there looking at that. I don't see anything crazy with that. That storm is severe, large hill. Let's go to reflectivity on this. Okay. And talk about our friends up north. Get ready, Tonkawa, uh, Blackwell, Bremen, Ponca City. You're going to get trashed with 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. Quarter up to golf ball size hail. It's going to Blackwell, Tonkawa. Prepare for, again, big hail and a lot of wind. Up to quarters, maybe some golf balls. Man, we have that one area of spin that Vaughn's on, but right now it's not strong enough for a tornado warning. Okay, let's go back south here, and uh, let's talk about the storms going on. So here comes the main line. There's our supercell that is now being eaten by the main line. The whole line is severe, and uh, th that, that's the old tornado warning, is it not? Yes, yes. It's way old. I wish we could delete that out of there. 
All right, so the area of spin with the current tornado warning is right in here. And Val's been looking right at it. Let's go to, let's go to velocity data, see what it looks like inside. Okay. And I'm just, I'm looking right, right now here. at the winds feeding into that. Winds are 45, 46 in Yukon, southeast winds. Just let you know, being yeah. pulled up into that line. <clears throat> and we're in the 80s here now, 70s and 80s, right? Plenty of instability. Yeah, 76, 80 in El Reno. Yeah, plenty of fuel. Okay, so here's Val. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on this, and we'll take Val's shot. We'll go to okay. Val real quick. All right, so look at that right there. There it is. It just crossed, just crossed to his east. Okay, so it's going to be south of Hennessy. Tornado warning now. Southeast of Hennessy. It missed you folks in Hennessy. The circulation did. And from there, it's going to head east-northeast. It might go on or south of, of Marshall. Okay, so Bob's right here. There's Crescent. Uh, area of spin. Let's go to Val Caster and bring Val in here. Val, I know it's wrapped in rain. It's off to your east-northeast now, Val. About three miles. Area of spin. You're right there. What do you think? I know it's hard to see in the rain. Go ahead. Yeah, David, uh, earlier, about three miles south, uh, we had it pass over us. And... Um, it was rotating. It, it, I mean, we, we at first we right. thought it was a funnel. It looked a little right. bit. It was more yeah. of a lowering, uh, but we saw strong rising motion with it and uh, had a pretty decent lowering right there. Uh, we had, because of ro our road network and our road situations, we had to pretty much dive into the core uh, so that we could take an east road. Uh, our east road is one quarter of a mile to our north. We're fixing to turn east. But I tell you, David, in this core, we're getting winds, west winds of about, 50 to 60 miles an hour, blinding rain, very, very strong winds. Uh, here's our road right here. We're about to turn east, and we ought to see the rotation again. But it is definitely there. It's very persistent. David? Okay. All right. Great job, Val and Amy. They're going to get back in. They are still in position, but it's just wrapped in rain. Look at this wind there ripping. So, uh, yeah, it's a big storm for sure. Okay. Um, let's go back. And, again, uh, this storm is not tornado warm, but it is still spinning. Let's go back to Lynx 4. Talking about the Hank storm and what it's doing. Here comes Jeremy from the north along with Hank. And uh, let's go back to that. This is what we're talking about right here. And uh, there's, there's Hank. No, that's not Hank's shot. Let's go back to Lynx 3 control room. Lynx 3 control room. And uh, there it is. And uh, right here. Okay, so let's drop south here. Here's Hank. Area of spin now east of Apache. Okay. And Greg, are we good on where to go? Okay. Okay. Yep, let's do it. Okay, so this area of spin, it has weakened. Man, it looked like it was, boy, it looked like it was on the ground. At times, it just didn't, it didn't line up exactly with where the no. hook was. It looked, the data looked kind of odd, but definitely it was spinning yeah. very tight. I just, uh, you, you see the, you see the debris signature, and uh, which it's an algorithm, and sometimes you got to watch that, but when we saw the negative, the CC values or the debris detector that we have going negative, and it's like, man, you got to really watch it. And velocity data almost really was saying, hey, we might have a weak tornado or at least a brief tornado uh, down there. Okay, so uh, this is what we're concerned about now. This is coming right up I-44 into the Oklahoma City area. It's got to go through Chickasha first. It is spinning now southwest of Surreal. Area of spin now crossing Highway 19. It's going to go west or on top of cement as it makes its way in parallels I-44. And you're thinking, oh boy, this is not good, right? Storm starting in southwest Oklahoma, down in Cattle County. Yep, that's not good. And so here's the thing. That's going to be pushing off to the northeast. So uh, let's go to Hank. He's coming in from the north and get an update from Hank. And uh, Hank, I know you're coming in from the north there. That storm continues to rotate. Go ahead and give me an update. Yeah, David, we're coming in on the north edge of it. We can see uh, the base. We don't really see any big lowered features at the moment. Part of it, though, we're also looking through the core, so some of it may be obscured. Um, I don't know if Patty can show you on the far northwest side of it. No, I can't do it. I'm in a bad spot. There's actually a feeder band up on the northwest edge of this cell that we're also keeping an eye on. So I think this storm is – here, I'm going to turn right here. I think this storm is trying to, you know, get it back together and mature, but – as I turn here, Patty can show you what I'm talking about. That's a feeder band on the northwest side that's feeding back into the northwest part of the meso right there at the core. So, um, like I say, the storm is evolving and it's maturing. David, we're going to stay right here with it and see which direction it goes. Back to you. I'll tell you later. Okay. All right. 
All right, so great job there, Hank. Hank's closing in again on the southwest Oklahoma storm that is rotating. It is severe right now, but we've had some pretty interesting areas in that that have been spinning for sure. Okay, so Hank will be closing in on it shortly. Let's go back to links three and uh, take a look. And uh, okay, so here we go. So here's, here's Oklahoma City, right here, Oklahoma County. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna fill in and merge with this. And does all the model data, is that what it shows? Uh, nothing has a good handle on the southwest storms that I have seen. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah, it still does not. Um, latest data says that storm tracks due east, comes towards Paul's Valley, and it stays lock and, locked and loaded, basically. Down there? Yeah, that it goes basically well, just north of Paul's Valley to Purcell. It's not doing that yet. Like no. I said, nothing has a good handle on the southwest no. storms. That's why Hank is there. Yeah, uh, it's going to have to, yeah. Okay, so Jeremy's still southbound and down. Okay, I see where he is. Okay, so just getting our bearings straight here. So this is a concern. It's not tornadic right now, but it is rotating. And then we have the other cells down to the south, which right now are no big deal. This is a big deal because it is severe and it does have rotation in it and it does have a mesocyclone. And it is still moving uh, east-northeast. It might have made a turn a little bit uh, to the east. So, But I tell you what, I still think Norman is in it. Yeah, I still think Norman is, is in it for sure. Okay, so wow. All right, so we have the whole line of storms. Can I give you the big view? If you live, if you're out here in western Oklahoma, you're out of it. It's over. This is going to be where you see it from here on radar and then from there to the east. Trackers, look at all of our trackers, folks. That includes all of our trackers, two helicopters. And uh, again, we have all the storms covered for sure as we're coming into Oklahoma City here. All right, so let's go back to it here. And uh, let's see, Brandon is headed to the south. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the metro here. Come back to Oklahoma City. Okay. I see Jim. He's coming south now. Uh, here's Okarchi. Yeah, Jeremy's right there. And, uh, yeah, okay, so Jeremy's going to go south. We'll be Brandon in behind that. All right, so here we've got a lot going on. Lots of, star lots of storms, lots of moving parts. It's quiet in Oklahoma City, but we are going to see severe storms in the metro. This line is going to fill in and come through Oklahoma City with wind and hail and maybe some localized flooding, and there will still be a tornado threat even here in Oklahoma City as these storms come in from the north. All right, so uh, everything up north is moving almost due east right now, okay? Pretty much moving due east, but it's trying to build back to the southwest. Okay, so uh, Sky News 6, our sister station, their chopper is in Perkins. We're watching that. And uh, we've got Jim right here. So you can see our two chopper locations, our two choppers. Jim Gardner is going south. And uh, we're going to keep an eye on the activity coming out of, uh, again, Caddo County into Grady County right now. Just worried that this thing is going to try to ramp up and uh, try to do something crazy as it comes into maybe the South Metro. Yeah, and you just wonder about the momentum from the storms from the Northwest combined with the ones from the Southwest and what happens when they yeah. meet, if they meet. Well, I mean, the, the latest data, I think, still develops these all the way back into Canadian County, right? It does. Oh, the, the North side, yes. Yeah. yeah. Into Caddo County? Uh, not quite into Caddo County. Or, I mean, okay, Grady, I guess. Or? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, as of right now, we have one tornado warning in effect. That's going to be for east of Enid. East of Enid, tornado warning for you. Okay, and we'll go ahead and zoom back in here. The severe storms up north going into Ponca City, they're not tornadic, but you're talking about wind 60 to 70. Ponca City, get ready. Wind and hail, quarter size hail. Uh, there are and there is and have been areas of spin. There's one right back in here. See how the configuration looks like oh, that? Yeah. It's right here. What's oh, flat? There it is. It's that same little area. Right here. Little area of spin. Vaughn's right there. Marty's right there. And uh, that's going to go towards Ponca City. So keep an eye on that. Okay, that's going to Ponca City. It's right here. Little area of spin. Vaughn's right there underneath it. Marty's just barely to the east. Other area of spin where the tornado warning is is going to be just south of Garber. Looks like it's probably south of 412 right now, but not by much. Crossing Highway 74, it's going to Sears, going to Red Rock. Okay, Sears, Red Rock, area of circulation. No tornado confirmed. We're watching it, but it's moving east-northeast. 
okay? All right, so that's the only tornado warning we have right now. Let's come back down the line. Uh, other strong storms in here. Winds are going to be 60, 65 in that. And that's going to head up towards Orlando and Mulhall. Winds along this whole line, 60 to 70, maybe 75. Okay, easily. Could easily get that. David, yeah, Vaughn has a report on that uh, north okay. side storm east of Lamont. All right, let's do it. Let's go back to Vaughn Caster up north. He's right there under the mezzo. It looks like it went really pretty much on top of him. Let's take Vaughn Caster's shot. Let's bring him back in. Go ahead, Vaughn. There it is. Give us an update. Yeah, I'm just at the, um, this is on Highway 60, and it's just to the south of Highway 60. This area is rotating, David, uh, so this is bears to be watched. It's going to cross I-35 right about top of the wall. So uh, we need to follow this all the way because it's definitely got a little kink in it. Back to you. All right, great job. So Vaughn's still up north with Marty, and uh, that's kind of the left side here. He's in some rain, so it doesn't look quite as as good as it normally does, but uh, he'll get on this thing, and we'll take a closer look. But it's going to go, like he said, it's going to cross I-35 there. Pretty close to Tonka Wall. That's exactly what's going on up north. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, also, hey, John, take it the Lynx 3 monitor. So here's the deal. Uh, we have Vaughn here, right? And there's where Marty is. Area of spins right here. It's going to Tonka Wall. It's going to go on and just north of Tonka Wall, okay? All right, let's come back south. The tornado warning continues for the eastern Garfield County storm. JD's right there. Area of spin pretty much on top of JD. And I'm looking at his shot. Okay. And uh, that's going to be coming right into uh, his shot right there. And uh, let's bring JD back in here, Justin. Let's get an update from JD and we'll take his shot control room. And uh, go ahead, JD. What do you think? Circulation's pretty much right out your back door there. Looks like it might be just barely behind you there. Go ahead. Yeah, we just jumped east to get out in front of it. The rain got really heavy, and we were starting to get an obscured view. But uh, what you're looking at right here is just north of 412. It's going to be just east of 74. This is that area that's wrapping in from the southeast and it's tucking back in there that uh, prompted that tornado warning earlier. I don't see anything that looks very uh, dangerous at the moment or real ended of our uh, circulation. But, uh, you know, it, it does need to be warned as that area is wrapping back in pretty hard, David. Back to you. Yeah, all right. And here's, and J.D. knows all this. And, of course, it's, it's, it's kind of wrapped in rain. There's a lot of water around it. So whatever tries to produce, you're not going to see it hanging out. We're going by wind. We're going by velocity data, radar data. And we're also going by uh, debris, right, and what our trackers are seeing in the field. But the tornado warning does continue with that storm again up near and to the east of Enid, up near Covington. But it's going to cross I-35 close to... Uh, um, talking about up near Covington and also near I-35 in Tonkawa. Okay, Lynx 3, here it is. And uh, let me show you, what, there's a line now. There's our one supercell. It has now been completely absorbed by the whole entire line. And once this line moves by you, let me point that out. Once you are in the clear behind this line, like Enid, you're in the all clear, Jefferson, Medford, uh, Fairview, Watonga, you're good. You're not going to get new storms developing behind this line. This line is the big bang and the main bang in town, okay? All right, so severe storms now developing in Oklahoma County, Canadian County. Let's come back down the line here. These storms are severe now, coming into Okarchi. A little concern about this right here with that. And uh, Brandon's headed off to the south. All right, so there's Jeremy, and Jeremy's headed south. So here, here come these storms now. These are going to become severe right over the Cherokee Trading Post. And I'll tell you what, let's, let's go ahead and get a storm track, Cassie, on that. Take that line and build that back down towards La Kiba and move it due east across the metro because we will get storms in Oklahoma City. They're gonna come right across the city here. All right, so we have the other severe storm down south at Chickasha. And uh, Hank's coming in from the north into Chickasha right now. Okay. All right, let's, I, I tell you what, Lacey, let's go to velocity data. Okay. And I don't yes. see it. There it is. It's right here. Okay, there it is. Right over Surreal. Right over Surreal. All right, what's shear rate look like? It's pretty broad at the moment. I can't leave it. It's way that far back there. Go back to reflectivity here. Yeah, that's, that's been the issue with this particular storm. It, 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 yeah. It, well, you think it would be this. Then you look back, and it's, and it's that. So, okay, yeah, it's just, 
It's right here. It's, it's still back in here, but it is messy. It and, definitely is. And that's good. It's not tightened up yet, so it's still kind of a messy area of spin. What does shear rate look like? There's shear rate. Okay, it's And back it's also, here. yeah, super yeah. very broad. Okay. All right. Oh, man. Wow. Okay, so if you're looking at this, you're thinking, well, there's the hook. No, that's not the hook. That's kind of part of the flanking line or, or something going on there. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's part of the storm itself, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a feature attached to it. It's a shower trying to lift into it. The flanking line is still back in here, so I don't know if it's on the forward flank or what that is, but um, it's just a little shower, which is not a big deal. It's not a hook. The hook is still, the hook is right here. Okay, so here comes Hank, and uh, let's, go, let's go to Hank's shot, and let's take Hank. He's looking back to his southwest, and uh, Hank, you might have to drop a little farther south to see what you want to see. I think it's still tucked back in northwest of cement, and you might be looking through quite a bit of rain and hail right now in Chickasha. Go ahead, give me an update. Yeah, David, we're looking to the southwest. We're on the east side of Chickasha, and we've, we've watched, been watching radar and seen that storm kind of move a little bit north and then move a little bit east. So we're just kind of seeing what it wants to do, whether we need to drop south or, or whether we stay up here and bring it toward Dibble. So uh, right there, you can see that we're looking uh, back to the southwest into the base, you can see a, a bit of a base there and, and a bit of the vault on top of it. Right now, we don't see any pronounced lowering, but like what you said, it, these two storms have congealed together, and the old circulation is actually more back towards the surreal area. So I'm looking kind of through the core to get to that. So we're seeing what these are going to do as these storms are all kind of running into each other. And they should form one big storm. As you talked about earlier, this dominant cell should take over, but it's going to take it a, a few miles for that to happen. Back to you, David. All right, there we go. So we'll see. So Hank's, Hank's doing a great job. Hank and Patty, they're down there in Chickasha, and they're on this storm that's coming out of the southwest. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, here it is right here. Okay, this is, this is what's interesting right here, is that this is beginning to, uh, the, the hill core is beginning to wrap. And... Um, is this a cold front when you're looking at uh, Mesonet? Has it caught up with the line yet? So if it has, that's a good thing. We want the cooler air to come underneath the storm. That will lower the tornado threat. This I know is not. That's a supercell by itself out ahead of the dry line. Watonga has a northwest wind. Watonga has a northwest wind. Has a northwest wind. Fairview has a northwest wind. It's a southwest wind in Hinton. Hinton has a southwest wind. Okay, what about Watonga? They're, they're northwest, Yeah, northwest. Right? Okay. All right, so here comes... The beginning of severe weather in Oklahoma City. Okay, this is the beginning of the Oklahoma City severe weather event right here. And right now, right now, with this coming in from the west, this is going to be a wind and a hail threat for sure with a tornado threat tied to any storm that can ramp up. Look at the hail sizes back here. Here's a west of Okarchi up to tennis ball size. Okay, so I think you can count on quarters. You can count on golf balls. And it's going to move almost due east in towards Piedmont, Edmond, County Line Road. Okay, four corners. Okay, big hail. Big hail in here. Tennis ball size hail. Okay, so I'm looking at Jim. He's going south. Got his shot. And uh, Brandon's coming in from the north. Brandon's on the, the Oklahoma City storm. Let's go to Brandon here and get an update from Brandon. He's in the metro here. And bring him in. Let's get an update from Brandon. And bring his shot in, control room. And uh, Brandon, go ahead. You're on. I know you're on the tail end of that line out in Canadian County. Go ahead and give us an update. Brandon, we got to keep an eye on that storm. Your storm is tail end Charlie. You're the, you're the most southern part of that, of that whole complex here. So that thing is still poking its head out here, trying to breathe. We'll see what it does. We definitely want you to be on that for sure. Yeah, David, that's right. Um, we just turned south of 81, uh, south of Okarchi. We're going to get up here to the uh, Lucky Star Casino to where we can look back to the northwest. But I can tell you, as we've made the south turn, looking back to the west and the hair to the northwest, there's a real big core in there. And just faintly, you can make out a lowering. I'm still obscured by the rain a little bit, but I think in just a couple miles when I get to the south, we'll be able to make out what it looks like just a little bit better. But I'm, I can tell you right here where I'm at right now, we still have sustained 30, 35 mile an hour south to southeast winds feeding this storm as it approaches from the northwest. 
Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job, Brandon. So Brandon has been on the, the, the other big tornado we had earlier, the tornado warning, and he was on that when it was producing a tornado. And now he's coming back into Oklahoma City on the north side, and, and here's why. Let's go back to Links 3. And uh, again, we have the main line. Let's back out of this just a second here, Cass. By the way, that bowl there from Val is very, very impressive. Okay, and we'll go to Val here coming up. So running from northern all the way down to southwest Oklahoma, uh, nearly a solid line. Let's go ahead and zoom on in. And uh, this is what I'm concerned about, this Chickasha storm. And then also the storms up to the north here. There's Jeremy, there's Brandon, and he's on the Okarchi storm. And then let's go a little farther north here. And uh, okay, we have Bob, we have Val. Let's go to Val Castor. Let's bring Val into it and get an update from Val. Val, your shot. I tell you what, it's impressive. Is that rotating, Val, or is that just uh, a little bit of a lowering there that's, that's not rotating? What do you think? Give us an update. So I'm, I'm thinking it's really not rotating. Uh, we've been watching it, and the thing about it is, David, it's undercut by the front. We're east of it now, and we got west winds. So I, what I think it is, I think it's the remnant mezzo uh, from that storm. It's still rotating up above in the mid-levels of the storm. Still has a big lowering with it, but you know, look at that shot right there. I think the bark is worse than the bite, David. Yeah, man, look at your shot. It looks, uh, it looks pretty impressive for sure. Okay, so what he said is uh, he's got a west wind. He's looking back to the west. He has a west wind blowing at him. So if, if this thing were going to produce a tornado, you would have an east or a southeast wind blowing away from him and into that inflow. He has outflow because the cool front has undercut the mesocyclone. And you undercut the mesocyclone, you cut off its low level of, of fuel, and you cut it off. You're not killing it, but you're cutting off the tornado threat. It'll still spin all day, okay? It'll spin all day and all night, but you will not get a tornado out of this if it has a west wind or a northwest wind 99.9% .9 of the time, all right? But we gotta watch it, because what can happen is that area of spin can always lunge out ahead of the main line and then we get problems again we get problems again okay okay let's go back to links three and the storms continue to increase in canadian county get ready oklahoma city let's go back to i tell you what let's go to links four doing a storm track on the metro links four and uh, this is going to be perry this is up north now perry 523 el reno 523 guthrie 542 langston 553 edmond at about 554 and we'll say downtown Oklahoma City, 613. Moore, 629. Bahuska, 633. Cushing, 635. And Chandler at about 646. That's with this main line right here, which is now becoming the dominant line. And it's being undercut, which is what we thought would happen. The cold front would undercut the storms, lowering that tornado threat along this line. Okay? That's exactly what we need to happen. All right, we need that to happen. We need the cold front to undercut the storms from the west and northwest, and that will, that will decrease the tornado threat. But where you have a storm down here, again, a lonely storm is a scary storm. And you have this storm down here in Grady County, which is still spinning, and it's not on the front. There's your cold front right here. See that? This is right down here. Let's go ahead and zoom on into that on Links 3 control David, room. Go ahead. One thing that I've just been talking to Brandon and Tom is they were heading south on 81 from Kingfisher to Arcarchi, now north of El Reno. 50 mile per hour winds out of the south ahead of the storms. Now Tom just got impacted by west winds 50 to 60. So a lot of wind just with that yeah. line of storms, no matter if there's a tornadic threat or not. Yeah, no, we're gonna get all the way, the whole line. and But hopefully we, we hope the 50 to 60 from the west winds out and that'll obviously undercut everything that's going through there. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's jump down here, talk about the storm down here, and then we'll yeah. get back in with Hank. Yeah, it's got an odd configuration. I think that's what we've said the whole time. Yeah. Um, but look at how it's got this almost hook looking back to the back. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, this is, this is uh, nothing down here. Nothing to worry about at Rush Springs right now. Uh, but it is turning right. I mean, it is coming and it's towards slowed Chickasha. And it down. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I thought. Hank, Hank's gonna get, Hank needs to go south. Yep. Hank. Tom in, Tom's in quarter to ping pong ball size hail and no karchi. Okay. All right. So there's area. There it is right there. Wow. It's right over cement. Yes. Okay. So here comes Hank from the northeast. Let's go to, let's go to Tom now. Okay. Let's go to Tom Pastrano. And uh, let's get an update. Tom, you are in Okarchi. 
right in the teeth of this storm. How big is the hail and how strong are the winds? Go ahead. <laughs> and by the way, this is what's coming into Oklahoma City. This is coming into Oklahoma City. Yeah, David, right now I got winds over 50, and I have at least quarter to ping pong ball size hail and getting larger and going sideways right now. And the winds are getting really strong, probably approaching 60. Back to you. All right, great job. So winds 50 to 60, ping pong, ball size hail. So that'll do damage, and it's doing damage now uh, in, in Okarchi. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, so this is going to be a big hail event, at least in pockets, okay, up to golf balls. Here's your hail swath or your hail track. So you can see where the hail's been, moving east, southeast, and it's in Okarchi now. From there, it's going to Piedmont, going to Deer Creek, going to Edmond, going to northwest Oklahoma City, okay? So big storm coming in from the west. And uh, again, this is big hail right here, at least ping pong ball. Size now. And I think that's the strongest storm in the state with the exception of Chickasha, yes. Yeah. Yeah, everything up north, while it's wind and hail, it's nothing yeah. like what's going coming into Canadian County. Yeah, and here's what, here's what we like about where we are. Uh, what we don't like is that we have severe storms coming into the West Metro with damaging wind and damaging hail. Winds 50 to 60 and quarters and golf balls and ping pong ball size hail. That's a huge problem. What we do and what we are encouraged by is that the cold front is beginning to undercut this line, which is exactly what we said it would do. And when it does, it will shut off that tornado threat. And it'll be just mainly a wind and hail threat. With this line here, right, the cooler, dense, shallower air is underneath the storms coming in from the west and northwest. That will, that will take out that tornado threat. The problem is that this storm down here uh, is, still, is still turning. And Hank now has visual of the base down at Surreal. Yep, he sure does. Let's go back to Hank and uh, let's see the hook on this thing. And uh, Hank, you're in the trees. You're coming out of the trees. And uh, okay, there we go. You're getting in position here. What do you think when you look at that okay. thing? Is it still kind of still kind of messy? Go ahead, Hank. Tornado warning coming for Hank's storm. Okay. I'm going to turn right. I copied that tornado warning. I'm going to copy right or turn right here. Now, it's not the greatest vantage point, but you can right there, we can see the base. There's nothing real super organized with it. We do have um, a couple little lowered areas, some stud tags with it. Um, it looks like what is the start of a wall cloud that is forming. Uh, that's not a very good shot. I apologize. But you can see right there on the left side, there's a, there's a little bit of a cigar cloud trying to form as, as all of this air is rushing into this base. And like I say, just a minute ago when we were looking back at it, oh, I can see some rotation. Okay. There's some small rotation, a little bit of movement with the scud under it. Oh, yeah. However, Justin, I don't see a big pronounced right. wall cloud yet, it's but it's out. going to form. Um, the storm's really ramped up as, it, as it's congealed with these other out. storms. I can see some rotation in the base, David. So, uh, And we do have a, a, an inflow cloud here, so we know that the, the rotation is ramping up with it. Back hey, to you, David. Hey, hey, I need, I hear Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get out of those trees and get south. This thing is turning right. It is turning right, Hank. It's turning right. And it might, the, 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 the wall cloud itself, the meso may not even make it over you. It may be to your south by a mile or a couple of miles. All right, let's go back to, this is, be a, this is our newest tornado warning now for Grady County. Let's go back to Lynx uh, 3 control room. And here's the hook right here. Hank's right here. And yeah, we're gonna get him south. And then uh, there it is. There's where the tornado is. Pretty close to cement. So Justin, ask Hank what he can see from there. I see his shot. Control room, let's bring up Hank's shot. I wanna be able to, there it is. Look at, the, look at, look at shear rate, wow. We're getting up there now. We're getting up there. It's 13 miles southwest of Chickasha, just to the east, southeast of cement. Looks like it may be just north of 44, but it is close. Yeah, it's. To the it's, H.E. Bailey. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, on, I think you're right. It's just on or just north of 44, east of cement. Here it is. It's right on top of cement. Tornado warning now for cement. If you live up to Chickasha, if you live to Ninaka especially, got to go to your safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house. If you live in a mobile home, you've got to get out. You've got to go find a neighbor. Surely you have a plan in place already of what to do and where to go. If a tornado is approaching you, you have time. If you live up and down Highway 81, but you cannot wait. You have to go now. And there it is right there. Okay, there it is. So Hank, 
is still making his way south. Let's go back to Hank and get an update. And uh, Hank, circulation is going to be right over cement. And uh, there's the updraft. What do you think, Hank? Anything hanging out there? Wow, look at the updraft. Look at that shot from Hank. Yeah, now, like I say, David, it's, it's, uh, it's gotten its act together, uh, and it is maturing. I'm about a mile north to west of Minicaw, and I'm looking due back to the west. So you can see right there on the right, we have the heavy rain and free step core. Just to the south of it, we have the rain-free base. There's a couple of little lowered areas, but I don't see a pronounced wall cloud. Um, you know, we, do, we don't even see a whole lot of rotation with it. I can see a little movement with the scud, but I'm not seeing anything that is, is imminent of a tornado. However, this is a very dynamic and changing environment. You can see what looks like right there. Patty, zoom in right here. What looks like a little bit of a wall cloud starting to form. So the base is lowering just a little bit. Uh, like I say, I'm about a mile northwest of Minicall, yep. and I'm looking back to the due west, so it's going to be right probably here. just right north of cement. Um, and you can see it's just a, it's a dynamic, changing storm that's actually wow. maturing, and you're watching it right before your eyes organize as the base is starting to lower, David. Yeah, Hank, uh, a, an incredible shot. And this is going to be for the only tornado warning in the state now, this is Grady County. We have severe weather, yes, moving into Oklahoma City. We'll get back to that here in just a second. If you have a car that's parked outside here in Oklahoma City, you need to move it into whatever, awning, covering, garage, uh, anything you want to protect here in Oklahoma City, well, if it's, it's outside that you can protect, do it now. You've got some time, but not much for large hail and damaging winds in Oklahoma City, okay? All right, so this is scud developing you know underneath the wall cloud, the wall cloud is forming right here. Hank, what do you got? David, as I watch this, um, just kind of looking down the road just a little bit, Blanchard and Dibble, uh, if this rotation goes south of you, you're going to have big hail. So yeah, big hail. just be thinking of that as this moves towards the Medpro, it's going to impact Tabler and Dibble and Blanchard uh, if it content continues lifting to the east-northeast, David. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. And I know sometimes we, you know, we, there's so many moving parts of this. You're talking about that. Yeah, a tornado. Oh, yeah, hang on a second. More people will actually, at least at them, this point, be impacted by quarters, golf balls, and maybe even some tennis ball size hail. So this is the left side of the updraft. There's the right side. And right here, right, we call this the bell. There's the right side, the left side of the bell. If you get a tornado, that's the ringer in the middle. Hopefully we won't get one, but the scud is beginning, beginning to develop. Underneath the updraft, that means the pressures are lowering. It's getting stronger. It is not gusting out. It's very unstable where this is, and it is in a tornado environment-rich area. Yeah, it's 80 okay. in Norman, um, yeah. 78 Chickasha, southeast wind with dew points in the upper 60s, so yeah. feeding all ahead of that storm. And right now, this, this is the most dangerous storm in the state, hands down. And you're looking at it live right here on... Uh, on News 9. Okay, Jim's coming in from the north. Okay, let's get back to it here. Let's go to Lynx 3. And the hook is wrapping around here, right? The hook is, I think it's right here. It's on, it's just north of I-44. Yes. <clears throat> There's another area here. You see that? Right. Ant is that an anticyclonic? It is. Isn't it anticyclonic? Yep. No, no, it's cyclonic. Barely. So there's two areas of spin. Two areas of spin. A little bit of a hook here. That's not the tornado warning. The tornado warning is right here, just east of cement, for that right there. That is spinning, and that's going to go right up. Let's go ahead and lapse this. Let's get, try to get our motion here. Hank's right there. Okay, it's, it's, it's moving east-northeast. Yeah, it's almost hugging 277, that southern circulation yeah. is. Ninicol, you folks in Ninicol, if you're, if you're watching, if you're listening to me online, whatever, on your phone, you need to be thinking about going to a safe spot. It's one, two, three, four, five, six miles to your west-northwest. It's moving east at about 25. It won't take long to get there. Let's do a storm track. Let's go to Lynx 4. Take a look at the storm track. And we're talking about Ninicaw now. And uh, we'll put it in Ninicaw at 553. 553 in Ninicaw. That's not that far away. So you have a little bit of time, about 20 minutes. Okay? Give or take about 20 minutes with that in Ninicaw. Uh, Elik, 611. Dibble, 632. Payne, 643. That's farther east. Purcell, you folks in Purcell, 7 o'clock. Okay, Norman, regional at 706. Um, 
and, and, and the north side of the storm is going to try to come up into Norman. So that'll be the south metro. And then we have the other severe storms running out in Canadian County. And these are going to move right across the city. They're not going to hang around all evening. They're going to be in. They're going to be out. They're going to move rather quickly through here. But what they do when they get here is a problem with large hail and and damaging winds. And we've got another kind of bookend area starting to form to the west of Cashin now. So okay. damaging winds coming down Northwest Expressway and it's trying to wrap back in southeast okay. of Kingfisher. Uh, Greg, yes. if you can hear me, uh, just make sure Jim is on the east side. I don't want him getting in any precip because he might get some hail being lofted out. So make sure that he's precip free. I still, I still see him moving south. I just don't want him to encounter any ejecting hail out of the updraft. That's a bummer. And there is a flash flood warning that's been issued for Kingfisher in Northern Canadian County just because that area had an inch and a half of yeah. rain this morning. Yeah. And now totals are up to about two, two and a half inches. So basically wow. up and down Highway 81 from Hennessy to Dover, Kingfisher, Okarchi, and down to El Reno. Turn around, don't drown. This Wait, is very heavy does? rain. Hank. Let's go Hank. to Hank now. Let's get an update from Hank. Let's take Hank's shot. And uh, Hank said he had a, sorry, Lacey, I Go ahead, yeah. You. All right, let's go back to Hank there. It looks like we have a funnel developing wall cloud uh, getting better organized. Yeah, David, there's a, there's a little bit of lowering right there that's just on the south edge of the rain core, and we've seen some wrapping rain curtains, and we just saw a little needle funnel. So this is going to be in between Minicaw and probably north of Cement, maybe headed maybe close to Norge. I am at about the Highway 19 junction and Highway 81, and I'm looking straight back to the west. And that looks like it dissipated, uh, but we did have uh, we did have a little needle funnel there. So this storm is organizing, and we're starting to get some hail here. But uh, uh, hail's coming in any cough, so just you know, secondary. Patty, back out and showing the plate. Yeah. So we've got <clears throat> striations here. You can see the storm has really matured. Patty, I'll show you the striated plates right there. Wow. Uh, and we've got we've got just more and more rising motion. Back over here, back over here. Yeah, on the left side. On, on right here next to the rain pool. I know it's kind of grainy, but we've yeah. got another little area of rising scud that's rotating there, David. So yeah. The storm continues to mature, and it's, and it's spinning and getting more and more pronounced of the rotation that's in this storm right now, David. Okay, yeah, no doubt about it. So Hank has scud lifting up into it. It's not a clear shot here. He's where he needs to be, but uh, it's a little rainy on the east side. But this is an area of spin. It almost looks like you got the dry air cut trying to come in there too, Hank. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there is a dry slot on the back side. There's a dry cut coming okay. in, and it, it's wrapping right into where that lowered area of scud is yeah. that Patty is showing you right now. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's an area, uh, an area of, of rotating scud that's being pulled out of the rain core up into the base of this storm. Um, Patty, back out real quick, showing the base. But the whole thing is huge. This this base is, is big. It's it's probably four or five miles uh, in length here. It's a, it's a big base. If you can see on the right side there that she backed out, you can see where the business is. And it's going to be just to the northwest of Denikaw. It's going to be very close to Norge. Uh, David, in my opinion right now, like I say, I'm at Highway 19 and 81 looking just northwest of west. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job. So, and also it's beginning to clear out a little bit. So he's getting better visibility. The rain is getting a little bit less. It's getting closer to him. So there's the right side of the mesocyclone. The left side is all the way off, off the screen here. But what's going to happen is we're going to get an area that's going to try to tighten up and try to produce. It has not yet. If it had, you would have seen it live here on News 9, right? Uh, it has not. Let's go to Jim Gardner now. Hank's on the ground. Let's go up top. Let's bring in Jim Gardner from the air. He is on that storm now. And as he comes around, there's the big updraft. There's the area of spin. Another shot there from Jim Gardner and Bob Mill Sky News 9. Go ahead, Jim. Jim Gardner. I'm losing Marty down here. I can't get it down here. Okay, let's cut Jim. Okay, all right, here we go. So uh, here's the deal. That shot is from Jim. And he's going to come around. He'll come around. And on the right, you're going to have your, your wind, yes, your heavy rain, and your big hail. And then here's your updraft, or here's your mesocyclone. Okay? So there's your mesocyclone. And you can see the right side of the meso, which is right there. This is where the tornado warning is. Okay. We'll get Jim figured out. We'll check back in with him coming up. Okay, let's go back to link three and uh, give you the overview. Area of spin is... Uh, 
Again, right here, you can clearly see that now. Southwest of Cashin, not tornado warned, but it is definitely spinning there. It's what we call the bookend vortex on the north side. And uh, wow, Jim's shot is just amazing. Wow, that's amazing. And then, uh, okay, that, that's headed up towards, and it's gonna go south of Guthrie. Area of spin there, area of spin up here. Uh, that Val's watching up near Cement. And then... Uh, Crescent. And then, I'm sorry, Crescent. I'm where, still, yeah, that's, I'm still that's in southwest Oklahoma. And then uh, as we jump down farther south here. Okay, let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot. Okay. And uh, do we have Jim's audio figured out? Well, Marty's in and out down there. Okay, have him call in. Just have him call, please. And look at the look at the left side. If we have, do we have Jim's audio? Yep. Let's go to Jim yeah, now. There you go, Jim. To me. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, David. Uh, okay, I'm about uh, three miles to the south uh, southeast of Nenecal, shooting back to the west. And tell me, we haven't seen this today before. This is the back side of that storm that hangs on, and then we're going to pan back to the right here, and pan back to the right. Now we just got this huge. Just this huge donut sitting in the air again, David, like we saw this earlier today, and that's what produced a tornado. And this is the same exact thing as we pan back to the left again. You're going to see this is setting all by itself. It's a little bright. It's a little hot there, Rich. You need to turn down. There you can see the blue, blue skies, clear skies behind it. Nothing to impede it. There's nothing coming up behind it, David. This is just another classic situation for this to produce a tornado. We'll stay with it. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garpoint Live for Bob Mills. Got his nine back to you. Wow, great job there and for you and Rich. And a great shot, Jim. Tells the whole story. And uh, again, we call this a stack of pancakes because you have plates lined up. And as he tilts up here, you can see those plates. Folks, that is the mesocyclone. <laughs> Look, boom, boom, boom. Look, all the way up. How many pancakes you want, right? How many you want on that? L look at the plates all the way to the top all the way that's the left side it's a vertical wall and this thing is really really going to try to produce a tornado we hope it doesn't we hope it doesn't but if it does we're going to be right there um it is getting stronger though it is it is tightening up okay okay so control room let's keep his shot here and let's let's move that over uh that is an incredible shot and also with hanks let's keep hank's shot up and uh, let's come back to, there we go, links three. And while you're showing that, David, yeah, the rain ahead. has ended in Kingfisher, but there's a report one mile north of Kingfisher along Highway 81 of Johnson 12 Creek. inches of water, yes, over Jackson Avenue and Highway 81, preventing cars from going through. So it's over 81? Over 81 is yeah. what this is saying, yes. Yeah, the, the creek, they're always right on the west side, north side, north side of town. It'll come up, but it'll go down, and all the, right? the rain has ended there. It, yeah, the rain's ended, so the Highway 81 that is closed and blocked, Another couple hours and yes. it'll it'll drop and everything will be good. We there. had a high water rescue this morning, so yeah. just you know, I saw that. folks yeah. be careful. Yeah, and that was kind of a wild deal too. Okay, so big hail now. Quarter size hail is north of El Reno, coming into Piedmont. We'll do a storm track on that. I see Cassie's already beat me to it. Uh, running in uh, El Reno. Look at that shot from Jim of that supercell down there, folks. Uh, if you are a weather enthusiast, if you're a closet weather junkie, that is impressive. That is an LP-ish looking supercell, kind of a hybrid, where we can completely see the, the updraft. Okay, I'll get back to that in just a second. All right, and then there's Hank's shot, right? So there's Hank's, there's, uh, there's Jim's shot. Okay, so here's what's coming into Oklahoma City. Nothing tornadic, we have areas of spin, hail up to the size of golf balls, winds right now, 50 to 60 miles per hour, maybe some gusts of 70 so 60 now in piedmont coming into piedmont so if you live in oklahoma city get ready for winds 50 to 60 large hail damaging winds okay up to quarters maybe even some golf balls and some of the streets in here 69 now okay so here's northwest expressway here's banner road and uh what do we have here Go ahead and zoom on in here. Let's take a closer look at these streets. Okay. Let me get this out there. Okay, Moffat Northwest, and there's Apache. Yeah. Chester's Party Barn. Moff Chester's Party Barn. I swear that place is. They that get a lot of wind. They get a lot of wind. They, look at that shot, folks, from Jim Gardner. Unbelievable. Okay, wall clouds getting more pronounced. It's going to try to produce a tornado, but not in Oklahoma City. This is going to be a straight line wind event. Winds 60 to 70 miles per hour. The straight line winds now are running from four corners down to Piedmont, down to El Reno, okay? Down to El Reno. The blue and the green, those are winds 50 to 60 plus miles per hour. 
spreading east. Now pounding Piedmont, coming into Four Corners, going to Deer Creek, Gallardia, Rose Creek, all of Oklahoma City, all of Edmond, wins 50 to 60. Hail, quarter, golf ball size hail, near and on top of Lucky Star Casino. So we're gonna have some big hail. You combine that with winds, 50 to 60 to 65, you're gonna have some blown out windows and, and all the above. Let's go to links four, storm track on Oklahoma City storm. And uh, again, Guthrie, it's just now coming into the west sides of Guthrie, Yukon, 545, Edmond at 554, Arcadia, 607, pick out your city here, Village, 558. Down the list is farther away from the storm, okay? Kearney, uh, 621, Choctaw, 637, Hera, 647, Chandler, 648, and Stroud at about 705. So this whole line moves across square, every square inch of Oklahoma City, producing, for some of us, damaging winds and damaging hail. And there is still a low tornado threat. It's low, it's not zero, but it is much lower now uh, with this line. Okay, let's get back to our supercell down here, our big rotating thunderstorm. And uh, let's talk, look at that shot there from Jim. It's, it's, it's trying to tighten up. The wall cloud Race has really three. developed. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, sorry, link three. There's Ninaka. There's the hook. Hank's looking back at the hook, back to his west-northwest. Shear rate has the hook now. Um, is it right on top of? What direction is Hank looking? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay, let's go back to Hank here. Let's bring Hank back in and uh, get an update. Hank, what direction are you looking? Uh, we've got the area of spin now just north of I-44. And it looks like, uh, Hank, the area of spin is going to go right over Chickasha. Tornado warning for you folks in Chickasha. Yeah, David, I would say so. I'm looking a bit northwest here. Okay. Uh, so from 19 and 81, I'm looking a bit northwest. It's still going to be to the northwest of I-44, I believe, at the moment. And what you're seeing there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back this out. The dry slot came in. The RFD cut came in. And when it started wrapping in, that's where this lowering, this wall cloud started pouring. Now, it's not spinning real tightly. However, I will tell you there's quite a bit of rising motion in it. And straight above me, we are, we are underneath, underneath the lip of the base of this storm, which is, which is miles wide. And the whole thing looking straight up in the air is like a record player above me spinning. So uh, it's really impressive, actually, as I sit here. And the whole thing is spinning like a top right on top of us. And then we've got this little area that's lowered of stud that's got some slight rotation in it just to our northwest, David. Back to you. All right, great job, Hank and Patty Brown. So there it is. There's your area of circulation. A little ragged. That's a good thing. Let's go to Jim Gardner now. Let's take Jim's shot up top. And then there it is from Jim. Look at the look at the right side of the mesocyclone. Wow, are you kidding me? Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so here's your the dry air cutting in. That's called a cut. Wraps in around it. And this whole thing is sitting and spinning. It is moving. But it is spinning for sure. Let's go to Jim Gardner and get an update from Jim. And circulation now is going to be about three and a half miles, Jim, southwest of Chickasha, and the wall cloud continues to organize. Well, that's right, uh, David. I'm over Highway 19, shooting back to the northwest. And uh, you're right, and Hank is right, too. On the back side of this, we took a shot of the back side of this moments ago, and this entire thing is spinning, David. This entire thing is rotating, like he said, like a record. It's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's a sight to see, to be up close to this thing. I'm watching this whole thing spin. Let me, whoop, we lose, there we go. Let me spin around here a little bit. But uh, again, it's, it's kind of ragged underneath, David. It really hasn't tightened up. It just kind of stayed ragged underneath. But uh, let's go back to the back side of this and lighten up just a little bit, Rich. It's a little dark. Let's lighten up. Look at this. Look at the back side of this, David, now. This is just absolutely impressive as we look at that and then pan down. Jim, it's amazing. I mean, that is an incredible shot. And that is a mesocyclone. Folks, we talk about this all the time. We talk about the mesocyclone and <clears throat> when we're talking about the, the hook. But a lot of the times, as you get in, into central Oklahoma where the moisture is deeper, we can't always see that. It doesn't always look like that here in central Oklahoma. Western Oklahoma, it does but not here in the metro, or at least not down into southern Oklahoma. It can, obviously, but it doesn't happen that often. All right, let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, look, here's the area of circulation now on Lynx 3 control room coming right into Chickasha. And let me show you exactly where it is, and we'll get it zoomed in here for you. Control room. Do we have a Lynx 3? 
I think we do. There it is. All right. So there are two areas of spin. We've got the main area here, which is going now into Chickasha. Okay, that is that big barber pole in the sky. Okay, that's that. It's right here. That's going to go right across Chickasha. The other area is going to be down here where Hank is. We have two areas of spin. We're watching both of these right now. We have Jeremy off to the east. Now, what's Jeremy looking at in his shot? Okay, Jeremy's... Oh, he's in the rain. Okay, we got to get him out of that. Okay, then we have Jim down here coming in from the southeast. So we have the storm. We have the storm covered. Okay, let's go to reflectivity here. Okay. Just, just see what it looks like. Yeah, you know what? It's it, and the reason it's not produced a tornado is because it looks like that. The hook is hanging back on the northwest side. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not above anything. I mean, it's definitely there, but it's not tightened up enough. It's not tightened up enough. And if this were to swing around, if you were to see this, this right here on radar come around like that, we'd have problems. But right now, it's, it's still kind of stretched out and, and moving to the northeast. Big hail going through Chickasha, just did. Quarters, golf ball, maybe even some tennis ball size hail there. Jeremy's about ready to get pummeled with hail. And he's just east of town. And then we have Hank down here in the other area of spin. So there's two areas of spin, one, northwest sides of Chickasha, and then one down here. So we're watching both of these areas of spin. So tornado warning continues for Chickasha, lowest level, center part of the house, and now east and northeast of Chickasha. Okay. And while you're looking at that, radar estimated winds, it just came through Piedmont to 70 miles per hour, now along Mustang Road, just right. east of Piedmont. So okay. very windy on the northwest side of the metro. Yep, yep, yep. And we'll, we'll come back to that here. Let's do uh, Lynx 4 now, storm track on this storm. And uh, again, this is going to be Blanchard. And go ahead and lap that, Cassie. Let me make sure we, we have this going right here. Yeah, it may be a little bit farther north. It might actually go up towards Stella. So maybe bring it up a notch. Yeah, let's bring Norman into it. Okay, so Middleburg, 546. You're going to get big hail. Uh, Dibble, 621. Goldsby, 639. Uh, Sooner Mall, 643. Uh, the National Weather Center, 646. And uh, Sam Noble Museum right there at 646 as well. So it's leaving Chickasha. It's going to Blanchard. It's going to Norman. And it's going to Noble. And I, I hate to even say it, but if it, if it lifts a little farther north, Norman, you're going to get more hail, and it could be up to the size of tennis balls. Gee, how many Christmas? Remember back in the day when Norman never had, ever had any severe weather? Now it's like twice and three times a year. Or they didn't have anything, and people lived there were like, we don't ever get anything in Norman, and now they can't get away from it. Can't, can't run from it fast enough. Okay, so tornado warning continues. Eastern Grady County, going to Blanchard, going to Norman. Uh, Jim Gardner's up top. We have Jeremy. We have Hank on the ground. And uh, there's Jim shot. Look at the mesocyclone, clearly hanging out. Let's come back to Oklahoma City now on Lynx 3, control room. And uh, winds are going to be 60 to 70 miles per hour, 70 mile an hour gust right here, east of Piedmont. There's Tom. And uh, what does Tom have on his wind? He's right on the leading edge. Right on the edge. Okay, 68, 73. So damaging winds now. Damaging winds, 50 to 60, gust to 70. There's a 73 mile per hour wind gust southeast of Piedmont, up to Deer Creek, and everything that's green on this is where the wind is, okay? And it's a west wind. We can lapse this, show what it looks like. See the wind? Here comes your wind field right into Oklahoma City. You know, that's not our... No, I can change it over. Do you want me to? Yeah, uh, maybe. Okay. Have a little bit of time here. Yep. Okay, so there's your wind field. Winds 50, 60, 70 miles per hour running from, and again, this is going to overspread all of Oklahoma City. So uh, we, got, we, got to, we got to keep that in mind. Everybody gets wind out of this. Some places will get hammered. Some places will not. Also, you guys can also take a look at the power outages. So what we have so far, maybe for Oklahoma County or Canadian County, those are going to start to stack up. All right, so wind, damaging winds now coming into Rose Creek, back to Gallardia, back to Banner. All right, just blowing through El Reno. Winds, where you see the blues, are going to be 50 to 60, close to 70 miles per hour, right, with the wind, and even some winds in there over 70. And that's going to come into Gallardia, Sundance Airport. Winds are going to be close to 70. Back to Richland. 
And uh, let's go to Jim Gardner's shot here, control room. And let me show you the velocity of the updraft in his shot. This is in real time. Look how this is lifting up so hard that it's knuckling back on itself. Uh, you, again, if you don't storm chase much, you, ha you have maybe have never seen this before. And let me tell you what's going on. This is a violent motion of air rushing up and it gets up so high that it hits another layer of air and it can't punch through it and start, starts to, it starts to unwind and, and coil out around it. It's like it reaches its, its lid. And look how this is up and watch this here. And look how this is folding back on itself. That's what we call knuckling back. And that is amazing. Look at the motion in that vertical wall. That's incredible. That is incredible. You, no reason to storm chase. We do it right here for you on News 9. That shot. And that's such an odd thing to see. Yeah. For Oklahoma. Yeah. For, it's usually yeah. way too soupy for that. Yeah, for this part of the state, it normally is. Normally we can't see that here. Normally this is all shrouded in clouds. So we've taken away, I know this is a cloud, but we've taken all the way to all the other junk clouds and you're left with the real deal. You're left with the what it's all about. That is a violently rotating mesocyclone with tremendous upward motion going on. Look at the striations that have now become vertical inside the wall. And then look at the lower levels where the bell is. Left side of the bell is there. Just incredible. Right side of the bell is on the right. And if you get a tornado, you call that the ringer in the middle. But right now, we don't have one. There's the right side of the wall cloud, or the actual mesocyclone. Wow, what a shot from Jim. Okay, let's talk about northern Oklahoma here. No tornado warnings up north, and I know, and I know, the data, we were looking at it, it was suggesting that the higher tornado threat would be in the northern half. Northern Oklahoma, you've had tornado warnings, but you've not had any tornadoes across the far north. And right now, there's nothing up there that is showing that, okay? Plus, the cold front is catching up with your storms. Let's go to reflectivity up here and take a look okay. at this whole line. Uh, it, again, blowing through, any wind damage up there at all? No reports that I've seen. I've just okay. been keeping a close eye on the Richland wind. Some of the radar estimates right. over 75 now. So right. we may have some 80 mile an hour winds coming to the northwest side of the metro. Yeah. Up here, as far as any crazy wind, trackers have all been right there and they haven't been hooting or hollering in a little while. No, and they're right here on this thing. So winds up here are gonna be 50 to 60. All right, let's go back to reflectivity. Okay. And let's just talk about Ponca City real quick. And now everything is, again, this is a solid line blowing through Ponca. Vaughn's there, uh, down to Red Rock. And again, this is moving east. This is going to green country. This is going to clear east of I-35 here the next hour, hour and a half. It'll, stay, it'll still be in our viewing area because it's going to be south and east of I-35 and down across southern Oklahoma. But There's still some kinks, yeah, right too. Here. I mean, that, that just keeps right spinning up. But man, man, velocity, really, look at that, boom. So area of spin now is going to be east of Marty. And uh, what, what direction is Marty going? Is he going after it or is he going away from it? Justin, is Marty going east? Okay. Uh, yeah, he needs to be all over that. Okay, so that's moving east. JD's right there. And I see JD shot. Okay, so reflectivity, let's put that back on. Okay. Just heavy, heavy rain, winds 50 to 60. Part of the line is not severe, part of the line is severe, but just assume it's all severe with winds 50 to 60 with some gusts maybe a little bit higher. Coming in on Stillwater right now. Moving into Stillwater from the west, moving down, coming into Langston in about the next 10 minutes. Now moving through Guthrie. Now coming into the Oklahoma City West Metro, northwest sides of Oklahoma City. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom on in and take a closer look at Oklahoma City. And nothing tornadic in here, right? Val's in the Metro now. Let's get an update from Val. And he is on Portland, it looks like, or near the Portland Kilpatrick uh, interchange there. Let's go to Val. And uh, Val, what do you think on your wind here? Storms down Oklahoma City. Val's right there looking right at it. Go ahead, Val. All right. So, David, it's the strongest it's been since we got into the core, and it seems like it's keeping on getting stronger. So right now we have torrential rains. I know you can see our shot. And the wind, uh, right now we're having about 50, 5 zero, uh, from the west or the northwest right here. I mean, it just gets stronger the further we get into the core. So nothing at all. That I can see, you know, obviously with, you know, in the form of rotation or anything like that. It's all straight line winds. Uh, we have not had any hail yet, but you'll be the first to know when we get it. Oh, uh, there was a big gust right there. 
Back okay. to you. All right, thank you. Okay, good job, Val. Let's come back to uh, J.D. Storm now. And let's go up north now. Let's check in with J.D. He's up north now. Let's go to his shot. Let's take him. And J.D., tornado on the ground. It's, it's pretty close to you. It's going to be just to your northwest, J.D. Tornado is on the ground. Go we ahead. Do not, we do not have J.D. at the moment. Marty is coming in from the west. Okay. All right. And we can see it here on radar. It's right here. And uh, there's J.D. He's looking right at it. This is right just north of Morrison, right on the 412, kind of the Cimarron Turnpike as it makes that kick back to the south. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to be moving up a little closer to that, though. I'll tell you that right now. It's on that wrap. It's still about five miles to his northwest. Okay, it's right here, right? Okay, let's go back to reflectivity here. Yeah, it's to his northwest, about three, three to five miles. It looks like it's right here. Is JD, is he in our system or is he with Tulsa? Okay. All right. Uh, so there's his shot. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. We'll keep his shot up on the left here. And this is where the tornado is. Here's JD. It's going to go, looks like north of Morrison. And uh, max, maximum rotation. What shear rate look like? Let's take a look at that. Okay. Right here. There's your key. Yeah, that's where it's wrapping back in, right along the turnpike. Yeah. Man, it's almost wrapped in rain, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Look at Parisa. This is south of Sooner Lake. Yeah. I mean, they're, you're, you're going to have to, yeah. Okay, so that, that's wrapping back in. If, if JD gets back in here, if he can toggle back and forth, let us know. Okay, so let's come back to, uh, okay, there, there it go. is. There it is. Tornado's going to be right here. So it's tornado's crossing the Cimarron Turnpike right now. Crossing the Cimarron Turnpike right now. Okay, uh, here's Morrison. Let's back out of this just a second here. Get her bearing straight. Yeah, okay. south of Sooner Lake, north of Morrison, and honestly headed towards the north sides of Pawnee. Yeah, yeah, it's going to Pawnee. And this is going to be Pawnee County right here, too. Okay. Pawnee County, and uh, it's, it's well past Perry. It's off to the east. Tornado's going to be right here. I don't see any debris. Go and lapse that and see if you see anything sticking up, standing out of that. No? Uh, uh, maybe a little weakness there right yeah, at the very end. Yeah, the very end, the last scan. JD is very, very close. Okay, um, let's go back south now. Let's talk about the other. There's the tornado warning. Tornado warning. This is gonna be for Pawnee County. All right, this is Pawnee. Circulation is right here. Confirmed tornado. Okay, confirmed tornado now. It's gonna be just northwest of JD. And uh, we'll get him back in here. There it is. All right, uh, Justin, is he in our system? He is not in our system, but I'm trying to get in contact with him at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, we need to and reach Val out. Val has 60 to 65 here in the metro. Okay, all right. So, uh, tornado does continue. It's going to be. It's going to go south of Sooner Lake, and it's going to Pawnee, and it's north of Morrison. Tornado is right here. Tornado is right there, moving. Let's go ahead and lapse this. See what the movement is. Okay. And then we'll do a, a storm track on that coming up. Oh, it's trying to collude. Trying to lift up north towards yep. Highway 15. It's, it's trying to lift a little farther northeast. So. It's going to cross Highway 15 the way it's going now. It might completely miss Pawnee, but I, if I live in Pawnee, if you live in Pawnee and you can hear me, safe spot, lowest level. And if you live from Pawnee west or north of 18 back to 15, you need to be in your safe spot right in here. You need to be in your safe spot, especially west and northwest of Pawnee. Tornado on the ground right now. Okay, so there it is. Okay, let's come back south now. Let's talk about, let, actually, let's come back to Oklahoma City. Let's go to okay. Valcaster. And yeah, they're just while I'm scooting down the line, that circulation near yeah. Stillwater, south of Stillwater, is yeah. ramping up too. Okay, let's come back south okay. here. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring Val back into it. Val, go ahead. David, we are we're getting 60 mile an hour winds here, and I'm I'm thinking we might have had a 65 gust there, but uh, from the west and west northwest, I mean it is just rocking the truck, moving the truck all around, all straight line winds, uh, lots of torrential rain. Uh, I think we might have possibly seen a power flash. Uh, it was it was kind of faint because it was a little far away in the rain, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But anyway, where I'm at right now, strong, strong winds. Back to you. Yeah, no doubt about it. So this is in Oklahoma City. This is coming through the metro. Winds 50 to 60, might have gusts of 70. All right, and we do have weak areas of rotation, but nothing crazy here in Oklahoma City. Look at the rain coming into the metro. That's in Yukon. Let's go back to uh, velocity data, Link 3. 
We're going to query some of the data. Here's West Memorial Road. Okay, folks, this is our next gen live. This is our million watt dual pole radar. Nobody has one of these in the state that is this powerful, that the resolution is this precise. This is live data. If you're flipping around, everybody else is delayed. Not here at News 9. This is live data. 79.9 or 79.4 mile per hour winds now uh, east of County Line Road between Memorial and Lake Hefner. So winds 60 to 75 in here. We're a little bit up off the deck, but you can count on 60 to 75 in that pocket there. And that's going to move right across the city. All right, so we're going to get power bumps. We're going to get some power outages with that. And uh, it's moving east-southeast, isn't it? A little more east-southeast. Yeah, and really strong winds out near Yukon as well. Kind yeah. of in that same category. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yukon here, winds again, 60 to 70. So Val's right here. We have Brandon down here at Real Rogers. Hey, Justin, Brandon needs to get back to the west and get back north. It's he needs to get back in it. The hill course still east of El Reno, and the radar is still saying golf ball to tennis ball size hill. Yeah, yeah, every bit of that. Yeah, quarters. For sure. And then so here's your hail core. Folks, this is going to be a damaging hail event now. I'm not saying for the whole Oklahoma City area. We'll have nickels and dimes. We'll have quarters. And then we're going to have at times up to golf balls. Okay? We're going to have up to golf balls. And there might even be some tennis balls in here between Piedmont and Yukon. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom on into exactly where this is. Here's Piedmont. This is going to be big hail right here. Okay. Big hail. Let me stop the laps. There we go. Hey, Greg, talk to Greg here coming up. There's okay. your hail. West Memorial, back down to Richland, um, back down to Banner. And then also another pocket of hail at 164th and County Line. Big hail. This is all a lot of nickels and dimes and some quarters, but this is going to be some golf balls in here. This will be a damaging, damaging hail event for Oklahoma City as it comes in from the west and from the northwest. Okay, Val's right there out ahead of it. Damaging wind. Right here, coming into Gallardia, back down in Northwest Expressway, damaging winds, 60 to 70. It's going right across Oklahoma City, at least in the north, the north metro. Okay. And uh, we're still talking about the storm down south. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, let's come back south now, talk about okay. the storm going on down here. And um, hang on. Was that Brandon that was up there? Brandon's right here, right? Yes. Yeah, we need Brandon to get back in on that. Justin, we need Brandon to get, get in on this storm. Yeah, he's heading west. OK. OK, so we've got the big storm down south. Tornado warning continues for the, the big supercell that's out ahead of the cold front. Now, this stuff here is along the cold front, except for the Pawnee County storm. So the main threats are going to be large hail and damaging winds. But the tornado warning continues. Jeremy's down here. And uh, let's go to Jeremy Carter. He's looking back at the updraft now, which is east of Chickasha, southwest of Middleburg. Let's go ahead and bring Jeremy in and uh, get an update from Jeremy. Jeremy, we have your shot up. Yeah, There's yeah. the lowering. Yeah, what do you think? Give us an update on the spin. Oh, oh man, David, it, it ain't got much spin at, at this point. Really, it's died a lot, but you can see it's, it's still trying to hang on for what it's worth. But uh, and not, not even really any areas of scud at this point. Main thing is it's, it's, it's spinning over the top of my head. Back to you. Back to take a shake quicker than you. All right, uh, great. Go ahead and take it, Lacey, just okay. for one second. All right, so right there, that's where Jeremy is looking. You see in his shot, he's watching that closely. Jim's watching that same area as well. So is Hank. And this is the tornado warn storm that's now moving into McLean County. Um, but as of right now, nothing nothing is on the ground with that. They're watching it closely. And then on Lynx 3, as we come further back up to the north, we're still watching the damaging winds that are coming into Oklahoma County as we speak. And I'm going to turn on our live radar so you can see the leading edge of the wind, where you see the green that's rushing towards the radar. So that's going to be a northwest wind coming towards basically Chesapeake now. The edge runs down near Bethany, all the way down to the outlet shops, back to you con and then back up towards Arcadia and we can query some of that it's not as strong as what it was now along the Northwest Expressway some of the strongest winds are actually Yukon and south of I-40 and that's where Val is located he's near the Yukon area but you look south of I-40 still 60 to 70 mile an hour winds and the problem is 
we have nickel dime quarter, maybe golf ball size hail within that being driven. So that's why we're talking a damaging hail storm. In fact, if you put the hail swath on this and take a look so you can kind of tell where it's been and where it's going, that entire line is producing hail that is coming into the northwest sides of the metro as we speak. So Val is right there, and as soon as Val has an update on the wind, because he's very close to that wind field, he will jump in here and give us an update. Back to Union City, but as far as anything spinning, looking for that coming into the metro, not seeing it. So we've got the tornado warning that continues down near uh, down to the south where Jeremy is, we're near Dibble, now coming north of Ellick. And then we also have the tornado warning ongoing north of Morrison that JD and Marty are on that produced a tornado near um, I-35 and Highway 412. Now, watching Stillwater. Stillwater has rotation that's been moving up towards your area. And right now the circulation is south of town crossing Highway 177. Not tight enough that a tornado warning has been issued on that, but it's still an area that can produce 60, maybe 65 mile an hour winds. Man, that, uh, the shot from Jim Gardner is still so very impressive with that storm on the south side of the metro. David, as you look up towards the Stillwater area, still nothing too intense as far as rotation is concerned. Guthrie, damaging winds, quarter size hail. And here in the metro, oh, wind 60, 65 to 70, and there's still indications of golf ball size hail coming in from the northwest side. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and we've confirmed that in several of these storms today. Lacey, so we've, we've had big hail. All yeah, right, so here comes baseball the baseball size hail with the tornado warning earlier. Yeah. Your Hennessy. Yeah, crazy. So here comes the wind of it now, moving through the city, uh, running from uh, Arcadia Lake. Uh, see the green? The green is going to be winds 50 to 60 to 70 miles per hour. That's what she was talking about. Running from Arcadia Lake down to OCU, back here to Outlet Shops. And see the pockets of blue? Those are winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Okay? Winds 60 to 70, where you see the pockets of blue. Notice it's not everywhere, but where you see the green, we're talking winds 60 plus. And maybe a little kink there along Highway 52 west of Mustang. Yep, yep, right there. Yeah. Okay, so 152, we have Mustang. Yep, 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 west of Mustang. It's right here, a little bit of an inflow. That's probably on the boundary or close to it. All right. Um, gym shop six, still looks amazing. Okay, winds in here. This is over Integris Canadian Valley, uh, 70 plus miles per hour. Going to be south of Yukon. Val's right there, looking right at it. Let's go back to Val and bring Val back in here and get an update from Valcaster. Val, winds are going to be 70, 75, just to your west and northwest the way it looks. Go ahead, give us an update. Oh man, we just now, David, came off the Kilpatrick and we turned east onto I-40. Uh, we have got rain curtains. You know what I mean when I say rain curtains, streaming from the west to the east. Uh, we had 65, our highest gust that we saw is 65. I don't think we're in the strongest of the winds right that. But also, I want to tell you, too, that we're getting dime to nickel size hail. Not a lot of it, uh, but dime to nickel size hail when we turn on I-40. Back to you, David. Okay, there he is. So Valcaster in the metro. Uh, he's out near Yukon, uh, coming out of Canadian County and Oklahoma County with small hail, but more importantly at this point, uh, winds 50 to 60 miles per hour, and right behind him uh, on his tail end, we've got winds going to over 70. Okay, so let's go back to Link 3 on reflectivity here and uh, across the metro 60 to 70, running from near Quell Springs Mall uh, down through the West Metro 50 to 60, you can count on it, and we get these little blue pockets showing up where we have winds to over 60 miles per hour here in Oklahoma City. Not a tornado threat for the metro right now. Uh, this is a wind and a hail threat for Oklahoma City. Not a tornado threat right now. Are there still areas of spin? Yes, we have one right here that we're watching. We've got a couple of these little areas of spin here, but uh, nothing too crazy. Let's put reflectivity okay. back on. And there's your leading edge of your wind, by the way. That is shear rate, pointing that out nicely. All the wind now moving through. And that, that wind line, there's your wind line between a southeast wind and getting a west and northwest wind at you know 60 plus miles per hour. Okay, so lots of heavy rain moving across the city. Might start to see a little bit of some localized flooding. Storms are moving, but uh, they're, not, they're not moving at 60, okay? So we got, we got to watch it. Okay, so severe storms slicing across the city, moving from west to east. Quarter-size hail in the yellow, where you see the 
orange. That's going to be up to golf ball size. Notice the hail core is a little bit smaller than what it was. Not quite as big. And that's going to come into the southwest metro, into Mustang, into Tuttle. Big hail there. Big hail there. Okay, let's come back south now. Let's talk about the storm down south. Tornado warning continues. And uh, it's got, uh, hail is smaller down here. Boy, it turned hard, right, didn't it? Yes. All right, so let's see what the shot looks like. Let's go to Jim Gardner. And uh, it's right over south of Middleburg there. And uh, Jim, storm's still rotating. Still have the, what's trying to be a wall cloud here, but so far this thing has just not punched it and done it, which is a great thing, but it is still a big, bad storm with some pretty good sized hail, and it is a mesocyclone for sure. Go ahead, Jim. Well, that's right, David. Uh, we just crossed over 76, uh, just southeast of Dibble here, and uh, looking back to the west. Yeah, David, it's, it's, it's kind of ragged right now. It just, it, it just really, there's, it's missing some ingredient that really hasn't uh, made it really uh, kick off there. We got right up next to it. It is definitely rotating in there, but it hadn't, it's still high base. It's still pretty high. It really hasn't dropped anything, but uh, as far as a mesocyclone, it's a very impressive storm, David. Out in front of this, though, uh, the rain and the hail is really what the concern is right now with this storm. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills, Scotty's 9, back to you. All right, great job, Jim. So, Jim, again, on the southern storm, let's go back to Lynx 3. There's a mesocyclone, and this is what it looks like down here right now. Um, it is still spinning. Tornado warning continues, and it's right here. So, uh, if you live in Dibble, if you live in Washington, um, it's moving east-northeast. It's going to Goldsby. And the hook is actually right here. And the hook is about ready to move out of the tornado warning. Yeah, so, they're sounding the sirens in Purcell. At the moment, this looks like it's going north of Purcell. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The hook, you, you, you'll get some rain in Purcell, maybe some hail. But the hook is going to go, let's it, yeah. It's going to have to really turn right. So there's the area of spin. And uh, it's right here, moving off to the northeast. So it's going to Cole, it's going to Go Goldsby, at least the area of spin, and it's going to go north of Washington. Now, in here, you're going to have golf ball size hail, maybe a little larger. So big hail in here. Big hail in here, okay? Especially back between Dibble and Blanchard. Big hail here. There's your hook, though, right there, just north of the highway. Just north of the highway. Okay, um, let's come back farther north now, talk about Oklahoma City, then we'll jump back into Pawnee County. Uh, here in Oklahoma City, solid line of severe storms moving in. Now, ending in Guthrie, moving through Edmond, back down to downtown, back down to Minko, and everything here moving east at about 25 miles per hour. Heavy rain will pick up another good inch of rain out of this. We had one to two inches this morning, so we could see some localized flooding, but just when we think it's going to get serious enough, these storms are going to keep moving. They're not going to stop. So the flooding threat will not be a continuous thing. There's another bookend trying to form in southern Logan County, south yep, of Meridian, one yep. of the tightest areas of circulation right now. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at it here. Let's go a little farther north, and we'll jump back into Pawnee County. So leaving Guthrie right here. See that? There you go. There it is right there. Boom. Area of spin now, south of Meridian. Okay. And it's right here. It's calling it what's called bookend vortex. It's a... It's a Right there, boom, southeast Meridian. It's an area of low pressure mesocyclone that develops on the north side, clearly showing up nicely there in radar. And from there, it's going over to Kearney. It's moving almost due east, is it not? Yes, it is. Yeah, so Kearney's next. And then, uh, and then from there, it's going to just keep making its way east over towards Avery. And, but Cushing, you're going to get hammered with some wind. Let's go back farther north now, talk okay. about the Pawnee storm. And tornado warning does continue. For that, that does not look as impressive as what it did, but it's still there. I managed to say just south of Highway 15, we were talking about it lifting yeah. north. Yeah, it hugging. It is hugging Highway 15. It's getting ready to cross Highway 18. Okay, Highway 18, it's going to cross that here in just a few minutes. Looks like it might have weakened some. Looks like it might have, looks like it might have weakened. Yeah, it's not nearly as tight as it was over the turnpike. Uh-uh. No, and it was over the Cimarron. It was definitely, it was definitely doing it. Okay. Um, so, again, everything moving from west to east, 25 to 30 miles per hour. Tornado warning continues for Pawnee County. Circulation is going to go just north of Pawnee. You folks in Pawnee, it's just north of town, about six to eight miles. Then from there, it's going to Skidee. 
and then Blackburn. Okay? It's moving due east now. It's about 30. So it's moving. It's not slowing down. Okay, so the tornado warning does continue for that. Okay, let's come back south to Oklahoma City. And uh, uh, Perkins. I tell you what, let's go back to Stillwater. Okay. My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come back into Stillwater here. Uh, winds uh, in behind the line, or, you know, we had winds 50 to 60. Behind the line, the winds were still, you know, 40 to 50. It's still windy up in here. But the main line now is to your east, okay? Turn reflectivity on. Let's just see what it looks like. Yeah. There's our sister station helicopter right near Ripley watching that little area circulation, too. Uh -huh. Yep. So our, our uh, sister station in Tulsa, they're, they're right here. Sky News 6. Okay. Then our Jim Gardner, Sky News 9, we're down south. So uh, we're keeping an eye on both of these areas of, of rotation. So a little area, yeah, little little thing going on here. Okay. So get ready. Ripley, uh, try on, back to Belkel Lake, uh, Luther. You're going to get hammered. It's coming in for you. None of these star storms are tornadic. It's all severe. It's all severe. Wind and hail. Wind and hail right through Oklahoma City. Okay. Let's come back south to Oklahoma City here. Yeah, look at, look at the county here. Heavy, heavy rain. Nickel and dime size hail. The hail core in the West Metro has weakened. It has come down some. Right? That's weakened. But it, don't get me wrong. There's still quarters in here. There's still problems. But the, see, notice this right here. Hail core smaller. So that's a good problem to have. Smaller hail means less damage, right? But we still have winds in here 50 to 60. Okay, let's go back to, uh, I'd say what, let's take Jeremy's shot. He's on that southern storm, on the uh, tornado warn storm. And Jeremy, nice shot. Looking at there, what do you think? Is, it, uh, is that area spinning? Give me an update on what you're seeing right there. Yeah, yeah, David. And I don't know if you can hear me over these tornado sirens, but. This area here off the southeast inter to the intersection, the Dimmel Crossroads, has quite a bit of scud lifted up into it. And you can see the rotation. There's still holding on as hard as, hard as it can. Okay, great job. And Jeremy's looking at, again, at the area of rotation that's down by Blanchard. Let's go back to links three. And here it is. That's the area I'm talking about. So there's your hook. Clearly see the hook. But the way that it's, it's oriented right now, uh, it's an incredible storm to look at from the air and from the ground, but uh, there's your hook, but no tornado on the ground. And it, it's tried to, to develop a wall cloud a couple of times, but it, uh, it has struggled a little bit, which is great, which is great. But that's a big sail. Actually, it looks a little bit smaller to me. It's shrunk in size, for sure. David, yeah. while you're looking at that, and that storm we were talking about up near Ripley is yeah, now ahead. tornado warned. So Bob is right there. He's on, uh, what is that? To Highway 108, just north of Ripley. And this is going to be tracking just to the north and kind of along Highway 18, crossing the river now. And we'll turn on velocity, and you see that little that little spot right there, little type of, of a kink starting to really tighten up. Um, so we're getting the shot in now. It's on uh, RIM 123. That's that's our that's our sister station helicopter taking a look at that that circulation. So it's definitely tight. Definitely, the folks in Ripley and Cushing need to be in their safe spot right now. Areas south of Ripley over to Cushing. And if you are familiar with Agra Road and East 116th, which is actually Highway 33, um, that's kind of the area of circulation just to the northwest of there. I'll turn back on velocity, and you can see it. So it's just south of Ripley, just south of town. And if it tries to lift north, like all of these have, folks in Ripley, you need to be in your safe spot for sure. As of right now, it looks like it's going to go just south of town. Okay. Do we have uh, Bob shot in-house? We're working on getting Bob shot, yes. Okay. And so on. you can see this helicopter shot. Uh, oh, it just went down. Okay. We'll looking get it at, back up. Looking at Six's shot? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's really tightening up. Well, that didn't take long. Look how fast. It's, it's back, but it's not. Back. Look how fast that is. If we can get uh, his shot up, Channel 6's, they're right here. We can take that shot, control room. If we can get that shot up. I see it because I'm looking at it. I see ours and I see theirs in remote 123. Remote 123 control room. And there's their shot. Uh, from Dustin Stone. He's our chopper pilot up in Tulsa now, so now we have both our choppers working at the same time. Jim Gardner's down south. We have Dustin up north and a big dark area. Just crossed Highway 108 
Yeah, just south of Ripley. Uh, About is a it, mile or two south of Ripley. Is it wrapped in rain? Look at... Uh, yeah, it yeah. Will, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's ugly. It's messy. Okay, so that's his shot there. Okay, uh, let's go back to Lynx 3. Here it is. Look at the, uh, look at the hook right here. And that, that's lunging out ahead of the line. Yes. Tornado's right here. Turn. Just crossing the highway. Okay, moving east now. All right, let's put... Uh, watch this right here. Yeah, really, boom, tightens up. So let's bring up velocity data one more okay. time. Bob, we got his shot. Yep, that's weakened. Okay. We have Bob's shot. Let's go, to, let's go to Bob's shot here. He's one of our storm trackers. Again, out of our Tulsa station. And let's take his shot, control room. And um, there it is. He's not with us, right? He's still in Tulsa land? Okay. All right, let's leave his shot up here just for a second. Let's see what he's looking at here. He's coming in, I think he's coming into Ripley, isn't he? Yeah, he's coming in from the north. Okay, so it's gonna be to his southeast. Yes. All right, well, yeah, it's gonna be about a mile and a half. You won't be able to see it from there. It's gonna be to his southeast. Unless it's all scoured out, but his windshield wipers are working because it's raining, so. Yep. Visibilities are gonna be low. Okay, well, we've got a tracker there. They're on it. It's just gonna be hard to see because it's, again, wrapped in rain. All right, let's go back to uh, Link 3, talk about tornado warning now. Once again, for Ripley, uh, you folks in Cushing, tornado warning for you, but I want to point this out. The circulation is just to your north, a mile and a half, but it's still about four miles to your west. You can see the okay. hook very easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you live in Cushing or north of Cushing, you need to be in your safe spot. And tell you what, uh, Cassie, let's go ahead to a storm track on that Cushing deal. Yeah, folks in Olton, storm? north of Drumright, need to be paying very close attention. You're not officially in the warning, no, but that's where but it's headed. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's everything, everything's trying to sag east-southeast as the wave's moving in. Everything's trying yeah, to... Yeah, the motion should be to the southeast for yeah. sure. Yeah, so if, if I live in Cushing or Drumright, I'm thinking about lowest level, center part of the house, or the storm shelter because the area of spin is right here. And while you're looking at that, I'm just looking further down the line. We were talking about the cell near Meridian that was starting to rotate. That's west of Kearney, and it's still spinning as well, okay. approaching Kearney from the west. Okay. All right. Yep, yep, yep. So, so that's going to Cushing. Let's go to Lynx 4, then we'll get in on that. Let's go to okay. Lynx 4 here and uh, take a look at it here. So there we have Cushing in it. We have drum right. Cushing, 634. Uh, you've got about, you know, seven minutes or so. Drum right, 649. Oilton, 652. Uh, Sepulpa, 732. Kiefer, 736. Glenpool, 741. Tulsa at about 744. That would be far west Tulsa. We'll see if it makes it all the way over there. It will in one way, form, or the other. But uh, right now, uh, there's the possible tornado right here. And the emergency manager reporting tornado on the ground, debris on the road, one mile south of Ripley. So that would have been right where it was crossing. Yep, it crossed right one mile south of town. Uh, damage there, at least some damage now south of Ripley. And uh, Bob's coming in from the north. I assume that's Bob's shot. With damage there south of Ripley, one mile. So tornado confirmed on the ground. It's going to Cushing. It's going to drum right. Okay, Cushing, 634, drum right, 649. Write it down. Okay, moving east, southeast. Another area of spin back here near Kearney and Tryon. Watching that now. Not quite tornado warm, but it is spinning. And it's moving east now at about 30 miles per hour. It's going to Agra. It's going to Avery. All right, and then from there, it's going to head down towards Depew and Bristow. Okay possible new tornado developing there. Okay, let's go farther south now. Let's talk about the Oklahoma City area. Nothing tornadic in the city. And uh, nothing tornadic in the city, but the line is moving through with winds 50 to 60. <clears throat> Any update on power outages at all? You can take a look here. I'm just curious. I'm looking at the circulation down near Cole. Right. Okay. So Okay, 4,4300, I was just told in my ear, okay. total. So that's not bad, considering how many storms and how many, yes, miles we're covering. Go ahead. Val was just telling me that he had a friend call him that lives near Ripley that did have sustained damage, uh, possibly by the school, I believe on the south side, and yeah. also some power flashes that he did see looking down south towards Ripley. Okay. 
Yeah, that's where we had the confirmed damage, one mile south of town. Um, new yeah. reports from the emergency manager coming in saying a small trailer park in the area um, and believes there might be some damage there. Okay, all right, so that's gonna be one mile south of Ripley. Okay, all right, we'll get uh, crews on that. Try crews continue on. All right, let's jump back south here again and uh, talk about the storm down here. Big hook, this storm is shrinking though. It is shrinking, it's getting smaller, it's still severe. We still have the tornado warning on it, and you still have the hook. Let's go to Jim Gardner in Bob Mill Sky News 9 and get an update from Jim. And uh, Jim, your storm, I tell you what, it has been impressive to look at. It is getting a little bit smaller, and it is weakening some. Go ahead, give us an update. Well, that's exactly right, David. We're set on Highway 39 just south of Washington, about three miles, shooting back to the west. And it is, David, it's gotten a lot smaller. Uh, you know, it's still an impressive storm. The, the circulation is not to what it was earlier, but uh, again, it's pretty high base now, so really not too much activity. The cloud to ground lightning up in front of us uh, intensified a little bit, but this storm is definitely on the is shrinking, but we'll keep watching it, let you know anything that happens. Jim Garpoint live for Bob Mills, Scotty's 9, back to you. All right, great job, Jim. So Jim's still on the southern storm. We're not going to leave it until we know the clear is, is all good, right? So Jim's on the southern storm there. Nice shot. but. It is not as big as what it was. It continues to slowly spin down. But these things will spin for hours until they're gone. Actually, no joke, even after the clouds gone, guess what? The air, even though there won't see any clouds, it'll keep spinning for a while. That's how strong and powerful and how dynamic these are in the atmosphere. Cool stuff, all right? Let's get back to it. Link Street, this is the shot there. That's Jim. There's the hook. Jim's right here, looking right back at the hook. There's Hank. Hank's looking right at it. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's go to Hank's shot. Uh, the hail is coming into Goldsby, Noble, and Slaughterville, but the, the hail core has come down. It's not as big and bad as what it was, but uh, look at that. And that is all flowing right into the updraft there. And uh, Hank, just an incredible shot of the updraft. It's, it's still spinning, no doubt about it. Yeah, David, I'm at the Dibble Crossroads, and I want to pan back here to the south and show you still the inflow that's coming into the base of this storm. I'm coming pan, pan back to the north. That's the updraft base. You can kind of see up on top there where that vault is, but right there is the area of, of updraft. I won't really say circulation. I know it still has some rotation with it, but we're not really seeing much of that translating down to the ground level. Um, it's it's actually shrunk quite a bit in size, and you you chase long enough, you know when these storms shrink in size, a lot of times you're able to see more. So we'll lift up there, and you can see that the vault is still uh, pretty healthy there, but there's not really anything imminent that's at the base of the updraft at the moment. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job. So Hank's been on this from the get-go along with Jim, and uh, there's the updraft, folks. There it is. That is, and this is corkscrewed. This whole thing is spinning like this, and then it spins, comes out in the horizontal, and then it goes into the vertical. Just a big tube in the air, just a big column in the air. There's the back side of that. There's where your wall cloud would be. And there still is a little bit of a lowering, but um, this thing never really ramped into gorilla mode, if you will. It never got into beast mode. It, it, it did what it was going to do and produce some big hail and wind and lightning and thunder, okay? But we're still watching that. Let's go back to Link 3. That storm continues to shrink. It is getting a little bit smaller on radar. You're still going to get some hail in Noble. Uh, Norman... You're going to miss out on everything in this. It is shrinking so fast, but you're not going to miss out on this, Norman. You're not. So you'll miss out on the supercell, but you're not going to miss out on the squall line, okay? You're not going to miss out on the squall line. Okay, so let's go to and come back farther north now. Severe storm coming into Tuttle. Big hail now, big hail west of Amber. This is really, really ramping up. Look at there, golf balls now up to tennis ball size hail. South of Minko, west of Amber. Uh, southwest of Tuttle, okay, and then smaller hail in the metro, smaller hail in Oklahoma City, and then from there we get a little bit of a break, and let's go up here a little farther, then we'll talk about the tornado threat. Small hail, Logan County into Creek County, and then we have the tornado warning. Look at the, look at that, wow, that is really lunging there. Okay. Yeah, damaging winds just blew through Kearney for sure. Yeah. Yeah, boy, the wind is really, really strong. Okay, so uh, we have... Channel 6, uh, where's Marty Logan on this shot? He's further north. Okay. 
Okay, all right, well, yeah, he's way north. Okay, there's that shot from Jim, just making sure it's not trying to tighten up. It's got a little bit of a collar on it now in Jim's shot. And also Jeremy's shot, just wanna make sure. Okay, when, sometimes when they'll tighten up, they'll try to produce, at least get a funnel or when it's, when it's weakening, if you will. All right, so Marty's up here on the back side. He's gonna head up into, he's already moving through uh, Pawnee County. These are now moving into Osage County. So when they get into Osage, a little farther east, and that's when Tulsa takes over with this part of the line, but we still have our own problems going on down here. Okay, so let's get back to the Kearney storm. Okay. Take a look, and then we'll come back to Oklahoma City. So area spin right there. Yeah, you know what, it did ramp up. And then it lunged, didn't it, it? Yeah, big time. Man, it really did push east. South of Agra. It's right here still, right? Look at shear rate. See what you get out of that. Out of which one? Shear rate. Okay. I'm just curious to what it, uh, yeah, not yeah. much. I mean, the storm definitely that went through Ripley is stronger than yeah. that one. There's your tornado now, crossing the river again, or just crossing the river. Northwest of Cushing. Tornado's gonna be right here. So, so did it occlude or lift farther to the north? Uh, looks like it might have. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's lifting north, so now the warning goes up towards basically Keystone Lake. Yeah. So it's going to go into Oulton, north of Drum right, yeah. up towards Manford and Keystone Lake. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's, that's a wise decision. Moving east-northeast, it was moving almost east-southeast. Yeah, because the line is crashing to the southeast. southeast but, but this yeah. thing's trying to wave, maybe a little mezzolo or something there. It's trying to, it's trying to make its way east-northeast. So Oilton, Drum right, Olive, Manford. Tornado safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house. You gotta go now, right? And the storm down to the south, it's now coming into Cleveland County. The new tornado warning will include Norman. Okay. Because yep. it's still moving into a favorable environment well ahead of the dry line. Yeah, it's just not as big. Front. Right. Yeah, just not as big as what it was. So this will be a new tornado warning for down south. That storm is smaller, but like we said, we track them till they're gone. So this is the new tornado warning now. And uh, the hook is back here and the hook um, we'll zoom in here. It's gonna have to really, it's gonna have to really, yeah. Okay, it includes South Norman. It's very South Norman, very yes. South yeah, Norman, basically it's Highway 9 South. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Along is south of Highway 9. It will not impact downtown or North Norman who've been hammered so many times. But you're still gonna get hammered because you're gonna get the second line in behind it. So there's your new tornado warning. It includes Noble, Slaughterville, Etowah. By the way, the hail, is not very big down here. Not very big. Okay, let's go back to Jim Gardner. I wanna see what this looks like from Jim. There's your hook. Let's get an update from Jim and notice how it's beginning to change shape again, tightening up a little bit. The storm is not as big, but it's tightening up. Go ahead. Well, that's right, David. In just the past few minutes, the action in it, the movement has gotten a lot more dramatic. You can actually see it turning and you see it lifting and it, it has got, it's got a whole lot more action into it than it was my last report here. So. Again, it is getting smaller, but you know this could tighten up, man, and possibly drop a tornado. At uh, you know, uh, but uh, right now we are sitting just on the east side of the town of Washington, shooting back to the west. In fact, it's just probably about a mile to the south, uh, southwest of the town of Washington. But as you can see, David, you can see the movement in it as we're sitting here. It's getting a lot more active, so we'll stay with it. Keep you updated, Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills, Cuddy's Nine. Back to you, Jim. That storm is smaller, but it's getting tighter. It's beginning to kind of restrict just a bit and it is getting tighter and you can see the motion here in Jim shot down near Purcell right and here we have this right here this is kind of rotating to the back side this is folding over okay all right let's go to Hank from the ground and get an update from Hank he might can he still see that well Hank's not in the uh, Hank's a little farther northeast uh, my bad Hank can you still see what's going on yeah, David, I have turned around. I am now headed west back towards Chickasha. Uh, Jeremy and Jim are taking that storm that's going towards our north of Washington and towards Norman. We're headed back to the line in Chickasha. There's kind of some suspect areas there. So we're going to head back towards uh, Chickasha and watch the south end of this line, David. Back to you. 
Okay, great. Thanks for that update, Hank. Hey, Hank's heading back to the west. Jeremy and Jim are still on the storm. Amanda was just telling us that the uh, University of Oklahoma sent out alert to students telling them to seek shelter now. But the where, where the warning is, just so you can see the rotation, this is going to be on the south sides of town. Part of the campus there is on Highway 9, but just to kind of give you that exact location, the rotation is actually right now near the town of Goldsby, and that is where Jim is looking off towards the north. So that's about to cross highway 30 or i-35 um it's it's tight it's now actually the circulation is on top of i-35 and that may stay say just south of highway 9 as it's making its way to the north so good idea for the students take shelter know where the circulation is though it is currently well to the south the way it looks heading towards noble really from highway 9 to the south along 77 towards noble david yeah and right now I mean, the OU campus is way up here. Now, like he was saying, I mean, there are buildings and the, the law, I mean, everything's, there are camp, you know, part of campus goes all the way down to Highway sure. 9. And I get that, but um, downtown Norman from there north, and it's going to have to really occlude and come into OU campus. It's right here, right? Look at Sheer Rate. Yeah, here, I'll put Sheer Rate back on. It's right here, in between Goldsby and Noble. So, unless it occludes, um, you know, we'll see. But uh, sirens are blowing in Norman. That's what th that right there is. That right there in Jim shot. That's that's what he's looking at. And not on the ground at the moment. Not on the ground. And you can't even call that a funnel. If you do, there's something wrong with you. Those are tags that are spinning underneath the mesocyclone. But there are differences, big differences between a funnel and tags rotating around. And sometimes you'll have a lot of. Uh, armchair storm chasers calling something like that all the time funnels and funnels and funnels and it's not okay but those are tags that are rotating if they tighten up you'll you'll notice a big difference between a funnel and scud or tags rotating under the mesocyclone okay so let's uh talk okay the storm there again there's your noble line of fire let's do a storm track going to slaughterville but the main part of the circulation is back here by goldsby let's go to links four and there's your storm track. And again, moving east to 30. So Noble at 646. Um, our storm track pretty much takes it south of Norman, at least downtown for sure. South sides of Norman, along and south of Highway 9. Okay. Uh, looking at Etowah, 707, Asher, 733, Earlsboro, 745, Conowal, 750, and Bowlegs at about 8 o'clock. Okay, so Etowah, you're kind of on the eastern side of this and, and Lake Conowa and all through there. Way over here. Way over here, though, with that. Okay, way down there, too. And th that's, that's a little bit too far south. Um, I, I think it's, it's going to hug right in here. Brooksville, Etowah, Seminole, Bowlegs. I think you're in that, you know, that kind of the immediate line of fire with that. Okay, let's come back to Oklahoma City, talk about the metro. And severe line of storms moving across Oklahoma City. We've had over 4,000 uh, electric customers without power. That's about three or 12,000 people. Not that many. Not that many. Uh, no tornado threat right now with this line. This is a wind and a hail threat. And uh, winds in here are going to be 50 to 60. Do we see any crazier wind now? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, and you can see this is kind of a mess back behind in all the rain, but nothing nothing organized as far as a strong wind field or any rotation. No, it's definitely weakened. The front, the front might have caught it. Let me look. It looks like it's trying to... Am I seeing the front now just northwest of Norman? Let me see. Right now, we still have... I mean, the true front, we still have a southeast wind. Uh, let's see. Yeah, southeast wind. So no, the front hasn't completely caught it just yet. It's still intense, and that's why you still have to watch the leading edge. We still have to watch out ahead from Hare to Choctaw, you know, back up to Wellston. I'll put on reflectivity. That's why we're still watching that leading edge. So the front has not completely undercut that as of yet. Yeah, not this side, but it's undercut this. Uh, right now, no. I mean, okay. the latest the latest mesonet still has southeast winds in Chickasha, Norman, and there's a southeast wind in Yukon, which looks kind of odd. Okay. Um, Maybe outflow or something. Yeah.
But the real strong northwest winds are basically Watonga, Hinton, down to Fort Cobb. Okay. All right. So the main front, yeah. So there's still, still back there, yeah. Yeah. There is still room for error on this where we can get something to, to spin really hard and try to do something nutty. But so far in Oklahoma City, we've had the wind, 50 to 60, had some gusts to 70, some power outages, nickel and dime, had some quarter, had some golf ball size hail out in Canadian County. Uh, but, uh, you know, so far could have been worse. And uh, again, we have the new tornado warning for Cleveland County coming out of McLean into Cleveland County, moving east at 25 to 30, moving almost due east now. And by the way, folks, it is now ending at Edmond. Yeah, it's ending in Edmond. It's already at, ended in Piedmont and El Reno and Okarchi. Big line of storms off to your east, running from now Jennings and Yale and Cushing back down to uh, Norman and back down to Chickasha in Anadarko. So the whole line is severe. And then what you get in that line, every now and then you'll get a spin up. So let's talk about what's going on near Cushing now. And what do you think? Is that area spin? It's wow. right on yeah. the river. Yeah, north of Drum, right? Still there. So you can see it. Yeah. You know, there's another one kind of up highway. Uh, what is that highway? I should know. My entire family lives out there. Highway 69 coming into Jennings. Right. Um, and that's still another yeah. area of spin. So that's why the tornado warning goes up towards Tarleton and eventually Keystone Lake. Yeah. But the original. The original is, yeah, between Oilton and Drumright. Yes. Yeah, I see this here. But the original spin, yeah, is down here. It's right there. Okay, still with us. So if you live, it can always lift to the north. If you live in Oilton to Olive, tornado warning for you. And then from there, it's gonna, man, you can hear the rain here at News 9, it is pouring. And then from there, it's gonna, it's gonna make its way over towards, you know, Tulsa. It's going to Tulsa, all this is going to Tulsa. Uh, it's just, you know, what matters is what's it gonna be doing when it gets there, right? So there's the tornado, little ball there sticking out. Little ball right there, right there. Doesn't look like much to you, but it was, and it did produce tornado damage on the south side of Ripley. Do you have something? Go ahead. Audio? Amanda. Yeah, I was just gonna let you know, David, the power outages have shot up to 11,767 customers. That's just OGNE. Most of those are in the Oklahoma City area getting reports of power poles down. A couple different reports, one mile uh, north of Highway 66, around the Yukon areas where those reports are coming in. Yeah, and obviously it's raining here. We are getting reports of a high water rescue. Uh, that at 4500 West Memorial Road. So something we're checking out. We'll let you know if there's anything there. But just uh, that's the situation going on in the metro here as the, as the storms ramp exactly. up and it continues to rain. So people really need to be careful. That's right at the intersection. If you know where Mercy Hospital is in Oklahoma City, that's right, Memorial. I think it's North Meridian right there. So that's just a kind of a low water spot, a low spot where a lot of water um, seems to get. And that's where it, we're having problems right now. Already already very saturated, obviously, from this morning. And, uh, sure. you know, going into... Uh, going into the afternoon so uh you know kind of dangerous to be out there with all this rain uh and, and this morning didn't help at all with that so uh we'll keep you posted though david any other things that come to the news desk uh, we'll be sure to pass it along all right well not good but uh, here's the good thing the rain is going to end so when Rain. Funny, I have to start worrying about some flooding 
So take care out there. Back to you. The winds are strongest about a mile and a half to your south. We're looking at winds to 60 to 65. Uh, probably a little bit stronger than where you are right now, just to your south, about a mile and a half. So. Um, yeah, I believe that they're getting stronger as I as I speak right now. Yeah. Okay, so th this is more right now. Not a tornado threat. Not nope. We're looking at winds 60 to 65. Might have a gust of 70 in there. So power bumps, maybe some power lines down, some tree limbs down, and some folks might be without power before it's all said and done here shortly. Heavy rain, gonna have some localized flooding. Could be worse, but the flooding and the rain will not hang around. So I don't expect widespread and all evening flooding event, okay? I don't expect that. All right, so let's go back to Links 3, and here's the wind we're talking about. There's Tom and Wednesday. There's downtown Moore. From there down uh, toward the uh, Moore Medical Center, wind 60 65. So, pretty good wind field all across Moore right now. No tornadoes in Moore, winds 50 to 60, maybe a gust 65, okay? And uh, hail down Highway 37, north of Highway 37, just to the west of the Moore Medical Center, nickels and dimes, quarter size hail, uh, northwest Moore, back to I 44, at least some nickels and dimes scattered in here. See the hail core kind of snaking along right there? Nickels and dimes with some quarters in there. Okay, all right, so let's talk about uh, Bridge Creek and uh, Amber, okay? Storms are all severe, winds 60 plus. Going to Newcastle Casino, going to Blanchard. And uh, let's back, okay, yeah, I wanna get Hank up. Hank's going okay. northeast. Okay, I just, I just yeah, wanna see where he is. Yeah, about to get another storm. Yeah, Chickasha, you had the first supercell, right? And let's lapse this. Okay. Let's just see what it looks like at home. Yeah, moving east, southeast, building down towards just to the east of Anadarko, building southeast down into Chickasha. Big hail now developing just due west of the uh, Chickasha Airport. Big hail here. Going to have at least golf balls. So, uh, yeah, and that's all going to Cole and Goldsby and Washington and Slaughterville and, and Purcell. Okay, so severe line of storms. Again, running from Verdon and Chickasha all the way along I-44, all the way now going into the western yep, sides of out. almost Tulsa. We're almost there. There's the tornado warning. Uh, we have two now. One is for, again, Eastern Payne County. Let's go ahead and take a look, look at that one. Okay. That's our Ripley deal, right? Yes. Still with us. Yeah, it's quickly moving. Well, it is, into, isn't it? Almost into Creek County now. Wow, look at there. It's crossing the river now between Oilton and Drumright. So what is what does a shear rate look like on that? Then we'll get a Brandon shot. Look at that. Okay, tornado warning now north of Drumright. Uh, you folks in Drumright, like we said, need to be in your safe spot. If you live in Olive, Olive, you're in the line of fire for sure. If you know anybody that lives in Olive, uh, this is going to go right over Olive. And uh, velocity data says it's turning. It might be on the ground if it is. Yeah, it's still, yeah, could be on the ground. Could be on the ground. It's close. It's coming right down the river, just north of the small little community of, of uh, Frey. Okay, then here's the river. I don't see any negatives in there. No. Looking for debris. But there it is right there. Boom. Right there. And look how the reflectivity wraps back around. Watch this. This wraps back around. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go to Brandon Pennell shot, and uh, he is in uh, Norman, West Norman. That has teeth on it. That is coming through Norman right now, and uh, Brandon, big line, there it is, coming in from the west and from the northwest. Give us an update. Yeah, David, that's right. We're at uh, Riverwind Casino right here on Highway 9, I-35. This is looking back towards the west, towards uh, the spur and uh, Highway 62 as well. You know, looking back up to the north, there, there are some low-hanging clouds, but you can definitely see just in the shot the gust front that's coming out of this of this line of storms with the cold front. Um, as we came through the line earlier, you know, we only had we only had winds of about 40 and just extremely heavy rain, but you know, this thing still has teeth on it and could intensify. And what what goes up must come down. So there's there's going to be some strong wind at some point. Back to you. Yeah, absolutely. We've had some of that. You are right, Brandon. We've had. Some of the winds, you know, 50 to 60, power outages and, and all that going on. So this is down in Norman. If you're looking at your window, this is what you're seeing. Not a tornado threat in Norman. Coming out of Moore, this is going to be a wind and some hail. 
Okay, winds 50 to 60 as it moves in from the north. But lowered no area right here in my shot. I see that right there. Um, we're looking at... Um, where, where, okay, where's his GPS location? Oh, where? Brandon. Yeah. He's further south. Yeah, here we go. Okay, is there a little bit of a right niche? The, right by the casino. Is there a little bit of a notch, a little bit of a niche in there somewhere? Do you see anything? No. I don't see a notch no. or a niche no. at the moment. I, I'll go with niche. Okay. I do see strong winds in the east sides of Moore, though, moving into Norman. That's where we've got 65, maybe 70 mile an hour winds. That's what I was zoomed yeah. into. I'm just making up words again, aren't I? And I let you do it. No. You Appreciate do it well. It. Appreciate it. We'll go with that. Okay, so this is coming into Norman, all right? And uh, winds are gonna be, you know, 40, 50. Might have a gust of 60. 40 to 50, I think it's gonna be pretty common. And nickel and dime size hail, maybe some quarter size hail. Um, let's go back to link three. What were you showing me there? This is the wind field we were talking about that blew through Tom. This is headed towards the south side of wow, you know, Lake Stanley Draper. Yeah, I saw that. Air Depot, southeast 34th. Man, and look then, at that. So that's, that's on the TDWR. And then if you look at shear rate, now yeah. this isn't rotation, no. but I mean, it is damaging winds coming yeah. down 164 yeah. southeast. And that's going to go right over, uh, let's see, Lake Stanley Draper. It's going to go at least on the on south the southern end. side. On the side, yeah. Southeast, 119th. So southeast, 119th. Uh, there's Douglas. There's southeast, 164th, down to East Indian Hills Road. See this purple? Damaging wind right here, 60 to 70 plus. You can count on it right there. And the blue, look at it at different radars. It'll change color on you, but just. Yeah, that's going towards that radar. So 60 to 70, right? And it's moving almost due east. It's crossing uh, 36th Street right now. Then after that, it's going to Douglas, right? And it's just going to keep making its way off to the east. There's Lake Stanley Draper and uh, southern half of the lake. Winds 50, 60. There might be a couple of pixels in here that are. Yeah, going right towards the Twin Lakes radar. Yeah. Yeah, moving east at about 25 to 30. Okay, so uh, that's that. Winds, 60, 70 miles per hour. Southeast 34th, between Southeast 34th and Douglas and Lake Stanley Draper. Damaging winds, okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, There's still that kind of inflow back right in, here. yeah, over Tinker. Yeah. That's what I thought when Brandon showed that shot. I was like, oh, hang on a second. Yes. Yeah. But th yeah, there, there's, there's, this definitely pulling that in there. Okay, so I see Tom. Let's check back in with our tractors a little farther north. Where's Val? And there's right Brandon. Where'd he disappear to? Oh, he's coming in on the eastern storm. Okay. All right, I see what he's doing. He's looking at that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the north across the city. Okay. Just get an update on the on the city. This this storm's up, still tornado warning, by the way. L Lake Thunderbird over to Tecumseh, Macomb, Tribby, Etowah. It's a smaller storm. It is still spinning. And uh, tornado warning on that. Who's right here? Is that Val? Val? Mm -hmm, that's Val. Okay, there's Jeremy's shot. What does Jeremy see in his shot? Oh, nothing. I see what he's doing. Okay, uh, let's go to Val and get an update from Val. And uh, I don't think that's, yeah, that's his shot. Okay. Hey, Val, what do you think? Uh, there's the area of spin there. Um, it is still rotating. It's just not rotating as much, and the storm is not as big. What do you think? Give us an update. Yeah, so, uh, David, we, what we're doing, we're on the east side of Norman right now looking to the west. We can see the LP storm over there that does have a lowering. And we can also see this big, bad looking. I mean, that looks mean when you see that coming in. Uh, and it is pretty mean with respect to wind. Uh, as Tom was saying, wind's over 50 where he's at on the north side of Norman there. And, you know, visually looking at this, I can see the scud and the low clouds just racing to the south. So we haven't got the wind yet. We just now had a wind shift right here. Uh, but the stronger winds is still north of us. Uh, but, you know, just looking at that, that's going to be a pretty good windstorm when it comes through, David. Back to you. Yeah, no doubt about it. So that's, that's really our concern here in Oklahoma City. The hail is smaller, but the wind threat is still there. Winds, again, 50 to maybe 60 miles per hour. So that's, you know, Val's talking about the wind, and he's exactly right as this uh, moves on through. Okay, um, let's go back to Lynx 3, and then we'll do some storm tracks on this. Uh, clearing the northwest half of Oklahoma City. We've had some localized flooding here in the metro, but simply because it's, it's amazing, you know, two weeks ago we were knee deep in the drought. The drought's still with us, 
but the last two days we have put a dent in the drought. And remember, we're going to have more severe weather and more rain and more storms, including the possibility of tornadoes coming up on Wednesday and Wednesday night. So this is day one of, of a long week. And then we'll get a decent break after that and then more severe weather, okay? All right, so here's the line running from Creek County and Pawnee County, running into Lincoln County, down through Chandler, and then down to Moore and Norman and Hank. Now, along the line, all the way into Lincoln County, there is not a tornado threat right now, okay? Nothing in there is spinning like a top that's gonna try to do something. But this one lonely supercell out ahead of the line is still turning, and it's gonna be just southeast of uh, coming into Lake Thunderbird currently. I see Jeremy's shot. Let's, oh, look at this shot here. See that? There's where the tornado warning is, <clears throat> and we'll do the storm track on that cast. Let's go to Jeremy now. Let's bring in Jeremy and get a quick update from him. And uh, look at the cylinder that we have been tracking in the sky for the last couple of hours now. And there it is from Jeremy Carter. And uh, Jeremy, no tornado on the ground. We can see your shot, but it is still spinning. Give us an update. Yeah, and, and David, it is beautiful. It is something to behold. But definitely no no development on the lower end, like a scud, scud coming down, nothing like that. But, man, really a sight to see. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job, Jeremy. So he is still tracking that tornado worn storm. There are the plates on the mesocyclone. Jeremy's staying with it. He'll keep tracking it off to the east, and uh, we'll see what it does. But uh, it has, and, and it is smaller than what it was. It is shrinking, and that's a good sign. These storms just don't disappear, right? Uh, they they go 40, 50, 60, 70,000 feet up. They take up a lot of, of uh, real estate in the atmosphere, if you will, and they're very, very big with very, very big rotating updrafts like that. And that will give you problems. And you can see, look at the thing spinning here. Look at the plates on that. Look at that. There's your mesocyclone right there. So it did not produce a tornado. Jim was on it from the get-go along with Hank and... Uh, Jeremy is still on it down near Purcell, looking off to the uh, north and east. And Val Castor is looking at it on top of that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back to the line here, Lynx 3. And uh, Justin, is Jeremy still going east with that? Yeah, let's get him east on 39, and then uh, we'll make a left turn and get him up on that. There's a storm track on Lynx 4 if you want it. Okay, Lynx 4, storm track. And again, this is on the southern storm. Now, we've done it on the whole storm here. You're going to get some hail, going to get some wind. Hail sizes are not that big now. But that's going into the uh, Thunderbird Casino, 702, Little Axe, 702, Macomb, 709, Tecumseh, 736, Earlsboro, 752, Seminole at about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in Seminole. So the whole, uh, the whole storm here itself uh, moving northeast. So uh, Shawnee, if it lifts a little farther north, you'll get in on this. If you don't get this... You might get a little rain out of this. You're going to get this. And this is what's coming through Oklahoma City. And that is our problem, another problem. But mainly wind and hail. It's a wind and hail problem versus this has been and continues with the, the tornado warning on that. And for good reason. It's spinning, but we've got trackers on the ground. Jim uh, looking at it. Everyone's looking at it here, and it's not producing a tornado. But uh, it's, uh, it's definitely rotating. It's definitely rotating now right here, northwest of Etowah. Okay, so let's come back to Oklahoma City and come back, oh, let's tell you what, Southwest Metro here. Go back to Lynx 3. There's your big view running from Tulsa down through Oklahoma City, down to Chickasha, down to Eastern Caddo County. Severe storm in Southeastern Caddo. Let's go ahead and zoom on in. Chickasha, you're getting hammered right now with this next wave. And it is now moving into Chickasha. Hell sizes have come down on that, right? And we're being a little bit attenuated too. Yeah, the TLX radar is being you know, hit with pretty strong winds at the moment. So still nickels, dimes, quarters in the yellow. That's out of Frederick. Okay, yeah, and there's gonna be some golf balls in here. So golf ball size hail coming into Chickasha, west southwest of Chickasha, and then from Chickasha up to Middleburg and Blanchard. Pretty intense line, and it's gonna build, see the line here lighting up? There's your coal front, there's your dry line. That's called a double point. Coal front, dry line. And if you're a storm chaser, there's where you want to be. And this is where this whole thing began earlier today up near Woodward in northwestern Oklahoma. It began in those two zones right there when storms began to develop around 1.30, 2 o'clock today. Okay, that was right there. So dry line, cold front. Cold front, 
clearly through these storms. So big hail in and around Chickasha. Winds are going to be 50 to 60. Sliding southeast again at around 25 miles per hour. And then uh, they get a little weaker once you get into Oklahoma City, at least over Choctaw and Jones, a little bit weaker there. Still severe down in Norman, and that's going down towards Purcell. We'll do a storm track on that. She's already done it. Look at the winds here now. What did I see there on Lynx 3? Let's go to Lynx 3. No, it's fine. Lynx 4 is good. Okay. <laughs> we'll stay with that. Let's stay with this, then we'll go to Lynx 4. All right, so here's Lynx 3. Uh, winds 68 to 70, running from Franklin, which is going to be East Franklin Road, Indian Hills Road, Tecumseh, Rock Creek Road, and uh, Alameda. Okay, and then the north-south, there's Douglas, right? We have over to 84th Avenue, some of the other streets here showing up. Uh, yeah, what'd you say? We're hitting kind of high up now, looking out of the TDWR, yeah. but still, I mean, easily win 60, 65. Yeah, 73 is going to be a little bit on the high end, but 60 to 75 is still a, is still a pretty good bet. So uh, this is East Norman. Here's downtown Norman. And then from there, off to the east. Let's go back to Tom. He's still back in Norman and find out what's going on with his wind. And uh, Tom, we're still showing some wind overhead on top of you there. Give us an update. What are your winds? You know, they're not as strong as they were earlier. I'd say probably about maybe approaching 40, 30 to 40 here. Uh, right now, we're just dealing with the heavy rain. You know, this is on top of the one to two inches of rain we saw earlier. So there is water going over some of the curbs like they, it usually does here in Norman. So back to you. All right, yeah, and uh, it'll get better. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't take, doesn't take much <clears throat> to flood in Norman. It's better than it was when we were all down there back in the day. It flooded all the time. You'll shower, flood, and flood would flood. I mean, Lindsay, it is better. Good job, Norman. It is better, but it still floods. All right. So we had all the rain this morning, and now we've picked up another inch. So give or take, yeah, you're going to get some flooding. So today, total, we've had some areas picking up over three inches of rain, and a lot of that has been heavy rain. So, okay. So who's this shot? Who's right there? That's Hank. Let's get an update from Hank. Looks like some wind might be blowing in that shot. Let's bring Hank back in here, and he's down south, down near Chickasha. And Hank, that storm there coming into Chickasha right now with some teeth on it. Go ahead. Yeah, David, right now I'm just east of Chickasha. It's the Tabler Y, and kind of letting this core come overneath us. We started to chase some hail to see how big it was. And we've had very small hail, so I was really kind of surprised. I thought it would be bigger, but I think it's come down some. Our winds have been blowing somewhere in the 40 range but there hasn't been anything too out of control here in the last 10 minutes or so with the south edge of this line. But I think there's still some of the better part of it. Still just a little to my west in Chickasha, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job. And again, Hank is uh, down on the Chickasha storm, which is the whole line. Okay. It's the whole line. Let's go back to it. Great shot. And Hank's been on, um, well, the big storm earlier. had the tornado warning on it. It did not produce, but Hank's right here. And we've got a hail core over Amber, and then it's kind of scattered hail cores from Chickasha back to the southwest, nickel and dime, up to quarter size hail. And we have Jeremy here looking at this storm over the Etowah storm. What does shear rate look like on this? I'll show you. Just curious. It's trying to kind of tuck back in a little bit. Did you see that? Let's see. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it looks more favorable now. It's not tilted. Yeah, it's not in that really weird configuration yeah. that it had for about 30 minutes. Yeah. It looked really weird. Okay, so shear rate. Sh show that to me one more time. Is it back where it should be? Here, I'll stop the laps. There you go. No, it's not, is it? It hasn't really caught up. Mm -mm. Okay, nothing on velocity. And nothing really tight, yeah, as uh -uh. far as okay. spinning in the low levels. All right. Well, I'm looking at Jeremy's shot, and uh, it's weakening for sure. Radar-wise, it's still severe, still has a tornado warning on it, but there is nothing right now that is screaming a tornado. There is just, there's not. It's a, it's a severe storm, and you're going to have, remember, hail sizes will vary. The radar is showing maybe nickels and dimes and quarters. You still might have some golf balls that have been up in the 10, 20, 30,000, 40,000 foot level for an hour and a half, and finally they're going to fall back down. But uh, what goes up must come down, and that is no lie. So... We'll see, but uh, nickels and dimes and quarters for sure out of that. Okay, storm track, let's go to Lynx 4. And this is on the whole line, sliding southeast, Ninacaw 709, Little Axe 710, 
Uh, Twin Lakes, 714. Purcell, 716. Payne, 722. Shawnee, 726. Tecumseh, 727. And Rosedale at about 733. Earlsboro, Earlsboro, 736. Maysville, 736 as well. Okay, still going on. More, East Moore, southeast sides of Oklahoma City, other severe storms in Lincoln County. And uh, control room, I think we have the video from earlier today of the uh, tornadoes as we had these live on News 9. Let's go ahead and re-rack that. And when you get it, hit it, and uh, we'll just go. And uh, we had our, uh, own, our own News 9 tornado warning. And uh, this thing was spinning. It was spinning faster and faster and faster. Jim was on it. Uh, we had uh, trackers on it on the ground. And uh, wow, look at that shot there from uh, Andrew. Hey, Andrew, when you get that shot done, let me know when you get that all written up. The yeah. The baseball. Uh, you can take it. Oh, you can okay. Think you can take it. All right. Uh, Links two. But uh, let's go to Links 2, control room. Wow. There you go. There's a problem. There's a problem. And uh, that's Chickasha. So there you go. Now, that was, that was from the supercell. That was a big storm that went through earlier. Yes, earlier this afternoon. Yeah. Did not produce a tornado, but it produced. Yeah, he kind of funnel at one point. Yeah, yeah, he did. So. That's the updraft yeah. you've been seeing in Jim's shots. Yeah, for... was was cranking that out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised there's something you know maybe a little a little bit bit a little bit bigger than that. All right, let's go to uh, the video from earlier today, and the whole thing began with that. This was a. News 9, exclusive News 9, tornado warning, right? We issue our own warnings, and for good reason. That's what was going on, and we did not hesitate. We actually issued it before this by about 10 minutes, and then it did this, tornado on the ground. Obviously, it's a, what we call an elephant trunk tornado, fairly thin rope tornado on the ground, moving from left to right. See some sunshine back in here, and a tiny little, tiny little vortice on the ground. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. It was hard to see, so that was the first vortex. And that we had kind of what we call a vortex breakdown, is that this spins off the main and it just kind of falls apart. And then we cycle this through again. It tightens up. Remember, it's getting tighter from here up. From the ground up, it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And as it gets faster, the pressure is lower. And then you start to see the condensate. Look at that shot. And that is not sped up. That is not sped up. That is in real time. Watch the tornado there on the ground, right there. There it is spinning. Tornado on the ground, luckily, in a uh, complete rural area, right? And look at there. Look at the vortice there. Hang on. Here we go. Somebody driving down that dirt road. Is there somebody over there? You see him down right in you know, the middle of the shot. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a storm tracker. Yeah, so there it goes. So that was another spin up we had, a little vortice -y. Little sub vortice on the back side, right there. See that? The main's up here. So you have a vortice there, one there, and then uh, that was it. But uh, it was, it was, look at the wall cloud on this thing at the time. So small, weak, brief tornadoes, but still tornadoes. Okay? And there's a wall cloud spinning, spinning, spinning. And that storm is now long gone. It was eaten up by the line, but that went on for a good 45 minutes or so. Okay, let's go back to. Uh, the Etowah storm, and uh, it's getting stronger, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's come up a little bit in intensity. The lightning with it has come up, and I'll show you reflectivity. It definitely looks more yeah. like a classic supercell again. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so Jeremy's busting east. Um, okay, let's go to Jeremy now. Tornado warning continues from Macomb up through south of Tecumseh. Okay, let's go to, let's go to Jeremy here and get an update and uh, find out what's going on with him. Jeremy, this storm is intensifying. As you make your way closer to it, as you come in there, you're kind of on the back side looking right at it, and your visibilities are still good. If we have Jeremy, let's get an update from him. All righty, yeah. David, I can see the completely underneath the base of this cell, and it's still relatively high, but I can see it's also come up on radar, and it, it hasn't made a lot of the efforts to, to transform it into a tornado or nothing like that, but we're going to keep following this and pay close attention. Back to you, back to you David. Okay. All right, great job, Jeremy. We'll stay up with it here. Keep going with it because it is intensifying, and the low-level winds are such that you know we can start to we can start to crank this thing back up just a bit. It has weakened, but now it's intensifying. Yeah, it's still ahead of the line. The line will yes. probably catch it eventually, but it has not yeah. done that yet. And it is not contaminated by cool air. It's not contaminated by any other storms. 
a, a lonely storm is a dangerous storm, and that is a lonely storm. All right, let's go to Jim Gardner now and look at Jim's shot from the air. And he is back at it. And uh, wow, look at that. That's what's coming through the South Metro. That's what's been moving through Oklahoma City, down to Chickasha. That's what's going into Purcell. Jim is right there. And uh, look at the gust front on that. Winds are going to be 50 to 60. Jim, give us an update on what you're seeing now. Go ahead. Well, that's right, David. We are just right over the top of Purcell. This is what's moving into Purcell right now on the northwest edge, and it's a huge gust front, David. Huge gust front. There's going to be heavy winds with this. There's a lot of cloud to ground lightning and rain and hail behind this as it moves through. There's Purcell right there in the lower part of your screen and that gust front. Now, if we turn around here real quick, David, and go to the right all the way out to where Jeremy is, we got the back side of that storm that he's on. Let's keep going, Rich. Go all, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's all over there towards you. Keep going. Keep going. Well, well you passed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, right in there, and that's the leading edge of the, the back side of that storm that Jeremy's on that you were talking about. Let's go back to the left a little more. And you can see it right in there, David. So we're kind of in behind that one, and we're in the front of this one, and we'll just keep tracking them to the northeast. We'll keep, keep you updated. Jim Garpro in live for Bob Mills. Got his nine back to you. All right, great job there, Jim. So Jim is really covering both storms. Uh, like he's been doing all day today. So this is the main line, which is moving through the South Metro, down to Chickasha, and uh, that is what's moving through right now. And Jim's up in the air, he's about 1,000 feet up, and that deck's right about there. So this is a big gust front, nothing tornadic in here. Okay, let's go back to Link 3, and we'll check back in with Jim coming up. Uh, once again, Jeremy coming in from the Southwest, there's the hook, getting more pronounced. Yeah, it's, it's almost trying to lunge. It looks like it's trying to stay just ahead yeah. of that line. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fighting for its life right now, and mm -hmm. it knows it. It's, it's definitely moving off to the east. Uh, hey, Justin, is Jeremy stationary? Is he moving? He was heading west, or he's east. Yeah, I know. I don't see a shot. I mean, I see a shot. Check. He's not stationary, right? Well, last time I talked to him, he was not. He was heading east. Yeah, okay. we're starting and to Tom see. has some flooding there in Norman. All right, Just we'll go back. You know. Okay. All right, make sure Jeremy's still moving if he's not. Yeah, we're definitely uh, starting to get inflow now, so starting to see some towards the radar just yeah. to the east of Etowah. Yeah. So, and uh, Justin, what's Val doing? Okay. All right, GPS is not updating. Okay. Um, Both of them are in bad salt areas, so. Yeah. Okay, so that there's where Jeremy is. He's making his way east. He's going to come in, and so is Val on the back side of this. All right, so a little bit of yeah, a little bit of velocity here beginning to kind of show up right in here. What is what is sheer? What okay, that's uh, SR SRB. That's, what's, yeah, what's here's base? base. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay. same. I mean, same area. <clears throat> All right. What's sheer rate look like? Does it still have it? Very weak, but it's just now showing back up. Yeah. Okay, so that is a problem. Uh, the tornado warning has been allowed to expire, but here's the deal. The storm is ramping back up, so if it gets any stronger, we'll have to issue another tornado warning on this thing because it is definitely getting stronger right now. We'll see. It might, it might get a little stronger, then peak out, and then we'll bring it back down, but it's going to be eaten by that line. Okay, let's go to Tom. Let's go to Tom Pastrano. He's down in the Norman area, a little bit of flooding going on. And uh, Tom, lots of wind down there. Not crazy, crazy right now, but you've had some pretty good gusts and uh, some flooding as well. Yeah, David, you know, the, the winds have come down a lot. You know, they're probably now 10, 20. But now we're having to worry about the rain. A lot of the ditches are full. Uh, I've seen several areas where the water was going over the curb. And the, the siren, I think, is stuck in South Norman. I'm on Constitution, and the sirens are going off. So I don't see any threat for that, but back to you. All right, great job there, Tom. So Tom's down in Norman and a little bit of some localized flooding. Let's go to Hank, find out what he's in the middle of here. He, now he's in the South Metro, along with this leading line of uh, severe storms here, Southwest Metro, if you will, down here at Chickasha. And uh, Hank, what's going on? Have you, have you had any hail here in the last 10 minutes or so? Yeah, David, I'm going to show you something. I've had some quarter-sized hail here on the west side of Chickasha, but people do not block the highway. People have pulled over for dime and quarter size hell and have Highway 62 blocked where people can't even get through. So if this was a tornadic circulation, this could be a deadly mistake. So just something not to do. It's quarter size hell. 
But uh, anyway, we're going to drop south here in Chickasaw uh, to try to hit this bigger Elkhor. Uh, this is the biggest I've seen so far here in the last 10 minutes. It's just been quarter size hail in Chickasaw, David. Back to you. And uh, also, it's against the law. You cannot just just decide you're going to take a cat nap and protect your car, protect uh, about six cars, and let everybody else just get hammered behind you because you're blocking. It is illegal, and you're breaking the law, and yeah. And so you can't do it. Not a good idea. And it, like King said, it's dangerous, right? There are times where if you are caught in a vehicle and or a big hailstorm, you, you need to get out of the way. You need to keep moving not a sitting duck sometimes, right? And when you block up an interstate, uh, from there, gosh knows, back behind you is going to be blocked and becomes a parking lot and a tornado is going to go ripping through or a big hailstorm. So, you know, it's just, you know, part of being in Oklahoma. And I'll tell you what, the whole thing started. It was April 26, 1991, the Andover tornado. Uh, it was a big, bad tornado. It was our big outbreak day two in April 26. And the Andover famous video where they stopped and got up underneath the bridge and it just, anyway... Worst piece of video ever because it just made people think, oh, we can just block an interstate. That's dumb. It's crazy. All right, so um, that is Hank and Patty's shot there. And again, that's lots of rain. Okay, let's go back to Link Street and look at the hail size here. Just coming into Chickasha, quarters and golf balls. Big hail he here. He is reporting golf balls now. Who is Hank? Hank is. All right, let's go back to Hank. Then the radar confirms it. Let's go back to Hank. And there you go. Hank, how big's the hail now? East side of Chickasha. Yeah, David, uh, we're headed, we're in between the two chicken pegs on the turnpike, and we're taking mostly quarters, but we have taken a few golf balls. As you can see, you're seeing the same thing I am out of the camera. can't really see it. I'm going off of what I'm hearing, and, you know, I don't know what it is. Patty is the master. They always hit the windshield right in front of Patty, so she'll confirm it's a golf ball. <laughs> uh, but you've not cracked the windshield, right? No cracking? We have not cracked a windshield. This is a new truck, and I vowed to Justin I was not going to break a windshield this year. So give me about 10 minutes, and we'll see if that happens or not. <laughs> oh, it's still the 1st of May, and he's vowed he's not going to break a windshield this year. Okay. All right. Oh, that yeah. would be a record. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Tom was talking about the siren sounding in Norman and was talking about, you know, any circular. There's, there's nothing there. So they started sounding the sirens again in Norman. We keep seeing a lot of that from folks in Norman on social media. Um, the tornado threat is yeah. now to the, to the southeast, well yeah. to the southeast. Right. So not sure what's going on there well, with siren yeah. sounding. but You know what? Every, every city has their own thing, and sometimes cities will just blow it or let them go for a severe storm. Maybe it was for the severe I mean, part. I'm not sure, but I, I'm with you. It's it's you know at this point it's an hour late and a dollar short. The storm's already through in southeast, but every every city um, it's kind of at the county you I know mean, emergency managers and all that to when they want to make a call on that. And so it, it might be intentional, just saying hey we've got a big storm in here, but but people are like normally think okay we have a tornado, which we don't in Moore or in Norman. There's none of that going on. But we do have a big storm in Chickasha. Chickasha is getting hammered right now. That's on Highway 81 right there. There's a car dealership going on there. Okay, let's go back to radar, Links 3. Then we'll do a storm track on four of the whole line. And uh, the line now running from Etowah back down to Purcell. That's where Brandon is. And a great shot from Brandon. And then back down to Ellick. And then from there, south of uh, Ninicol. Let's go a little farther west. Okay. I just want to see what's how far. Okay, yeah, just moving through Surreal back down to Elgin, and it's much weaker down here, but it is still severe. I say that, let's switch radars here, okay. what's it look like? Yeah, the hill core is more impressive when you look at there our you Frederick. Go. Oh yeah, boom, that is big time. Okay, that's gonna be, golly, that's at least quarters and golf balls, at least golf balls. All right, what's, what, what's the hill size look out of Frederick out of this? All right, so if you turn that on, there it's you go. saying tennis balls, yeah. it's a little. A little hot. A little high, but. We know we've got, we know we've got golf balls. Yeah. Patty confirms. Okay, so, yes, she did on her side of the car. Okay, so golf ball size hail, right? I long, I-44, right? If you're traveling down here right now, boy, that's a bad idea. Somebody, you're, yeah, that's what Hank's in, it's a mess. Okay, so there's Hank's shot. I see the hail in his shot. And uh, it, this is headed down towards, get ready, Rush Springs, Lindsay, uh, Bailey, Purdy, down to Maysville, and over through Wayne and Payne. Let's go to Brandon Pennell. 
He's right here looking back to the north at that line of severe storms now. Let's go to Brandon and bring him in and get an update from Brandon. And uh, there's his shot. Brandon, what do you think? Squall line there sliding southeast at about 25. Go ahead. Yeah, David, that's right. We're just on the uh, west side of Purcell looking back to the north. Uh, this front is just now getting to us. Um, we had hardly any winds for probably the last 10 minutes, and now we've got north winds probably 20 to 25 um, as this line approaches. It, it looks a lot meaner than what it actually is, I believe. I mean, we were in it in Norman up there at Highway 9 and had some you know, pretty strong rain or heavy rain and 40, maybe 50 mile an hour winds for 15 or 20 seconds. But other than that, extremely heavy rainfall, which is really good right now. Back to you. All right. Great job there, Brandon. So he's still on the leading edge on the front gust front of this line as it moves south. Let's go back up to Jim Gardner. Let's go from the ground back up in the air, get an update from Jim. And uh, there it is. There's a gust front now down near Lexington. Got winds in here, gonna range from 50 to 60 miles per hour Go to your left. Go with to your that right. line. Right. Jim Gardner, we have your shot. You are hot. Go ahead, Jim Gardner. Well, that's right. Uh, you still see Purcell right there at the bottom of your picture there, David, as we're flying to the east now, following this gust front along. It's got kind of ragged, David, but as we go back, uh, keep pining to the right there, you're gonna see the, the leading edge of this gust front here out there. So that's where Lexington is right there. There you see the leading edge of the gust front. I noticed one thing, David, back inside this thing, back up towards uh, Norman, and there's Purcell, and back up in there, boy, the lightning has really intensified. You just watch it just light up here. It is really intensified. The rain is really intensified. So, again, we'll just keep tracking it, uh, David. Keep you updated. Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills. Cutters 9, back to you. All right, great job there, Jim, from the air, and uh, what a day Jim has had. Caught the first tornadoes of the day. Again, earlier today, yeah, it was we had a live right here at News 9. We're showing you that video, and... Uh, uh, luckily, that was in a rural area, right, with that tornado. Now, we did have some tornado damage south of Ripley with a tornado there. And uh, we know we have confirmed damage there. We have crews in route to that area. So the gust front looks like this. It's right here. Leading edge of the wind is going to be running from north of Rush Springs down to Purcell over to where Jeremy is. Jeremy's still tracking this lonely supercell, which is now trying to get into the line. But tornado warning. Uh, no longer in effect of that storm, but it is still spinning. It's going to spin all the way till it's gone. It'll keep spinning and spinning and spinning. That's going to go south of Shawnee, the storm will. You might get a little rain out of that, and then you're going to get the big line coming in behind the west. So, guys, severe weather continues. No tornado warnings in effect for our viewing area right now, but these are strong and severe storms, and they're slowly, not that fast, moving off to the southeast. But the rain, we picked up an additional one to two inches here the last couple of hours. I know you guys have more. We sure do, David. Of course, we're tracking and we're calling around to make sure there's not any major damage to let you know. But we want to take you out live right now. This is in the Yukon area, just north of uh, Route 66 on Piedmont Road. And you can see some ranchers trying to help their livestock. Yeah, we have our photojournalist Mauricio out there right now. We, we sent him out there because uh, there are a bunch of down power lines around this. But this is what he saw here now. Uh, they're just trying to get this, this cow out of the rainwater here. Uh, out of the flooding here, and they and they, they're, they're doing all they can with, with the ATV, and people are pushing on this cow, and it doesn't want to budge. No, but you can see just how high the water is. Yeah. So, so it looks like they're going to be okay, but they are trying to get uh, their cattle to higher ground. Just to give you a better idea of where this is, it's just south of Wagner Road. If you know where the Ranchwood Park soccer fields are, if you have kids who play in that area, it's right around there. That's where um, a lot of the water is ponding. Also, Mauricio, our photographer, if you can, if you can hear us, if you can pan out and over, we want to show folks what else is out there because uh, we originally got reports of down power lines in that area. Yeah, and, and here it is right here. You can see that. Just God, look at all that water right now. But those are those down power lines right now. And we just checked with uh, OG&E's system watch. And it was right around 10,000 people. So that's changed a little bit. Yeah, 10,345 customers uh, without power right now. Is, uh, uh as the cleanup continues, do you just pop on us? No, one you're exactly right. I was just going to give a little bit more specific information. Just about 400 of those in the Yukon area, majority in Oklahoma City, with 5,500 yeah. customers without power right now. That's OG&E. But again, if we can pan one more time before we toss back over to David, we'll show you uh, what they're doing right now. Uh, this rancher in the area of P Piedmont Road near Wagner, as they are trying to get their their cattle. 
Uh, it looks like just one cow right now out of the high water and up to higher ground. And, and you get an idea when we're looking at Jim's shot, how dark it is out there. And now here's what it looks like behind the storm. The, the sun's still out and uh, people are cleaning up. But that uh, that water hopefully will go down soon. But yeah, a whole lot of rainwater, David. Yeah, oh yeah. Guys, exactly right. And here's the deal: we were, rain rates were like two to three inches per hour, so it was really, really coming down. And uh, I hope uh, uh, the the lab's going to come in and help out now. <laughs> there comes the lab. I got it. Been here before, Billy. Coming in to help you. Uh, yeah. Wonder why. Wonder what's going on. Wonder why it won't get up and just walk. I think it's so muddy. It looks like it's just so muddy. His legs are virtually stuck yeah. Yeah. in the muck. Cause his his boots are getting stuck standing there. His, yeah. yeah. That's a big old guy there. He can pick that thing up. They're doing what they can, that's yeah. for sure. Look at her, she's she's rubbing on it like it's a pet. Probably is. Anyway, all right, well, uh, too much water. Too much water, too fast. These waters, the next couple of hours, uh, a lot of this is gonna go down. Now, out in that area, out near Yukon, in the flats, or the, uh, that area floods a lot. It holds a lot of water. It's very flat out there, north of the river. So this happens quite often. It There's rainfall estimates if you want those on links one. Right. This goes back to the morning storms mm -hmm. because the west side of the metro had more rain than, yes. than the east sides, and then you combine it. So there were some areas that had over four inches of rain. Yeah, two to three to, to four inches, pockets of four out here going on. So that was certainly some, some heavy, heavy rain. That's why we have some localized flooding here and there. Uh, let's go to links four. Con uh, excuse me, links two. Links two control room. Look at this shot. Um, there's how you go get a hailstone. You put a helmet on your child. And you, you send, send them, them outside. Out. Good job, Ashley. Good job, Ashley. No big deal. We love you. But go get Daddy a big hailstone out in the backyard. That's what's going on. Look at the size of that. Yeah. Yeah, she's out there. I got it. Yeah, that is a uh, larger, that's larger than a baseball, folks. And that is, again, from Chickasha. So Grady County having a devastating hailstorm. And little Ashley Perryman looking right at it with her helmet on. And uh, surely they didn't make her go out and catch it, right, when it was falling. So big, big hail. Big hail down there. I'm kidding. It's all good. All right, let's get back to it now. Let's go to Hank. Hank has flooding in Chickasha. And this is an area that floods, too. Go ahead, Hank. Give us an update on Highway 81. Yeah, David, this is uh, just south of the South Chickasha Eck at 81 South. And you can see there's a car stalled out there. This gentleman in the white truck is pushing them out. Um, and there's been a two or three cars stuck here. Somebody tried to jump this median right here in front of us on this service road, and when they did, that water went up over their hood. So it's a good three foot deep here, just on the south edge of Chickasha on Highway 81, causing travel problems. All right, let me talk to him. Give me a second. While you're doing that, we got a report of damage too. So I know this is in Chickasha, and we had the heavy rain with the supercell that first came through Chickasha earlier this afternoon. Now the line is moving in as the cold front's rushing in. But also, when we had the supercell that developed down near Apache, we have reports of a mobile home that's actually upside down, one mile northeast of Surreal. Uh, a brick home with roof damage there, and getting reports of several outbuildings with damage. And that would be with the supercell that formed near. Apache made its way up towards Surreal and eventually up towards Chickasha. So this is Chickasha's second round of heavy rain. That's why you're seeing um, the shots like you're seeing. Ooh, Tom and Rob there in the Norman area. Can we talk to Tom? Tom, I know you're there in Norman where it floods easily, but that's the site that we, we were afraid we'd see. Give us an update. We're getting Tom's but audio. There we go. Where the water goes up pretty high. You know, we came up through here about 15 minutes ago, and it wasn't nearly this high, and just all of a sudden, all the water collected. So I have quite a few cars that are contemplating on coming through. If you have made it, I'm really surprised this water is going over their hood. Here comes another couple of trying to. And we, we cut off the beginning. Tom, high. you said you're at Elm, and what's your other cross street? Elm and Lindsay. Elm and, okay, so right there at campus. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's the site just right there on that one side. You get further to the uh, west down Lindsay, there are so many low spots that do this this very thing, but that's right at the heart by the dorms on the south side of campus. Okay, here's the south deal on Oval. this, though. This is why this is so crazy. It looks like a lake. Why are you... Why? Yeah. I mean, seriously. There, there's... I mean, look, and it's like it's like one square block. You can, right. you can drive around it. There's a million ways to get around it. Nope. Oh, get out of the way. The Jeep's coming. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, they're going to, you know, 
Anyway, I, I don't understand the attraction to drive into water over a road. Can somebody explain it to me? Nobody can? Mark, I'm not asking you. <laughs> you don't know. You can't even drive a bicycle. What are you talking about? All right, so this is Norman right now. And again, lots of, you know, the, Norman floods a lot. Uh, it, it does, but uh, yeah, not good. So th there you go. That guy's in a big truck and he's turning around. But the Nissan Sentra that's three inches off the ground is, I got it. So, no, no, you oh. don't have it. And then somebody like this comes through, right? There's Paddles. your sophomore Paddles. down at OU. He's driving through and he's pushing water back up. It comes up underneath your engine and stalls you out because these guys are driving through it. So anyway, don't drive through water. So many ways to get around it. And if this were flowing fast and like it does a lot in Oklahoma, you can you know, lose your life, you can die. And water is so dangerous and so strong. You just don't want to do it. Tom, what do you think? The water's still rising or is it beginning to drop off just a bit? Yeah, it's, it's rising slightly, but you know, the, the rain's coming to an end, so it should recede yes. pretty quick like it usually does. But I would stay off the roads in Norman here for at least the next 30, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Back to you. Okay, all right, well, there we go. So yeah, if you're traveling in Norman, do not drive into water, right? Don't do it. Turn around, don't drown. Don't be that guy or that guy or whatever. Just go around it. So many other ways to do it. Okay, let's go back to uh, radar here. And here's our line running now from Elgin. It's all severe all the way up towards Tulsa. And everything, again, sliding off to the east-southeast down towards Purcell. And a Seminole's coming your way. The whole line is severe. Oklahoma City now. It is now leaving the metro pushing down to the south. We have Jim up. He's looking at it. We have um, trackers still running from, gosh, Creek County through Lincoln County over to Pottawatomie County. Let's go ahead and zoom on into the Shawnee area. Okay. Talk about our friends in Shawnee. It looks like that supercell is finally merging with the wow. main. Folks, that has been alive. It started near Apache, and that was the damage I was telling you about. The reports from Surreal, yeah. mobile home upside down, a roof, a brick home with a roof off, yeah. multiple outbuildings damaged, okay. and that was with that supercell. Okay. Much earlier. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and that was the original storm that took off. It's now being eaten by the storm to the west. It slowed down some. Let's go to Val and get an update from Val. And uh, Val, it is still spinning. It's not like what it was, but uh, it is still rotating there. And uh, it's, it's going right into and on top of Tecumseh right now, going to Earlsboro, then going to Little, making its way off to the east northeast. But you're still on that supercell. Go ahead, give us an update. Well, so, David, we just had a little bit of nickel-sized hail, and we are right now underneath the core of that original uh, LP supercell. And so I know it's merging with the line, but we did see, look into the north, uh, how the line kind of curls back to the north. We did see a, a few things that looked interesting uh, with that, you know, kind of a lowered areas there right along the leading edge of it. Uh, but I don't think it's really anything significant yet, uh, but we're just going to keep an eye on it. We're going to keep following this thing as long. Okay. All right. Great job, Val. So Val still on that rotating thunderstorm, even though it, uh, it's no longer tornado warned. Uh, it is still turning, though, all right? So we've got to keep an eye on it. We'll watch it till it spins down and until it's completely gone. Okay, uh, Andrew, bring up that picture you had just a second ago on links two of uh, the big hail. And the, uh, there's one. Let's go to links two. So there it is uh, down near Chickasha. And then what was the other picture? It had a tape measure in it, it looked like, with a bunch of hailstones. All right, that's pretty serious. That'll kill you. Moving at 90 miles an hour. Yeah. You're out in the backyard hanging out. That's why we say it's, you know, uh, hail's not that big a deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a big deal. Not only will it damage your car, but the spikes on that, that is, that's hard hail. It's white, it's milky color, it's, it, it's hard. And it's that color because it froze hard and fast. So here's the deal, that will hurt if that hits you in the head, okay? And that can kill you. These stones are moving anywhere from 80 to 90 to, you know, Close to 100 miles per hour sometimes. It's a fastball from a, you know, professional baseball player. That's why you do not want to mess with this when this big hail is, is coming down. So we have the hail. We have, yes, Norman and some flooding going on down here with folks continuing to drive through water. All right. Let's go back to it on Lynx 3, and then we'll do another storm track. Line of severe storms, 
running from north of Rush Springs to Lindsay to Payne up to and now coming into Tecumseh and Shawnee. The whole line is severe. Pretty big stout squall line here sliding southeast. There's Brandon. There's Jim. And uh, Jim shots a little on the dark side. We'll get it. There it is right there. I see it. Okay, so Brandon and uh, Jim are here together. And uh, Jim's flying back to the west down towards Lindsay. Let's go ahead and bring Jim back in. And uh, let's bring Jim shot in here and get an update from him and Jim Gardner. And uh, if he can hear us, I don't hear him like I normally do, but I see his shot. Yeah, David, you there? Yeah. I have you, Jim. If you yeah. can hear me, go ahead. No, we're I'd... just flying back down to, to the west here, following this line. Let me tell you, this, this is still a very severe, long line of thunderstorms, David. There's a tremendous amount of rain and hail in this and a lot of cloud to ground lightning. So it's still, it's still got the potential to create a lot of damage as this storm moves to the east and the northeast here. But uh, right now, we'll just keep you updated as we move along here. If we you find anything new, we'll let you know. Jim Garpoint live from Bob Mills. Scotty's 9, back to you. All right, great job there, Jim. So Jim is scanning the line he's running from. He's gone from uh, basically uh, Byers and then down towards Lindsay, and he'll make his way down towards Rush Springs looking for any damaging winds or damage that comes out of this line but that's what it looks like big gust front ugly ominous looks like you know a wall cloud you might think oh man this is bad i live in maysville or paul's valley no threat of a tornado right now with this okay this is all just a wind threat with some pretty good sized hailstones in here let's go back to links four and let's switch gears here on the links four doing a storm track and we're looking at rosedale 741 how about St. Louis, 743, Bailey, 745, Bow Lake, 747, Byers, 751, Marlowe, 753, Conawa, 758, Stratford, 8 o'clock, and Elmore City, 807. Okay, so the whole line sliding southeast. Okay, now let's go back to Links 3. And the hail size is in here, nickels, dimes, nickels and dimes uh, in the green, quarters in the yellow. And we're still getting some, gosh, up to golf ball. Uh, up near and just east of Lake Thunderbird. And then from there, hail, look at the, look at the, there's your hail core right there. That's big hail, that's quarters and golf balls. Yeah, and that's gonna make its way, its, its way east towards Macomb, okay? And then from there over, over to Mod. So still a very strong and severe storm. Look at that shot there from Jim, wow. It's impressive. And then look at the rotation, David, now that's crossed 177. Right that's there. that original supercell. It was getting ate up by the line, but watch how the hook forms just to the east. Okay, let's go back to Val. And uh, let's bring Val back in here. Hey, Val Caster, um, new hook, new hook developing about seven miles to your southwest. Give me an update. Well, you know, David, we just now turned and looked to the south, and what you're looking at right there is the base of that storm. It's become visible to us. We got out of the rain. And we started looking to the south, and you can see it. So what we've done here is we've turned south, headed towards uh, Harjo and Maud and those areas right here. And that's what it looks like. It's probably, like you said, maybe five miles or so south of us, and we're going to drive right up under it. And look at it. Back to you, David. So Val is still on the rotating thunderstorm. Look at the plates on it. Still a supercell, still rotating. And again, the circulation is beginning to increase just a bit. And this is what we talk about when you have uh, a supercell. And the reason it's called that because these will last hours and hours and travel counties and counties. They can travel up to hundreds of miles some days. This one, we can go back and measure, but uh, how many counties have we gone through? Started at Elgin, so it's, you know, looking at four counties. Four counties of this one storm alive. Okay, so yeah, there's a lowering. Let's go back to Val now. Let's bring Val back in here. Look at the hook now. All right, let's go back to Lynx 3 before we do that. Let's go back to Lynx 3. Look at the hook now, southwest of Val. He's in Earlsboro. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's go back to Val Caster. Val, that, that hook now, five miles to your southwest. There it is, and it is getting stronger, Val. It is definitely getting stronger. Go ahead. Well, David, there's a whole lot of trees on this road right here in this area. Um, we're going to come into a clearing. You'll be able to see it. But a while ago, we broke free, and there is a lowering with it, David, a pretty good size lowering from what we can see. That's the very front of the base there. But all right, so here we've got what might be a clearing. Okay, there you go. There is a lowering right in the middle. She's going to pull the camera over. There you go. 
Yeah, there it is. Right there. Boy, that, wow, that, that has changed. Going. Huh? What'd you say, Lace? That storm has been that, going for so long, and it's... Yeah, it's, it's ramping back up. Val, the, it's, it's get, Val, here's the deal. I'll tell you, hey, Val, you need to get south. Val, you need to get... That's, the way, that's what we're doing. Okay, because it's... tornado warning coming. Yeah, it's turning, yes, it's turning right. New tornado warning now. This is a News 9 tornado warning. Uh, it's going to go south. Tornado warning. It's going to go south of Earlsboro. All right, so Val, yeah, keep going south. Uh, yeah, you're going to be in a great spot. And remember, Val, your, your roads east of there are not good. So remember that. You're, you gotta, you got to get back over towards Seminole and through there at some point. So make sure... Uh, you, you got your roads figured out. I'm just looking at radar right here. The roads, they, they don't all go through. And I, I just don't want you to get over there and, and uh, you get stuck. Okay, so that's his shot. There's a the mesocyclone. Let's go to Link 3. Tornado warning now. Tornado warning for southeastern or really far eastern, east central, Pottawatomie County. Here's where it is. The tornado is going to be right, right here. And it's going to cross... Uh, just south of Val. Actually, Val's, he can probably go back to 270. Justin, on Val, are you going to, Justin? Have, I would, he, he can go all the way down to Maud and then go east on Maud and then go northeast on 59 there on yeah, the other side of the river. Yeah, but how far, oh, hang on a second, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't want him to get out of pocket and I don't want him going all the way down there. How far is that? Here, let's back out of this just a second. How far would he have to go? And then back down and over. Okay, it's not, it's not the best. He has four miles. He's south of what the GPS is saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. All right, let's go back to Val's shot again. Tornado warning. Let's go back to Val. And uh, Val, there it is. It continues to ramp up. Circulation getting stronger. New tornado warning now in effect for that storm. This is going to be south and east of Tecumseh. You folks in Tecumseh, you just got some hail. You've got some wind. But the tornado threat is to your southeast about four miles, five miles south of Tecumseh. It's going to go south of Earlsboro, or very close to Earlsboro, and then over towards Pleasant Grove, and then from there over towards Seminole. Val, I know you're in the, you're in the uh, jungles of eastern we Oklahoma. Just lost him. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Val. Give us an update as you come out we of the trees there. We lost his audio. We lost him? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's crossing the uh, Little River, I believe it's called there, um, little har area of Harjo. There he goes, just updated. Okay. Going south on Highway 9A. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see him. All right. So, uh, tornado warning. Again, this is going to be, uh, there's Tecumseh. This is in eastern Pottawatomie County, right? Seminole is, uh, excuse me, Shawnee's up here. Mm -hmm. Seminole is right here. So, you folks in Seminole, be thinking about where to go. Lowest level, safe spot, center part of the house, lowest level, first floor. If you have a storm shelter, knock yourself out. You're good. Get it. But if you don't, okay. Lowest level, center part of the house. And if you live in a mobile home and uh, this is going to come at you, and we'll do a storm track on that, you've got to go to your, you got to go to a safe spot. Okay? You, you got to get out of a mobile home. Uh, damaging winds will flip a mobile home and certainly a, a tornado will very, very easily. There's the hook. Now becoming more pronounced. Tornado warning now. Val's right there. Let's get an update. Do we have Val back in here? It's interesting. That's the leading edge. The, the line of storms caught up to it and actually gave it that, that shove is what happened. And it started getting kind of lunging out a little bit further. It did. Yeah. Do you see that on Lakes 3? Yeah. That's what I'm, yeah. That's what I'm watching. Boom. Look at that. Man, it's spinning too. So he's to the south looking off to the north. Okay. And so this is the same mesocyclone that we've been showing you for the last three hours. It started four at 4.30. 4.30. Yeah. Really? Gosh. Okay, 4.30, and it's still alive. This main line comes into it, and instead of eating it, which it will, it will end up winning and eating it alive, um, it is still, though, able to, to ramp up. Low-level jet, though, is also hanging on and kicking in, too. Okay, so let's, uh, do we have, let's take Val's shot. If we don't have him, let's at least take his shot. And, oh, hang on a second here. Look at the motion on this. This is being pulled into it. Let me, t let me tell you what's going on. All right, little tiny cigar cloud here coming out of the rain. This is pulling into it. Circulation is going to be just to his north. Another feeder band here coming in from the east. Coming in from the east. That's coming into it. This is funneling into it. The circulation is going to be right in here. It's going to be right here. It's right where he's looking. So, okay. 
Tornado warning now. Um, and it's going to be south of Harjo and right over Coleman, basically Coleman Road, which becomes East Road 1260. And Harjo is the name of the small community down here in eastern Pottawatomie County. Uh, 10 miles till Seminole. Yep. You got Val? All right, let's go to Val. Val, we have your shot. You're up. You're hot. You're go. Go. All right, so the rotation is just east of us here. East. Just east of us here. It looks like it's really wrapped up. We are in such area. Yeah. There is a road. There's a... Okay. Well, we've lost him again. So coverage is not good over there. All right. It is not good at all. And his shot keeps freezing up. All right. Let's go back to radar here. Let's go back to links four. And then we'll do a storm track on this. And again, uh, moving east now. It is east of the highway. Mm -hmm. So... Harjo's pretty much out of it, uh, but Seminole 806, okay? 806 and Seminole. Bow legs, you're probably going to be out of it as well. It's probably going to go, go to your north, but we, get, we have you in there just for good measure, just to keep an eye on it. But bow legs at 807, so about the same. We woke up, 827. We woke as you know, right here, and uh, the hook is right here. This is this is where the dangerous part of the storm is, where the tornado would be. By the way. This is going to be quarters and golf balls up here. Quarters, golf ball size hail up here, all right? Right up here, running from Tecumseh down Highway 270. But if you live in eastern Pottawatomie County and the northern or central, really, Seminole County, the heart of the county, from Harjo to Seminole to Bow Lakes to Wewoka, it's moving almost due east now. Tornado spot in your home, wherever that is, lowest level, center part of the house, move away from the west windows. Okay, boy, it's really wrapped up, hasn't it? Look at it really, really ramp it up there. Yep, it has crossed the highway. Let's go back to Link 3. And uh, there it is. And here's where the tornado is, right? Right here. I'm going to check just correlation coefficient, just, just to yeah, check. Yeah, let's do it. It's kind of further north, I think, yeah. Okay, that's negative, but that's not a... That's not not the, where it is. Mm -mm. Okay, so it's, it's, right, it's crossing the highway right now, pretty much. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's in between Val and south of Earlsboro. It's still going to go south of Earlsboro, but not by much. And then from there, it's going over to Seminole. See, so folks in Seminole that are listening, if you know anybody that listens in Seminole, that is watching, whatever, from Seminole back to the west is where they're right there. Right there, looking right back at you. Do we have Val again? We do not. Okay. I can I, hear him. Okay, I can hear him. Let's go back to Val. Give us an update, Val. All right, so the area of David, is to our east-northeast. Uh, the road's down, down to Maud, and then we can go east and then northeast and catch it. But I tell you what, this thing is a lot more wrapped up than it was just 15 minutes ago. I mean, it is definitely rotating when it came over up, David. Okay. All right. Well, Val, uh, yeah, he's in, he's in bow, bad uh, cell coverage here. Okay. Let's get back to Link 3 now. Squall line uh, running from, let's go ahead and zoom on in down here. I'm sorry, from Elgin and, uh, okay. Hey, Storms are south of Surreal. They're building yeah. back down towards Pumpkin Center. Hey, Greg, yeah. Surreal is 100% clear. Jim said he couldn't get there, so I don't know. It's 100%. Okay. I'll talk to him. It's 100% clear. Okay. All right. Hey, Lacey, take this just for a second. Okay. So we're, that's kind of the leading edge of the, the, of the far kind of southwest edge of the storms down now south of Elgin to Sterling, back up to Rush Springs, quarter size hail, 65 mile per hour winds. You get further up towards Dibble, Ellet, Kreiner, and Purcell. That's where the hail core is a little bit larger. That's where we could have golf ball size hail coming into Purcell, Payne, Wayne, back down towards Maysville. Brandon's in Falls Valley, watching the leading edge there. The most threatening storm is the one that Val is on, which is south of Highway 9, south of Earlsboro, coming out of Pot Pottawatomie County into Seminole County, and that's why folks in Seminole, you've got to be in your safe spot now as this thing is now crossed Highway 9A. It's about to cross over into Seminole County, and you can see the hook there coming around. It's basically hugging the little river. 
I believe is what that river's called. Anyone in the area, you definitely know what that is. It just crossed Highway 9A, and it's going to be approaching Highway 59 as it makes its way into Seminole County. So um, haven't confirmed that this is on the ground, but this is that same supercell that started at 430 down near the town of Surreal and has been pushing up towards the northeast the entire time. So Val's right there. That's Val's shot that you're seeing and checking velocity. It's still spinning. I mean, it's still very much spinning and the shear rate has actually even increased more. So the rotation has increased even more from what it was as it makes its way towards the town of Seminole. Um, there's the latest update. And when you start to see shear rate get more of that S hook in it, a little bit more of a classic tornado signature is what we're seeing north of Maud. And this is right on the county line between Seminole County and Pottawatomie County. And look at that hook, David. That's one of the most pronounced hooks we've had so far today. Uh, yeah, that's about as uh, impressive as it gets right there. So Val, uh, he is right where he needs to be. He's looking right at it, and wow, boy, that is impressive. Look at that. Wow, what does shear rate look like on that now? It just came up, and it's got more of like an S shape Boom. to it. Yeah. All right, there it is. So tornado now is, if it's not on the ground, it's close to it, right? It's pretty close to being on the ground for sure, and it's going to be south and east of Earlsboro, um, between there and Seminole, all right? And it's moving east-northeast, south of Earlsboro, okay, right here. There's where the tornado is, leaving Pottawatomie County, going into Seminole County. And then from there, it's going to go to Seminole. You folks in Seminole can't say it enough. Can't, uh, can't say it enough. You've, you've got to be in your safe spot right now. You have to be in your safe spot. It is on, it, it's, it's either in, on the ground or it's very close. We can't confirm it. What's velocity data look like? Oh, yeah, wow. Wow. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Five miles southeast of uh, Earlsboro. Folks, it's going to Seminole. It is going to Seminole. So the tornado is going to be right here. Possible tornado All on the right, ground. I'm check CC again. Justin, is Val back in? Can you hear me? David, is that lined up? That's very close to being lined up, um, confirming. Let's see. All right, go back to that. You see right here when you're on the river, and then yeah, I'm going to go back. This is tucking in, taking it. Maybe it's in the weakness. Okay, yeah. it's close. It's, it's close. close. Okay, go back to shear rate. Okay. Okay, now, okay, we just updated. All right, there's shear rate. Tornado is going to be right here. This is this is where it is, right here, right here. This is folding back. It's going to be right here. All right, let's uh, let's take Val's shot. He might not be able to talk, but let's at least take his shot of what it looked like. And okay, that's what it looks like right now. Okay, well, it's yeah, boy, it's it, it's got rain wrapped around it. It's hard to see. It is, and it's five, uh, five and a half miles southwest of Seminole right now. Okay. All right, so yeah, let's go back to Links 3, and we'll do a storm track. The warning is for confirmed tornado southwest, five miles southwest of Seminole. Okay, so uh, yeah, so here's the deal. Tornado is going to be on the ground right here. That's what we were saying. It's coming out of Pottawatomie County. It's moving east, northeast towards Seminole. You folks in Seminole, it's right here. That's got to be it, Lace. It has to be. Yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah, because you can see it wobble. Watch it kind of go more of an easterly jog right at the end. Yeah. So the tornado is on the Pottawatomie, Seminole County line. There's the tornado, that little green blip. That's the tornado on the ground now. And that's going to be one, two, three. Oh, Lacey. Oh, no. Yeah, it's picking up debris now. Okay, so now we have debris in the air. Debris. This is our debris detector. Debris lofted in the air. Tornado on the ground. Doing damage now, doing damage, and it's going to Seminole, five miles southwest of town. Five, folks, you folks in Seminole, you've got about 10 minutes. You've got about 10 minutes. Go to your safe spot right now in Seminole. I can't stress it enough. Go to your safe spot in Seminole. That's the tornado. This is not just indicated by radar. Radar is indicating debris being lofted into the air. And uh, let's do a scan on that. Let's see how high the debris is on maybe Lynx 4, if we can do a cut or whatever. Let's find out how tall the debris is. If we can at some point, no big deal, but let's go. There it is, there's your hook. There's the hook. Tornado's gonna be right in here, just southwest of Seminole. Here's Seminole. Oh no, yeah. The let's go back, let's go back. Yeah, take that, take it. We're gonna take a slice out of it here. 
Okay, five miles now, still southwest of Seminole. Hey, Jen. The velocity data confirms. It's confirmed with all of our products, sure including on, debris. Jen. And that's that's worst case scenario because you know this is hitting something. So how how, how tall is the debris when you slice that in half? Can you take it? Sixty thousand. It's okay. Over sixty thousand. It's all right. It's, let's go back to let's go back to Link Street Control Room. Here's the tornado. It's the big blue eye looking right at you, and the radar is picking up everything that's basically not liquid. This isn't hail. You're looking at debris. You're looking at trees, uh, barns. Now it it's a little bit weaker now on that. But no doubt about it, that is the tornado, and it is headed towards Val Seminole. Valsi's power flash. All right, let's go to Val Castor. Let's bring Val in. Go ahead, Val. Tornado's on the ground. Go uh, ahead. I think we might have seen. We might, think we might have seen a power flash. I think we might have seen a power flash to our northeast. Uh, there's also leaves falling out of the sky. Uh, the wind right now. The wind is from the southeast. Uh, we're going northeast, and the wind is from the southeast right now. Right. Yeah. All right. That's what we're thinking. Okay. All right, Val. It's right. It's just to your north. It should be just to your okay. north. Very close to the Seminole Tag Agency. Just to our north. Just looking All in right. that area. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to Lynx Three. Let's go back to Lynx Three. Okay. Here's the tornado. Let's go to CC and see what it's doing now. Okay. All right. Here's Seminole. Are you talking? Oh, down near Pleasant Grove. There's the tornado, folks. Yeah, we're getting screaming south winds. Yeah, Val. It's it's on the ground. Val. It's a mile. It's a mile and a half to your north. Right. Val, it's it's okay. on. Val, it's on it's on uh, road uh, believe, 352, just to your north. Val, a mile okay. to your north. Tornado where, on where the ground. Look to the north. Look to the north with the camera. Okay, so, with folks, it's now here. Here's Seminole, right? One, two, three, four miles west southwest of Seminole. Tornado on the ground. There's the tornado, in the blue. There's the tornado. Right here, that is the tornado looking back at you. It's going to Seminole. It's okay. very close to the Wewoka uh, Reservoir. Folks in the area will know what that is, where that is, coming into the southwest side of town. Yeah, it's got to be right in here, right? Is there a little? Yeah, it's very there... close to where the debris is showing up. Okay, this is still debris lofted in the air. Look at, Look that. at the donut hole. Look at the donut hole. You're thinking, okay, yeah, I can see that. That's legit. The rain and the hail are wrapping around the tornado, so it's wrapped in rain. You're not going to see it. That's why Val can't see it. And Val is literally a half mile from it. That's why he cannot see it. It is wrapped in a wall of wind, rain, and hail. Tornado's right here. There's your debris ball. There's your debris ball. Okay, so it's gonna go, it's going to Seminole, unless it occludes. Val believes he's still seeing power flashes off to his northwest. All right, let's go back to Val Castor. Val, it's going into Seminole. Get ready, it's gonna go into Seminole. If it doesn't, if, if it doesn't hit Seminole, won't miss it by much. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we're turning around right here. We're seeing what looks like green power flashes to our west-northwest. Um, you might confirm if that's the direction, but I think it's on the ground back in that rain. It is. Okay, put it on, on, on dash cam right here. Okay, there's, and we've got debris on our windshield wiper, like leaf debris and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, so look at the rain over here. We've got, we've got high-speed rain curtains. Yeah. Um, just to our northwest, high-speed rain curtains. Cannot see a tornado at the moment. It's probably completely wrapped up in the rain. It is. It is completely wrapped in rain. You cannot see it. Only way you're going to see okay. it is if you... Okay. All right. So let, let's go back to the radar. We're going to go east. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Val, uh, get ready. Seminole's going to get hit. It's going into Seminole. Please. What's that? Gonna hit Seminole directly? Uh, it's it's gonna try. It's yeah. Okay, maybe yeah. in the south edge or something? No, it's gonna go right over town. It's gonna okay. go right over well, town. we're gonna go in there with it. Okay, so here's the tornado, folks. Here it is right here. There, look, look at this right here. Hey, stop the laps just okay. for a second. I just wanna, look, look at this swirl. Watch this, watch this, okay? Follow my finger. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There it is. There's the tornado, there's Seminole. Now we're getting winds. We're getting crazy wind now in Seminole. The wind is picking up at Seminole. What are the winds here, Lace? 50 to 60? Let me see. By the way, look at all the damage that uh, down near yeah. Surreal and Apache. Yeah, okay, so 58, 60. Okay, then what's this right here? What are the winds see. down here? Gonna be a little bit less. You're, you're away from the radar, but still. All right, 25, 60, 80, 90, 90 mile an hour shear. Okay, still serious. Uh, let's go to CC. Let's see what it's doing on debris. 
Okay, tornadoes right here. Uh, you're gonna have debris falling out of the sky in Seminole. You're gonna have debris out of the sky if it lifts. If it doesn't, you're gonna have your own problems with the tornado in town. It's gonna go right across Seminole. If you live north of Seminole, in Seminole, or south of Seminole, you've gotta go to your safe spot right now. If you live Seminole to the south, one mile, or in Seminole, you've gotta go to your safe spot right now. Val's coming into Seminole. Val needs to be careful. Val needs to be careful. He knows what he's doing, but he needs to be really, really careful. You guys see the damage down there? Yes. In Surreal? It's pretty major, by the way. Like, like EF1 kind of damage. Yeah, wow. Okay, so tornado's right here. Here's Seminole, here's Val. Okay, so this, again, it's crossing the highway here in about, about one minute. All right, let's go back to CC. Let's see what it looks like here. I hear Val. All right, so here it is. There's the tornado. It's right there. All right, I'm lapsing that just so you can see. The values have come down they some. Have. The circulation is slightly broadened. It has. But can't confirm that this has lifted by no. any means. No. Any luck at all, it, it's weakening. Yeah, but uh, it, it might be. Um, go to, uh, let's take a look at storm strength here. Okay. Tornado warning now. For you folks in Seminole, this is gonna be for Seminole County. Yep, yeah, boop. Yeah, it's still, still game on. Let's, let's see what it does if it updates. Okay, so let's, let's go back to Seminole here. Or Val has an update. All right, let's go to Val Castor. Val is in the south sides of Seminole. Val, go ahead. Yeah, look at our roof cam. Uh, I think we saw like the side of a cone almost. Uh, and look, that's looking northwest of us. It looked like the side of a cone. That's all we can see through the roof cam, uh, vision cam. I mean, it's kind of dark out here to see, but the night vision sees it better. Right now, we're moving north. Seminole's still north. Um, we have south winds at the moment. We got south winds, which is an abrupt change from what it was. Yep. Uh, it was west. It turned hard to the south. So that indicates to me it's still west of us or northwest of us, probably. It is, like about a half mile. It, okay, and we don't see power flashes anymore. Okay. I don't, I haven't seen it. that much power flash west of us. Okay. Hold on a second. Might, uh, okay, it, it, it might have weakened now. It, uh, mi it might have weakened some. Let's go back to Lynx 3. Let's go back to Lynx 3 control room. And this is that, again, it's, it's not as tight as what it was. Not as tight. It's, it's, it's broader. Uh, here's Seminole, but it, it is gonna go on or just, it looks like it might have made a little more of a turn to the right. It's so, kind of right towards Val. It's going right specific. towards Val. Val's going to greet it first as it comes into town. But Val is uh, about a half mile south of town. The little bend south of town there, he's right where we start to straighten out. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at any um, debris. Did we see anything? Let's see. Their shear so their rate. Their shear rate is it's getting very close to 377. Yeah, it's going to cross the highway here shortly. Max Rock, a little bit back. delayed on that. Uh, okay, it has, it, it definitely has, it's losing its debris in the atmosphere. So right now, uh, do not, if you're listening to me and you're in Seminole, do not come out of your safe spot yet. Stay in your safe spot. If you live in Seminole, if you live south of Seminole, do not come out of your safe spot, not yet. Let this thing pass over because we can still get a, a vortice and, and get some crazy things happening. I promise there's leaves and all kinds of stuff falling out of the sky now in Seminole. Okay, so there that is, moving off to the east. There's your tornado. But it looks like it maybe, possibly have, has lifted right over, and I mean a half mile west of Seminole. It's close, but the debris we had is, is no longer there. The debris being lofted in the sky is no longer there, okay? So that's good, but look, look at the swirl and this thing is just charging towards Seminole. Look at that, just right, it's just, it's on the south side of Seminole. Yeah, I can imagine they can hear it right now in Seminole. Yeah, it's very loud, very windy. Let's go to velocity, Let's see what the winds are. Tornado warning, okay. Uh, winds 50 to 60 in Seminole, right? This is a, a ripping southeast wind. 
right? You're on the north side, and that blue and that green is ripping towards the radar. This is wind towards Oklahoma City or towards the radar. The red are winds blowing away from the radar, blowing away. And it, it all comes together right here. So west of Val, about a mile and a half now, about a mile and a half west of Val is where the tornado is. So we know we have damage south of Pleasant Grove. There's going to be some damage in here. And then back into eastern Pottawatomie County. All right, we're going to have some damage in here. We're going to have some damage. And we know that because we've seen debris lofted in the air. And for the radar to pick up debris, it's got to be fairly substantial. We're getting um, updates, softball size hail being reported in Seminole. So not okay. only do they have the wind, but they have got a damaging hail storm. Softballs in Seminole. Okay. Yeah. And then on links two, David. Okay, let's go to links two. Storm track on links two now. No, that's the, that is it. And uh, what's that? Okay, there you go. So that's your... when it was wrapping up south of wow. Earlsboro. Sure was. Wow, look at that. There's the tornado at Earlsboro. Wow, look at that. There's your cone right there. And that's when we had it right back. That's when it really started to ramp up. That's going to be south of Earlsboro when it did that, though. South of Earlsboro, about three miles. Okay, so there's the tornado. That's what it looked like. And a great job there, everybody. Okay, let's come back to links three. Tornado warning continues. Here's Earlsboro. That picture was taken right back in here. They're all lapsed this so you can kind of see. Right here. There's the tornado. Now on top of Seminole and Seminole just south of town. But if I'm in Seminole and you can hear my voice, stay in the storm shelter. Do not come out yet. It's right on top of you right now. Let's go back to Valcaster and get an update. Val is in Seminole and get an update. And uh, Val, uh, it did produce a fairly significant tornado down by Earlsboro, south of there. Go ahead, give us an update. Okay, so David, right now we're right in the middle of Seminole, and it looks like to me that, like you said earlier, it looks like it has occluded, and it is southwest of Seminole, and uh, might possibly pass just barely south of town a little bit, or even if it moves northeast, it's going to come over the town. So we haven't gone east yet out of Seminole. We're going to possibly you know, get on the south edge of town and watch this. David? Yeah, it's it's going to be just on or just barely southwest of you. And I mean by like a half mile, Val, your wind is going to change directions here live. You're going to go from the southeast. Okay, well. Yeah, your wind's going to change. Um, all okay. right. Well, we're right in the middle of Seminole now. We're getting also we're getting uh, close to golf ball size hail in Seminole. Okay. And we did have those reports of softball size hail, four inch hail yeah, Val, earlier. Have you, have, you, have you received that? Did you? Uh, I know that the hail no. corps to your east. Uh -uh. Okay. The hail corps to your east. No. But somebody reported softballs in Seminole. So. All right. So our wind is picking up a little bit from the southeast. We've got straight southeast winds, and it is picking up somewhat right now. Okay. And while Get you're watching stronger. that, there's a new area of circulation further south, too. For the hook, as you can see, a little hook developing there okay. south of Bowlegs. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Links 3. And uh, uh, were you looking at base or SRV on that? Uh, either one. That. Both have it. But here's, I can, I'll stop this here. There you yeah, go. Yeah, right. Okay, go back to. Uh, so that's base. Yeah, base looks pretty impressive. Just barely south of town. Boy, Seminole. There it is, Seminole. It's right there. There's downtown Seminole. This is Seminole, right? Tornado's going to be right here, east of you. Justin, make sure Val knows. Yeah, it's, two it's, miles. Make sure Val knows it's well to the southeast and it's eastbound and down. He's got to get moving. He's got to get moving. Okay, so, um, by the way, I'm looking at the stuff from Jim Gardner. That is tornado damage. Yeah, and he can, he can talk He's available. Yeah, oh, okay. when you're ready. All right, we're going to leave this for just one second. Let's go to Jim Gardner from the air. And uh, let's go to Jim Gardner here. And this is down in southwest Oklahoma. This is that storm where we were looking at it and we said this is going to be a News 9 tornado warning. We had debris in the air on radar. There's your debris in the air, which is not in the air anymore. Let's get an update from Jim. Jim, that is, that is fairly significant damage down there, down near Surreal. Tell me exactly where you are. Well, David, we are exactly just about one mile north of Surreal, right at the intersection of Highway, I believe it's going to be 277 and Highway 8, right at that intersection. You can see where it tore through here. There's a 
he had a semi trailer as a as a part of a barn and stuff that's rolled over took his shed slammed it into his house and then it is traveled from the northwest to the southeast is where the debris bill travels of course totally demolished this mobile home right here but it took a car down there david and totally trashed this car look at the back end of this car I, man it just totally trashed that car so it had to pick that car up and just sling it but again it's uh, you know it's significant damage here, just north of Surreal, but just right in this small area. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garpoint live from Bob Mills. Got his nine back to you. And, uh, Jim, I want to point out in your shot here why you do not stay in a mobile home. This is what happens in a mobile home with a direct hit by a tornado. Now, Jim, if you can, if you can still hear me, pan back to the house. Pan back to the house. So there's a mobile home, and a couple hundred yards away, uh, there's a house. Let's see. Uh, that's not a, let's see, is that a house there? Yeah. Okay, so look at the house here, right? A built home, not a mobile home with, with right? R we're talking about walls that are attached to the ground, that are attached to um, basically a concrete slab, and there's damage, but if you're in this, you survive, you're walking away. If you're in that mobile home that I was just showing you there, you might not be alive, okay? This is why we say you have to get out of a mobile home during a tornado and you get into a house, you, you get into a, a structure. The house has damage, but you walk away from that. If you're in that, you might lose your life. Same tornado, they're 150 yards apart. That's why we tell you, you have to get out of a mobile home. It gets flipped over, it's pancaked, and if you're inside that, you've got problems. You have to get out of that. We okay. have mobile homes flipped just south of Ripley as well. No injuries reported. They were yeah. unoccupied, but same thing, flipped completely over on their top today. Yeah, like what, a mile south of Ripley? Yeah, a mile or two south of Ripley. Okay, so this is a great learning example of why you cannot stay in a mobile home. Yeah. A little bit of good news, and we can keep Jim Gardner's shot up there, but with that mobile home, we confirmed with the Caddo County Sheriff that it was unoccupied at okay, the time good. of this tornado. All right, great, great, because so many times it's not. And why are there so many fatalities in the southeast U.S. versus Oklahoma, uh, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi? Um, there are more mobile homes per square mile than any other place in, nor in really North America. I mean, no joke. I mean, in the United States. And they have a lot of mobile homes down there, which are fine 99.9% .9 of the year. But, man, you get a tornado rip through a mobile home or a mobile home park, and you're going to have problems. So this is why we tell you you have to get out. Luckily, nobody was in there, so we're good. We're good. Okay, let's get back to it here. Go back to link three. This is just taking you back. This and was 515 when that storm was coming through that area. Yeah. And so that was the tornado, and we had the debris. So yes. what we were seeing with our radar was depicting debris lofted, and CC was negative. That was all real. And this is when we issued a News 9 tornado warning, not an official warning from anybody else. This was our own News 9 tornado warning because of that, what we were seeing and Jim Gardner is down on there right now. And again, you were seeing the video of it live, right? So that was a significant tornado down there, right there. Significant tornado. And now we're getting updates on the damage to the southwest of Seminole. So I'll take radar back up into real okay. time. Let's go back to Seminole now. And get you now. back up here. Yep, it is. Um, it is ongoing tornado warning. It is cleared Seminole. Let's go back to Val. And the tornado, okay, let, let's, I tell you what, let's stay with the radar for okay. a second. See the S shaped here? Okay, we've got problems. Anytime you see that on radar, it's not good. Okay, so here's, here's Seminole, downtown Seminole. I don't see any weakness in that. I, I still see the couplet right in here. What does shear rate look like? Let me see. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's where it should be. Okay, so that, that's exactly where it, where it should be, east of Seminole. Okay, so um, that's where Val is. Do we have Val, Justin? Okay, let's go to Val Castro, get an update from Val. And uh, Val, here's the deal. Um, we're, we're getting reports of some damage now. Did you say southwest of Yes, Seminole, southwest two, three, of miles? Seminole. Yeah, I can get the address and everything to you. Tree shred, large trees uprooted, that sort of thing. Okay, that's gonna be, yep, yeah, that's, the, that's the tornado. And uh, Val, go ahead. Go ahead, Val, give us an update. Yeah. That's that southwest uh, of uh, Seminole is probably where we were seeing those power flashes, David, earlier, uh, no doubt. So right now, David, we took the road southeast out of Seminole. Um, I, I believe we're going to have to find a road that goes north and then east from here to get back under the circulation. Uh, but we had golf ball-sized hail 
in on the east side and just southeast of Seminole. Lots of hail going on up there. Never saw any uh, softballs or anything like that. But anyway, we're we're sticking with the storm. Get back to you, David. Okay, while, while we're looking at that same area, I just want to point out, we've been watching the circulation south of Bowlegs, and if you just look at the little appendage that's crossed 377, this is going to be to the south and to the east of Bowlegs, right new here. little hook, and it just continues to kind of lunge out ahead yeah. um, so far. Yeah. So, and, and um, so that's a new one then. That's a new one, yes. Yeah. Let's get Val south and east down towards Wewoka, and then we'll see what this does. Lacey, what's that look like on shear rate? Okay, let me go back here to the different laps. And it's been there. I've been, been watching that area. You can see it kind of peaked around 377. And, okay. yeah, it's, it's trying. Okay. So here's the original tornado warning still with us east of Seminole. You folks in Seminole, you got damage. You have damage between about one to two miles southwest of Seminole back down south of Earlsboro. Okay, we have damage in here, right? We have damage in here, not, uh, not like, you know, not a continuous 15 miles or anything, but we think we've got probably a five or six, seven mile length of damage, probably. There's the tornado east of Seminole. It's gonna be right here, right here, okay? What, uh, just curious, there's mm -hmm. Tim out of Tulsa. What does shear rate look like now with that? Okay. Okay. All right, so there it is. Okay, and what does velocity look like? Okay, there's shear rate. Okay. Yeah, just lapsing it, and you can definitely see yeah. the whole thing wrapping up into itself. That's right there. Maximum rotation's in the same spot, and there's velocity. It's broad. Okay. Yeah, definitely broad. Definitely not not near as tight. And with that look looking like that, you'd almost have to say there's there's probably not a tornado on the ground right now. Yeah, north of basically along Highway 9, right? Yeah, it's yeah. paralleling 9. It's going right down Highway 9. I'm going to put the sheer swath on here just so you can see this. But you'd have to say that it's, yeah. It really, what, tightened up one more time, didn't it? It did, yes. It tightened up one more time. So here's the sheer swath. Yeah. If you take off some of these yeah. lower levels, yeah, this is where you. the rotation was the tightest, which started just south of Earlsboro. That's the picture that you saw. Right there. Came across the county line. Debris was in the air north of Highway 59. And that's kind of where we're at. Um, I at tell the you moment. What, let, let's take a look at debris tracks. Does it, does it show up anything? We can see. It there we go. Does. There we yeah, go. There, there it is. is. There's, there's the your, debris. There's your debris in the air. Right there. That's what it looked like right there. Okay, southwest of Seminole. Can you back that up? Does it have anything if you go farther back? Uh, it's just, it, that's the product is right there. Okay. Yeah. That's what it's got. So uh, it was doing some some damage here, we think, as it was leaving Pottawatomie County into Seminole County. This is debris, though, that the radar is picking out. And just it looking was. At, at just time. looking at satellite. I mean, there, there are lots of homes within there. It, ho yeah. Hopefully this was tree damage and tree debris that we were seeing. But right. That one picture, though, is pretty intense. Yes. I mean, that's pretty legit. Okay. So here's where it is now, circulation. You look at the eye looking back at you here. The eye, it's like eye of a hurricane wrapped by rain and hail, right? Running from east of Seminole. It's gonna go probably, it looks like north of Wewoka. Yep, it's gonna go north of Wewoka. Not the storm, but the, the mesocyclone, which is right here. Okay, if, the, if, if it's gonna produce another tornado, it's gonna be in that. And then we've got the debris. Excuse me, we've got the hook developing down here. And uh, no debris with that, at least not yet. But it is spinning. See how that forms and spins up? Look how fast that is. It took like 10 minutes. Look at that. Look at that little ball. See that? Watch the hook. Watch that right there. Watch. Yeah, there you go. We've got problems again. Now, that's going to Holdenville. So if you have anybody that lives in Holdenville, uh, the storm is still strong, but it's not tornado warned strong yet down here. But there it is. You can see the couplet. It's right here. And then the couple to the north is still here, but it's more of uh, a toward than away, so it's not balanced. So it tells me there's a lot of inflow with it left, but there's not much going outbound. Lots of inbound, not much going outbound. And it's broad. Okay, it's broad. Yeah, new tornado warning coming will include that circulation further to the south, south. to give folks in Hughes County a heads up. Yep, here we go, Hughes County. So that's what we just said. And we'll, we'll do a storm track on that if we can. Holdenville, and I tell you what, uh, Cassie, just go up to Highway 9, or a little bit north of Highway 9, take it straight south to the leading edge of that hook, 
and uh, and then from there take it just about due east. So that will include Wetumpka, uh, Dustin, Holdenville. Okay. All right. So, uh, new tornado warning will be now for that circulation and that circulation. So two areas of spin now, tornado warned in Eastern Seminole County, two possible tornadoes. We know this has produced and done damage and this is ramping up and this could become tornado warned. And I think it's going to, it's getting stronger and it's gonna go to Seminole or excuse me, Holdenville or south of Holdenville. Okay, all right, so there's max rotation. We have this down here. We have this up here. Val's making his way off to the southeast. Let's go back to Val. Let's bring Val back in it. And uh, Val, area of circulation is still there just to, your, um, just to your northeast. It is just your northeast, barely, Val. It's a little bit weaker and it's more broad and it's not as strong as what it was. And now the new area of circulation is getting stronger about six or seven miles to your southeast, Val. And it's gonna go and try to produce a tornado south of Wewoka. South of Wewoka, it'll be there in about the next uh, 10 minutes or five minutes. Okay, so, yeah, David, that's the one we're going for is the south one. Uh, the one to our north, I know it's still there, but um, it's, it's north of us. It's probably weakened, uh, trying to occlude. A, we are headed towards the other one, the one to the south. And just as you said that, just as you're talking, we're getting into probably half dollar to ping pong ball size hail and heavy, heavy rain. Must be with the core that's overspreading us. So uh, we're headed towards Wewoka. Back to you, David. Yep, yep, yep. And just uh, head to Wewoka. And then from Wewoka, you can slide down south and east towards Holandville, and you'll be in a good spot. Look at the visibility there, folks. This is why you don't drive into thunderstorms. Val and Amy have been doing this for 35 years, right? And uh, they're experienced drivers, but if you have to be out in this, this is so, so dangerous with uh, Again, talking about hydroplaning is a big, big problem. So do not drive into storms. Okay, let's go back to Link 3, except if you're a News 9 storm tracker. All right, here we go. So there's your hook. Tornado warning for this now, going into Holdenville. Tornado warning for Holdenville. This is over in Hughes County. Uh, we've got confirmed damage now, southwest of Seminole, south of Earlsboro. Damage in there. We have the old circulation is up on Highway 9, just barely north of Wewoka. You folks in Wewoka are getting hammered right now. You're gonna get hammered with some wind and hail. It's coming in to you currently. And then here's the new area of circulation. There, here come the quarters and the golf balls. Okay, and then here's the new area of spin down here. Right there. That is spinning like a top. That's gonna go on or pretty much, eh, it's gonna go on and south of the Holdenville. Okay, tornado warning. Continues for that cell. Okay, so tornado warning now for eastern Seminole County, moving into Hughes County. And I don't see... I don't see any yeah. confirmed debris. Yeah. Hold my finger here. I don't either. I'm, lo I'm looking back in here for any it's debris in the air. I don't see any either. Wow. Wow, it's west-northwest of uh, Seminole. All right, so keep your finger right there. Yep. That's close, David. That's, that's we that's, yeah, that's a weakness. Or in this case, this is a bad thing because it's showing a weakness in debris, possibly. Okay, so let's bring Val back in here. Tornado warning continues. And uh, let's bring Val back in. Folks in Holdenville, lowest level, center part of the house, or if you live in Holdenville, back into the Pottawatomie, or excuse me, Seminole County line, safe spot, lowest level. Tornado could be on the ground right now. Val, looks like we might be seeing more debris being detected, uh, being lofted with the circulation to your southeast now. It looks like we might have some debris being lofted with the circulation to your south. Not completely 100% uh, sure on that. Go ahead, give us an update as you crash into and towards Wewoka. You just dropped. Okay, all right, bad sale area. Uh, let's go back to Lynx 3. Let me show you what he's doing. He is right here and he's making his way off to the southeast. There's Wewoka, uh, there's Holdenville, okay? And this is right here, area of spin, old area here, new area here, all right? New tornado warning for the Holdenville area. And it's moving, it's moving east-southeast. Okay, so it's, it's moving east-southeast. 
could be a good sign if the front would catch up to it. Yeah, how close is the front behind you? Uh, let's see. I'm guessing it's right on its tail. Yeah, Seminole, I mean, Seminole has a west wind. There's a northwest wind at Byers. Yeah. So, yeah, it's close. Okay. So, if the, if the cool front comes in, it undercuts. It's kind of you get, you get cool air to rush underneath at the surface, rush underneath, rain cooled, cooler, air underneath the updraft. It'll cut off the tornado thread. It'll kill it. It'll still spin, and we'll get some big hail and wind and all that, but it will get rid of that tornado threat if we can get the cold front to slide underneath these storms. It already has back in here. That's why there's no more tornadoes back in here. This is just wind and hail. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Uh, all right, let's back out of this just a second here, kind of give our viewers down south. This is going into Paul's Valley. There is some circulation <clears throat> there. Brandon's right there. Okay, still severe. Here, I'll show you. Yep, Paul's Valley. There it is. Wow. Okay, go back to radar again. So you can see the gust front all the way down to almost Davis. Yeah, that's all, that's all going to be all elevated. There you go. Yeah. Okay, but it's still prime example. There's your cool front, cold front or the outflow from this, and it's, it's out ahead of the line. Notice how, it, though, it wraps back into that storm. That storm is fighting for its life to stay in the warm, moist air. These storms are not going to produce tornadoes unless they really tighten up and do something weird, because that blue line is the winds out of the north. And to get a tornado in here, you gotta have an east wind or a southeast wind or a south wind. Okay, so tornadoes oh, with this line, nope. None of that going on. Wind and hail, yes. Quarter size hail, yes. Winds, 50 to maybe 60, of course. Uh, coming into Paul's Valley, Winniewood, Elmore City, Davis, Duncan. All right, and then from there, uh, up towards Holdenville is where we have the one tornado warning still left. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's go back to that storm. Okay. And let's, Val, I guess he's in Wewoka. Okay, it's gonna be to his southeast. Uh, Justin? Okay, let's go. Uh, Val needs to keep moving, I would think. I mean, it, okay, we have his shot. I see Val's shot. And uh, he is in Wewoka. Here's his GPS. Here's the area of spin going right into Holdenville. What does shear rate look like now? If I had a dime for every time I've said that. It's true. That's just today. All right, so there's a lot of rotating storms today. Yeah, we've had a few. Okay, so there it is. There's Holdenville, area of spin. We've this storm has already produced at least one tornado that was on the ground for half a dozen miles or so, maybe a little more. All right, with confirmed damage, south and east of Seminole, excuse me, south and west of Seminole, south and east of Earlsboro. Okay, confirmed damage there. South of we woke up over to Holdenville. And look how this is pivoting. Look how that's pivoting. It's, it's gonna come right in. It's gonna almost come right on top of Holdenville. Yeah, it's trying to lift north. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Val's moving again. Yeah, Val needs to get south out of Wewoka. Wow, it's, it's getting stronger. Okay, we'll look right here for debris. Okay, take a look at it. So. Nope. Some weakness, but it's yeah. nothing like what we had Southwest no. Seminole saying, hey, we have for sure have some pretty significant debris lofted. That's not the case. Yeah, no, but it, it definitely is there. Okay, so here's, here's one hook. There's the old hook, right? So, so Val's, Val's dropping south. Get, Justin, get, yeah, get. Yeah, he's got to get south and southeast. Yes. Okay, I hear him talking. All right, so circulation is still back right in here. Yeah, I'll turn and on velocity, but this is closing in on the Creek Nation Casino there on the north side of Holdenville, okay. Highway 270. Yeah, sirens need to be blowing in Holdenville, need to be in your safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house in Holdenville. Circulation here. And again, this is moving off. Uh, east, almost due east. It might have actually pinwheeled a little farther to the north, but it's right here. It, it's it's kind of broad right now, but it, it looks like it's maybe trying to tighten up right in here on that north side. Look at it on reflectivity, yeah. Is it trying to localize like right? Yeah, that's where it's been. Right there? So yeah, it's right there. It looks like it's trying to localize right here. Yeah, that's okay. Then here's, 
Here's Holdenville. Go ahead and lapse that. Let's see what okay. that looks like. Just curious. Okay, it, it, yeah. Well, I don't know. It may do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, yeah. It, Completely pivot all the way. Yeah, it looks like it's trying to go to the north, but it might actually move. So if you live in Holdenville or one, two, three, four, five miles north of Holdenville, in between there and Wewoka, you, ha you really have to be in your safe spot. Lowest level, center part of the house. You've got to go there now. You don't, you don't have any time. And uh, we don't see any debris, but um, yeah, it, it could certainly be happening right now. Cross on the highway here. I, we don't have a highway logo on that. What is that? Which one? 270 or 848? Oh, yeah. 270. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It comes southeast out of, yeah. Yes, you're right, though. Okay. 270. Man, okay. it's almost anchored right there, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's the latest scan. Yeah, there it is. It's right there. Okay, so yeah, so for sure, yeah, it's doing that. It's like it's, okay, let's go back to reflectivity. Tornado warning continues. Uh, there it is, right there. For now, leaving uh, Seminole County, moving into Hughes County. And there's Hughes County. Yeah, you can see the original circulation was to the southwest, and it's basically moved up towards the northeast. Yeah, right here? Yeah. Yeah. It's the actual hook itself. Yeah, it's still there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Wow. Each time you go back to that, it's stronger. Justin, hey. is Val, Justin, is Val on 270 headed southeast yet? Tell him if he is, it's a mile. Yeah, I just told him it's to the southeast a mile or two. Maybe, yeah. Like, it's crossing, it's gonna, it's occluding and trying to lift, you know that. Yeah, he just turned on 270 going southeast. Okay, he's gonna, it's gonna, he's gonna go right underneath it. Okay, so uh, Val's shot is right here. That's Val. Okay. He Let's said, go back to Val. Let's go back to Val. We had a power flash to our southeast. Val, it looks like it's on the ground. Power. It's going to be right, right there on the highway. It's just to your right. It's, please please it's be careful. Be, it's, straight, it's straight down the highway, maybe to the left of the road just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, but we had a big green power flash straight down the road from us. That's it. That's um, it. I, I, I mean, it's... I think that was another power flash. Ever, we've probably seen two or three interspersed with the lightning here, obviously. Okay. But uh, we ought to know it pretty quick if we come across any damage. Another power flash. There you and go. And it's to the left of the road. Okay, so it's over. It's, it's to the, yeah. To, go ahead. It's to the left of the road. The power flashes are left of the road. Hmm. Um, probably, man, just to our east. I'm that? thinking that we're going southeast, but that? it's... It is. It's just to the left of the road here. Okay. Um, we're watching. Watching for more power. Our winds no. now are west northwest, so that would fit very good with where the tornado would be. Uh, um, not no more power flashes. Okay. Uh, okay, Val. Here's the deal. That might be inflow, and I'll tell you why. Velocity data. We have the the tightest circulation still to the right of 270, like about a mile okay. and a half. Like a mile and a half. Now, here's the deal. North of the highway, there's a ripping east-southeast wind at 50 to 60 miles per hour. Maybe stronger. Maybe that's what caused it then. So, I'm, I, I don't know. I, well, it's, it's interesting, though, but it's right. It's just to the right. Um, it, God, it, it's just to the right of the highway. Yeah, which is just to the south. It's of, just to the south, Val. Yeah. It's just to your south. Sure is. It, you're probably right. That's Okay, so... Well, we're almost on it. Yeah. We're almost on it right here. Yeah, you're like you're like <laughs> knocking on the door between where you want to okay. be and where you don't want to be, but yeah. Sure. Yeah. I need to wipe off the windshield here. Yeah, it's going to it's, um, yeah, it's going to it's it's going to Holdenville. It's gonna certainly try okay. to sneak, is it, is sneak it, into Holdenville. Okay, there's a report okay, so of we, a roof blown off of a van in a shed blocking the road one mile northwest of Holdenville. It doesn't say what road that is, um, okay. but that's a report. Some damage there northwest of Holdenville. Well, that's got to be on inflow then. I mean, there's there's no... Yeah. Or whatever. I mean, the circulation is still back to the west of that. Okay. I mean, it might be off by a half mile, but it's not going to be off, you know what I mean? Sure. And the report may be off slightly too. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's go back to Link 3. And there's a tornado. Right here, right here. East Road 133, and there's the Creek Nation Casino. 
If you know anybody that's at the casino, they need to be found in a safe spot in the casino, whatever and wherever that is. Okay? Circulation's right here. Here's Val. And really, the last two scans, it hasn't moved a whole lot. I mean, the, rate, the data is updating. Yeah. No, it's staying. Okay, so, wow, look at that. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to velocity data. Wow, it's just a mess. You, it's, yeah. It, look at the rain in here. I mean, we're talking torrential. You can't see anything kind of a rain with a tornado in the middle of it. There's your tornado right here where my finger is, right there. That's it. Okay, did you see that? It lunged. Yep. It goes boom. So now, so he's on the wrap. He's on the wrap. He might have had winds, power flashes at 50 to 60 on the north side. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's Well, now. he just reported he has west winds. Yeah, makes sense. West or north, well, west or northwest. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so he, when he goes into Holdenville, he's going to be right there. Look at, look at base here, Lacey. Okay. Look at the base winds down here. Right I mean, now, we are way away from the radar at this point. Yeah, but, I know. You know, some. Yeah, we're pretty far away. So the winds are not that strong at the surface. They're not that strong. Okay, so Holdenville, in the middle of it, safe spot right now. If you live in Holdenville, if you live around Holdenville, north, south, east, west, this thing is basically right on top of you. Folks in Holdenville, if you can hear my voice, safe spot, be there, lowest level, interior closet interior bathroom you need to be there now you need to be there now don't mess with this thing okay let this thing come on in and go on by and everybody will be good that's the plan but we don't want to take a chance but it's going to go right over holdenville right over holdenville then from there it's going to keep moving east okay so val is right here on the back side of it coming into holdenville right what does uh, srb look like is it any tighter with that yeah yeah, it's, it's tight. It's, it's right over Holdenville. It's a donut right over Holdenville it right is. now. And what does it look like on reflectivity? Well, you can see the hook. I mean, you can see it. But... Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, and there's a weakness right here. Yep. It's right over Holdenville right now. You folks in Holdenville are in and under the mesocyclone. You're what we call the bear's cage. Welcome to the bear's cage. Not a good place to be. Safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house, Holdenville. Okay, let this thing blow by. Let it move by. You're, you're probably hearing the, the wind. I know you are, and the hail. Holdenville, okay? Stay put. All right, lowest level, center part of the house, bathroom, closet, whatever. Okay, so, so there this is, and that's our problem. It's right over Holdenville. All right, what's it look like on uh, velocity data one more time? That's SRV. Okay. It's not as tight. It's not as tight, which is, means it's not as spinning as fast. It's not rotating as fast. It's not as strong, which is great. Okay. Yeah, and just a couple more areas down near Atwood, another one near Francis that kind of went over Bing. Yep. So. And notice how this is becoming more linear. Still there, don't get me wrong. Still there, but it's got a lot of rain out ahead of it now. Tons of rain in there. So the, the rain and the front itself might just completely uh, undercut this storm, and hopefully we can cut it off. Man, it is, it is doing the spin. And I mean, it went right over Holdenville. Okay, so what, did, uh, tornado count today, I don't know, half dozen, maybe more. Count the surreal stuff, Apache stuff, and then uh, stuff we had up northwest. So, all right. Um, Area of circulation now, it's going to be moving east of Holdenville. Val's still on it. East of Holdenville. Let's go down the line here one more okay. time. And uh, Holdenville, that storm has weakened some. It's weakened. The circulation has. It's still producing big hail and big wind, okay? Wind 60 plus, quarter, golf ball, maybe up to tennis ball size hail. Big, strong, powerful updraft in here, okay? What's going on down here with this configuration? Yeah, that's the, that's the next area of circulation. There are two okay. um, right there crossing the river, headed towards Allen, and the next one, yeah, back near Bing. Yeah. All right, there's Bing. Okay, yeah, it's not as... T it did. You're right, though. It did. Over Francis. Yeah. They did end up sounding the sirens a bit ago in Francis. Reports of lowering there with that. I believe that. 
That's in Pontotoc County. Yeah. I believe that. Okay, so now we're uh, into, again, this is Ada. This is going to be Pottawatomie and Seminole County and Hughes County to the north. Yeah. But a little bit of a hook here developing. But is this like, not? It looks like that's the front. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, so really it's the Allen circulation, the coming into southern Hughes County that's still kind of close to yeah. the, to the, uh, where the cold front's tucking right back here. in. Yeah. Okay, what does it look like on velocity on that? Okay, there it is. No, hang on a second. You're at uh, TLX? Yes. Okay. Well, that, if that's it, it's going to be anticyclonic. That's just where it's tucking in, I think. I don't know that it's yeah, actually. I think you're right. Yeah, it's, it, it hadn't done it. It doesn't, yeah, hadn't done away yet. It looks like the tornado warning will expire for Hughes County with uh -huh. that circulation quickly yeah, it's weakening. weakening. Yep. Man, okay. Holdenville and Seminole both. If yeah. Holdenville didn't have significant damage, yeah. it would be great, but two, it was close. Two nice size, really nice communities, really. Uh, you dodged it on this one, folks. Seminole and Holdenville. Seminole, you had a tornado on the ground, headed towards you, and it lifted. So, all right, there you go. There you go. So, Seminole. You're living right. Or somebody was praying really hard down there tonight, right? Okay, so there's Seminole. Uh, it's, it's out of there. And it, again, it, it produced a tornado southeast of Earlsboro, which is right in here. And right when it was opening the door to come into Seminole, it, it lifted and weakened, and, and that was it. Okay, so there's your cold front outrunning the storms. So again, we go back to a wind and hail threat coming into Velma, Comanche, Elmore City, Paul's Valley, you're getting it right now with some wind and some hail. Brandon's right there. Let's go back south. Let's check in with Brandon. Justin, let's bring Brandon in here. And uh, he's in Winniewood. And uh, pretty good hail core to his north and east. Brandon, go ahead. Give us an update. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, David. We're right here on I-35 at the Winniewood exit. Um, this line has just overtaken us. Uh, we got about 35, 40 mile an hour north, northwest winds blinding rain and a lot of lightning but you know the rainfall is really good so it's just a, a bump in the road and a, a typical thunderstorm at this point just some gusty winds back to you okay all right great job brandon so brandon's down in Winniewood. not tornadic storm is severe winds 50 maybe 60 nickel and die maybe some quarter size hail let's go back to links one here and take a look at it there's the hail now this is going to be some golf balls wow it just went through paul's valley this went right over there's a hail core right there that yeah they had hail in paul's valley for sure, for sure. So pretty good hail, at least quarters in parts of the, especially the western sides of Paul's Valley out near I-35, and might have had some golf balls in there. Right there, there's your hail core. And then this is gonna be a little bit smaller hail, but here's what I like about this shot. See the green line? That is the cold front, which has outrun all of the storms, at least down here. So it's, they're all outflow dominant, which means you're not gonna get a tornado when you have air, all the air rushing to the south rushing out from the storms. Tornadoes got to have air rushing in at all directions. And this is a one-way street. Wind blowing away from the storms. They're severe all the way back to near Temple and uh, Duncan and Comanche. And uh, then from there again, Winniewood. So the whole line's severe. If you live in Comanche, Hilton, Sulphur. All right, we'll get a storm track on that. How about we do that, uh, Cass? Maybe just do it from like Ada uh, back down to Ranlett. Just storm track on that. Sliding southeast. We'll give our friends down there an update. Wow. Hey, Andrew, where's that picture from you're getting ready to post? And the tornado warning has expired. Wow. That was a tornado warning Wow, look at that. Yeah, wow, look at that. Let's go to that shot there. What is it, links to? Uh -huh, links to control room. There you go. There's a problem. Look at that donut. Looking right at you. That's what was, yeah, crazy. Okay, so uh, back to it, back to links three, or excuse me, links four, my bad, links four. Storm track on the southern line here, not tornadic, Ada, 848, Joy, 850, Temple, 852, Sulphur, 905, how about Hilton, 919, uh, Colgate, 931, Tishomingo, 945, and Atoka at 950, Marietta, about 10 o'clock. Okay, so. It's, it's, again, sliding southeast, 25. All right, so there it is. The whole line pushing southeast. Okay, let's come back up into Holdenville. 
Talk about our friends up here. Tornado warning, no longer in effect in Holdenville. That storm has weakened as far as the tornado threat. It is still a big storm producing hail, damaging hail and damaging winds running from Holdenville down to Atwood and Calvin. Winds are going to be 50 to 60 and with that quarter to golf ball size hail. So, wow. And uh, you know what, today, looking at everything that we were looking at today, I mean, we, we have, we've had quite a few tornadoes. They've all been fairly weak, except for the surreal tornado, and that's going to end up being probably a, uh, an EF1, probably an EF1. We'll see. Surveys will be done tomorrow in the next couple of days, and we'll find out what that is. But it, you know, EF1, it looks like. Maybe a two, but probably EF1 down there. But all the others, uh, they've all been fairly weak. But the one up near Ripley might have been, a, we don't know the damage on that yet. We know it took out a mobile home park area and did some damage up there. So we'll find more, find out more about that. All right, so area of circulation now east of Holdenville is weakening. And then the areas back to the southwest between there and Allen. Uh, nothing crazy in here, but we got winds 50 to 60. We have winds down there pretty strong. There goes your guest front. And uh, everything out ahead of the guest front. The guest front is out ahead of, you know, all the storms. So that is great. Great news. That'll, that'll end the tornado threat with the line back in here. Still severe. Still severe pushing off to the southeast. But there's still some winds in here, 50 to 60, coming into Calvin and then down south. What do the winds look like down into Paul's Valley and their points in south and east? Anything crazy to you, you see? No. I don't either. I see winds maybe 40 to 50. Yeah, here's the base. Look at the mesonet real quick and just see. No. Yeah, yeah, winds have been on the mezzanet 5 to 10, 15 at Paul's Valley proper. Yeah. Okay. And there's a little bit of a something here, but that's well behind the boundaries, so we're not worried about it. Okay. Let's go to uh, reflectivity one more time. Okay. So severe thunderstorms continue from Duncan to Temple all the way to Paul's Valley. Now south of Paul's Valley, that storm is definitely severe near Winniewood. And then from there, all the way to Holdenville. Tornado warning is now expired in the Holdenville area. And there's your gust front out ahead of it. So that will take away the tornado threat along that line simply because, again, the, the cool, cooler, rain-cooled air is, is undercut the storms. And you're not going to get a tornado to go up in that environment. Okay? You get storms to spin, get some big hail and wind, because that's all a law. But at the surface, you got to have surface. you got to have surface inflow. And it'll spin all day, but you won't get anything out of it. Dry in Oklahoma City now. We had some localized flooding. We, of course, had the severe weather here in the metro. That is now gone. Now everything is down to our south, sliding to the south and southeast. And uh, like I said earlier, the tornado count today is going to be probably about a half dozen tornadoes today. So, you know, we average about 12 in the month of April, and we've had, you know, half our month. Uh, in one day, and we're going to have more tornadoes on Wednesday. At least we're going to we're going to get severe weather back in here on Wednesday, and also, oh, into, hang on, it's, it's May. May. Look at me going back in time. There's a it's, song in there. It's definitely May. <laughs> it's May second. I was looking at you like 12. Yep. Okay, I think I was, it's 24. It was, it was on purpose. <laughs> okay, you're just checking. Just checking, okay. and that was a test, and you completely passed it. It is May. <laughs> right. Yeah. So our big month, yes, is 24 tornadoes in the month of May, and we've had six today. So there we go. That's what I was trying to say. All right, so anyway, so severe storms now. Uh, going into McAllister, back to Ada, down to Sulphur, down south of Marlow and Duncan now. And uh, they're still in Duncan, but they're out of Marlow, or they're ending in Marlow, and then they're going to keep pushing south. So this is the only game in town, folks. That's it. And it's a stout line for sure. Once again, sliding southeast currently at about... Uh, 25 miles per hour. 25. God, the pictures today are just insane from people. All the different yeah. pictures of... We're getting so many pictures, too, sent in of Mamatis clouds, which are the big billowy, you know, clouds you see at sunset from folks yeah. all over sending that in, which, hey, that's a good that's a good kind of picture. I, I saw a picture earlier of, uh, of the mezzo, and the striations were so vertical. I just, I don't know. Andrew. Andrew's putting them all together. Uh, on, yeah, I was just like, oh, my, it was just like, wow. The sun was on it. Somebody took it from the backside, I think, when it was lit up or something. Anyway, it's impressive. All right, so severe thunderstorm warning. It's a big one. Running from Holdenville, Squall Line, all the way down to north of Sulphur. 
uh, down to and south of Duncan now. Let's go ahead and maybe zoom on into the Sulphur area. We have our viewers down there that are watching us. And again, we're not forgetting about you. So there's Sulphur, there's Davis, there's Falls Creek. And big hail now right here southeast of Paul's Valley and east of Winniewood. That's quarter size hail. Okay, quarter size hail east of Paul's Valley, east of Winniewood. Sliding down towards Sulphur and Roth and Davis. And a little bit smaller hail in between Winniewood and Elmore City. And then uh, as we, let's go back here a little, just a little farther south. Down the line. Yeah. Smaller hail. Yeah, all nickels and dime size hail. So that's good. That's good. That's not damaging hail. You can, you can walk away from nickels and dimes. Quarters, you'll have some problems with the roof and the car and golf ball. You'll have problems there. All right, so everything moving again to the southeast. All right, so Val is over here still. Tornado warning is now expired because it's weakened. And uh, this thing is getting a little stronger, it looks like, but it's behind the line, so. Yeah. And the 850 jet is just ripping through here. Okay. All right, so let's do a storm track. And should Cassie's doing that. Thank you. She's reading my mind. Out. Look it's at that. Take, take links two. Look at the Mamatas. Take yeah. uh, links two control room. Look at the Mamatas clouds. This is on the backside of usually a very large storm. Storm goes up, hits a level, and this is the air is going up and it, it bubbles back down. It's like downward convection, and it's really, really amazing. You've seen these before, but when the sun is setting at the timings right, um, you couldn't paint that. I mean, that stuff right there, you just go, wow. And uh, that is normally on, a, on the side of a storm that is you know, probably moving away from you, at least you hope. But it, it can be on any, any and underside of the end. Look at that. Sunset with that. Look at that, sun setting. And the, the storm is, is to this way, this way, and then the anvil is going up and over. And look at all the mamatas on that. Yeah, so that was going on today for you folks that didn't get the storms or got them, but you were able to see that, all right? That's right here from uh, Stillwater, looking off of the storms. So that, that is crazy. That's from Stillwater today. All right, great shot there. Great shot, Debbie Wells from uh, Stillwater. All right, um, back to Lynx. Are you want to stay with three? Oh yeah, I was just looking at, at oh. satellite. Yeah, let's take a look at that. See that. that. And watch it. Sun setting, but yeah, watch it unzip down the line. Look at the dry line. Look at that. Look at the convection. The river of air. That's what, that's what it is, right? It's all just water. And watch the storms take off. Boom. There's the tornado storm we had. Tornadic, tornadic storm down there. Overshooting top. Overshooting dome. Pretty crazy, right? So yeah, big storms. Okay, links four, and we'll do a storm track. And uh, here are some of your cities. Uh, let's see, Ratliff City moving in now. Davis coming up here right about now. Stewart, 9 o'clock. Loco, 9 o'clock. Fox, 903. Sulphur at 903. Stonewall, 910. Hilton, 917. Uh, Mill Creek, 919. And uh, Kiowa at about 924. Wilson at about 926. All right, so the whole line here, again, sliding southeast at about 25. So uh, it's moving. Moving in, moving out. Let's go back to Brandon, and uh, let's get an update from him. He's on that severe storm, but the winds, it's kind of the big thing right now. But Brandon, the hail core is just to your east, and pretty good-sized hail just to your east. Go ahead and give us an update. Yeah, David, just after we talked, you know, we had extremely heavy rain. It's starting to let up now. We probably had to be five, 40-mile-an-hour winds, but we did have some nickel-sized hail that moved right over the top of I-35 at our location. It's uh, moved off to the east southeast of us now, and the rain is trying to wind down. But extremely, there's a was extremely heavy rain, and there's a lot of cloud to ground lightning still. Back to you. All right. All right. You got it. I, you got it. I got it. Okay. I think I got something. All right. Woo. A little bit of dinner, you know, whatever you can get. Um, okay, so th that's the storm down in Winniewood, and it is still severe. Winds are going to be 50 to 60. Okay, so um, let's just get an update from Val. He's still over there where we had the tornado warning and get a quick update from him. And uh, Val Caster, wow, you had a kind of a white knuckle ride here the last uh, hour and a half. That storm has weakened. You're still over there watching it though. But I tell you what, uh, Val, uh, Seminole and Holdenville, lucky tonight. That, that, that tornadic storm is headed for both those cities. Oh, absolutely, David. Uh, very, very lucky. And you know, you weren't kidding about a white knuckle ride. 
I mean, we were in 70 mile an hour winds. I don't know how many power flashes we were seeing. Um, we had the winds completely turn 180 degrees on us, you know, and not light either. But right now, we're watching this circulation still. It's kind of broadened and weakened quite a bit. That's why they dropped the tornado warning on it. So uh, anyway, also, as I speak, we're sitting here getting a little bit of dime to nickel size hail. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job. Good job there, Val. So once again, Val Caster still on it, still tracking it east. And uh, the trend right now is we don't have anything that's spinning too crazy, too hard, too fast. Okay. That's a good sign. But at the same time, uh, the severe weather threat is certainly there with wind and hail. Okay. What do you got? Are you going to say something? I was just looking at the data behind this cold front for tonight, kind of for folks that are done with the rain. As we head into the day tomorrow, tomorrow morning, temperatures yeah. 40s, low 40s, and wind chills will be in the 30s. So for, <laughs> for much of the area tomorrow, it's going to be a very cold start. Okay, who hit 100 today? Altus. Altus the one I know of, yeah. Yeah, they hit 100 today, behind the dry line. And uh, remember how last week, you know, the cat kept Oklahoma in check, right? Yes. And we talked about, hey, today there, not was, the issue. there was no cap. And there will not be a cap on Wednesday. Uh, we will have more severe weather coming up on Wednesday. Okay. All right. So here's the main line now running from Holdenville down to Sulphur, uh, down to Temple, south of Lawton. We had tornado damage in Surreal. We have tornado damage east and southeast of Earlsboro. We have tornado damage, um, again, in between Earlsboro and Seminole. And we have tornado damage up near uh, Ripley. Yes. So, and also no tornado damage, but we had the one other tornado earlier up in uh, Kingfisher County. So it's been a, it's been a wild day. No, no violent tornadoes today. No uh, EF, we call, we had, uh, might've had a strong tornado. The surreal tornado might be labeled strong as an EF2, but no violent tornadoes, no EF3s, fours or fives, obviously, but no EF3s, no, none of that higher end stuff, because that really starts to change the dynamics of of the injuries and things like that. We have a report from a firefighter um, one mile west of Holdenville, and he said originally it was a shed damage report. He went there and checked it out. It's actually a large home. He says he's on scene now. There is significant damage one mile west of Holdenville there. Okay. Um, but he just searched it, and or PD just searched it, and it's not occupied. So it doesn't look like anyone's home. But I mean, there's there is home damage. Okay. West of Holdenville. Okay. Hey, Justin, let's get Val Castor on that. Uh, it's one mile, give or take. We'll figure it out here, but uh, let's get Val back on the damage of the homes there. Okay, so... Uh, it's Holdenville. Yeah, Holdenville. All right, so here, here's our line moving off again to the south and southeast. And uh, where is... Who's farther north now? Is Jeremy... Where's Jeremy? Is he still up here? Jeremy's Blanchard. Oh, he's already back. They're back up here, yeah, and they're dibble. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, yeah. Okay, so here, here was this, here's our big storm down here. It gets not tornadic. Uh, I tell you what, let's, let's take a look at this shot. Let's go to Lynx 2, and here's the tornado damage from Ripley. All right, and there you go. That is south of Ripley, one mile, one mile. Uh, Lace, go ahead and take it here for just a yeah, second. Yeah, these are the reports that we had coming in. Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was no injuries, right? No one was home. Did you see the report? Okay. Yeah, correct. So, so no one was home in these mobile homes, or they, they weren't occupied at the time, um, thankfully. Um, but unfortunately, they are completely decimated, as you see there. I mean, completely turned over on their tops and then just shred like toothpicks. So that is tornado damage. That was just to the south of Ripley. Um, and more damage there um, and trees splintered and split. So crews will have to go out and survey. This damage could have been EF1 damage. This did lift as it made its way off into the eastern portions of Payne County and uh, lifted before it made it into Creek County. But that was a tornadic supercell as well up in north central Oklahoma. So we have had um, several tornadoes. We're putting together, you know, the, the list and the maps now to kind of give you the, the update on the summary for the day. But so many folks are going to have a lot of clean 
rain up ahead of them and especially the folks down near Surreal in southwestern Oklahoma and that Jim Gardner flew on that damaged path afterwards. Hank was tracking that storm as it was moving on up. So as of right now, 902 on your Monday evening, we have severe storms. We're still tracking them. Trackers are out along that entire line, but as of right now, no tornado warnings and nothing tornadic um, or imminent at the moment. What's really happening is the cold front is crushing in, so we can go to links three. Cold front is crushing in and undercutting those storms, and that starts to really limit the tornado threat. We're gonna get, um, I'll turn this back a little bit, and you can kind of see the green line, the blue-green line running basically from Stonewall, uh, just south of Gertie, back down to Fitztown. That's a north wind coming out away from those storms. Now near Sulphur, it looks like it might kind of try to tuck back in. So we've been watching this area um, near Sulphur in Murray County, and if you look at velocity, there is some circulation there. I think it's still being undercut. I but if we got to watch that. We got sometimes what can happen is the storm can lunge out and kind of get a kink in the line, and that's definitely what's happening right here over Sulphur, right along Highway 7, and it is trying to rotate. Now, what will win out the cold front or the storm trying to rotate? That's what we've got to watch for. For sure. So that's one area that we're keeping an eye on. Further down the line, it's more of wind and hail. I'm going to turn lightning on because there is so much lightning within this, these cells. They're so loud. The thunder is just unreal from Hennepin back down to Velma Alma, back down to Comanche, Temple, and all the way to Randlett. And this is going to go all the way down to the Red River through the next couple of hours. And we'll go back up the line. Oh, we just got an update on damage. Let me see here. One mile northwest of Seminole, which would have been the tornado that was on the ground. Trees snap, gates lifted and tossed. Sheet metal ripped off buildings, what you would expect. So just more damage reports coming in. And I know we're sending crews there to try to check out that damage as well. There goes the strong storm. The one of the strongest in the state is just north of Allen headed up towards Calvin. This is gonna be in Hughes County. Now the tornado threat's not there, but this could, the hail core has actually come on, up on that, which is what caught my attention. If you take a look, quarter golf ball size hail, some hailstones possibly even up to tennis ball, and that cell has actually ramped up. And you can see too, if I turn on the, the, the actual boundary, the front, it's also trying to kind of lunge out ahead of the front. The front hasn't completely undercut that storm either, and it's pretty easy to pick those out as you look down the line. It's where the lightning is the most intense, the hail core is the largest, and a lot of times you'll start to get rotation. So we're watching it closely north of Sulphur. Definitely Brandon's right there in Winniewood, and he's very close to that location in the very heavy rain, but it's weak rotation. There's nothing significant out of that, but it is just one area that we're having to monitor very, very closely. You go further down the line, and yes, still the severe weather ongoing. Well, let's check in with Brandon. Brandon, you've been hanging out south of Paul's Valley near Winniewood. You kind of went through the core there. I know the strongest hill core is now off towards your east. Give us an update. You're kind of traveling along high, uh, down I-35. Give us an update. Yeah, Lacey, uh, you know, we've been here for probably 30 to 40 minutes now, just kind of waiting on this line. We had extremely heavy rainfall for probably 15 to 20 minutes. 40, 45 mile an hour winds out of the north and the northwest. Um, P and nickel size, dime size hell, all mixed in. But all in all, it wasn't too bad. It was good rainfall, which we could desperately use throughout the whole state. So all in all, not too bad. Okay, well, that's, that's great news. And that's what folks have to look forward to further to the south. So from Hilton to Ardmore, um, back down to Sulphur, eventually down to Marietta. It's, you know, these are at times quarter size hail possible. Some of these cores pulse up larger than that. Uh, but as far as the tornado threat, that's just not there as of right now. There's just those two areas of circulation that we're watching at the moment. We'll go back up to one of the strongest storms in the state. And if we turn on, actually, we can turn on the, the storm strength, you can pick them out. It's still the one over near Holdenville. That's the supercell that started near Apache at about 4.30 this afternoon, then eventually merged with this line. And that's where we're still seeing the strongest, the strongest storm approaching Calvin. Folks in Hughes County there, south of Holdenville. This is going to be to the southeast of Holdenville near Calvin. Tim is right there, and Tim's going to take these storms for our sister station back over to McAllister as they make their way that direction. But as of right now, they're still very much in our viewing area near Calvin. Lightning count still 
very intense there. That, I think the core has actually come up just a little bit with, the, yeah, it has for sure, with that storm along Highway 48. And that's gonna make its way, it's actually tracking to the east-southeast, eventually getting shoved pretty quickly to the southeast. So Calvin may get some quarters um, further to the south. Southern Hughes County may have some golf ball size hailstones with that. And no, no extreme or, you know, wild rotation at all, at all. And I just keep searching the line. That's kind of what we do um, here in the, in the pod. And check for anything that's looking too ominous or scary. Not seeing anything as far as that goes. Although I will tell you the hail cores also come up some near Randlett. So some quarter size hail possible with that as it tracks to the southeast. Still moving, what's is the speed still 25? Cassie's yeah, got between about 25 and 30. Okay, perfect. And Cassie's got a storm track here. We'll put that on uh, on links four and kind of show you what's going on with the timing of this. Fitztown 815, Falls Creek about 920, Hilton 925, heading into Ringling at 935, Gene Autry about 945, and Reagan by 945. Of course, we're not going anywhere. We're still tracking these storms. They're still severe. Our trackers are out. We are going to take a quick break and recoup, and we'll be back right after this. Stay with News 9.